right, guys. How's it going? Good. Fire for effect. So how's it going? Fire for effect over. <laughs> I can hear you five by five. Uh, I got Michael, my 1970s headphones on. Michael is at the bottom here. It says device is not connected. So something mm. is not connected. Mm. Michael who? Michael McFarland. And let the... Wow. The Lete Swamp Swamp Monster is alive. Alive and kicking. He's got electricity now. The most what? important thing wow. is does he have his beer? <laughs> oh, he's gone now. Because you know his priorities is that beer first. Well, at least he got electricity back. That's the main thing. So Thank goodness, have cold man. beers. But can, can you imagine drinking warm beer for weeks? Jesus. Man, I used to do it for a long time. I got used to it, man, in Germany. Yeah? They, Germany, they don't uh, have the beer cold. It's warm. I remember right <laughs> when I was over there years ago, out of the tap, it was cold. I'm talking about going to a pub. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about going to a... I'm talking about the real Germans. You go to the guest house and sit down and talk with them and drink with the long tables. They don't warm it up. It's all cold. You, you can Google it, man. I mean, Germans don't drink cold beer. They, you know, they, they go to the fest around people who are not from Germany, and they'll drink a cold beer, but they like their beer not cold, just room temperature. That okay. is wreck your stomach. No, I, just, they, I, I got used to it. It wasn't that bad. I was, they, they just That's what they do. <laughs> I was there for three months working for my, uh, I was working for my dad's company, but he sent me over there to learn about wine to a supplier. So, so you guys were there. inside, you guys were inside somewhere. What do you mean? You inside a building drinking in a pub. Yeah. Loads of pubs. All yeah. With, I'm talking um, about, I'm talking about, I lived there for six years and they got this thing in the Germany called beer Garten. It might have some place on the inside. But you go straight through the back, and you're in the outside in the beer garden, sitting outside. They drink warm, fucking room temperature beer. It's not hot. Room temperature. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I was hanging out in a bar that a lot of Air Force people were going to, Americans. It was an American you ever, hangout. You ever seen, okay, that's why they had it cold. Hey, you ever seen... um? These German fest pictures with these ladies and they're carrying like six beers, three yeah, in each hand. That shit is hot, man. It's warm beer. I was, I, I was there. Um, <laughs> you know what? I was going to the Oktoberfest and I got as far as Koblenz because I was living in Royal, which is a, mm -hmm. a village on the Mosul. Oh, you didn't make it all the way, huh? I forgot my bloody passport. <laughs> Oh. Mm. oh, I forgot okay, to take damn. it from the house, so I got as far as uh, I got as far as Copeland's, and then stayed in the mate's place, over an okay. Irish pub, over an Irish pub. Okay, yeah, I lived there for six years, man. I, I almost, I almost left there with some uh, walking, talking souvenirs. <laughs> yeah, man, this one girl had me. Like, this one girl, Nicole, had me hemmed up. She was like, "Nope, you're gonna do this. You're gonna do that." And I was like, That's, "Nicole, I'm not gonna do that." She goes, "Shit, you gonna do it for me? What are you talking about?" I was like, "Oh my god, yeah, man, I got up out of there. I got lucky." I met a lot of Americans over there because um, I was on Han Air Force Base nearly every weekend. Oh. So I was hanging out with SPs and LEs. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, and I stayed on base in their quarters. So I those go guys are SPs are part of the security air. Sorry, security no. police. Security, air. Yeah. yeah, the security police. Those guys are part of the expeditionary air wing. You know, the, the yeah. wings that have all the yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew an F sixteen pilot. Yeah, those guys. Used to are cool, hang out man. with him. Wild. Yeah, those guys, those guys are wild, man. Uh, Tell me, man. He showed me his plane. He showed me his any, fighter. Anybody, any, any of those guys who are flying helicopters and planes got no screws, they got some loose screws in their head, you know what I'm saying? 
Well, I was only a kid, you know, like a, a wow. teenager years. Wasn't even, I don't know how old I was. 18, yeah. 19 or something. 19 yeah. or something. Young yeah. buck. Back in the day, man. Maybe 20 or something, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I spent about three, th- I think it was three months or four months. I can't remember. Yeah, we, man, used to to Frankfurt. we used to yeah. drive to Frankfurt because it was the nearest place we could get my McDonald's. Yeah, and we'd uh, buy like 10 Big Macs, bring them back to the house, put them in the freezer, <laughs> take them out during the week and have a Big Mac. What a trip. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I was a Burger Meister, Meister Burger. Burger that was Meister. the first place, McDonald's, I went to that served beer. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Yo, man. In the McDonald's. In the McDonald's. Beer. Hey, man, in Germany, they beer. got the vending machines where you buy Coca-Cola. You can buy Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, or a beer. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, four or five of us would drive in car. We, we get 10, maybe 15 burgers each or something. So it would take a while. So we'd have a couple of beers while we're waiting for our takeaway. We just drive it's down. Crazy. It's we'd crazy. have a couple of burgers, order 10 it's or 15 crazy. burgers to take home. And dr- then drive back straight to uh, Royal. Uh, in, the, in the United States, we have a thing called Interstate, and they, their Interstate is called Autobahn. They, they yeah, don't have no been on it loads of times. So what I'm saying is, you stop at the Autobahn at the thing to get some gas at the Esso station. You get some gas, and they got beer there. <laughs> People can just buy a beer. How you get to buy a beer and then get back on the highway? <laughs> Come on, mm-hmm. man. That Come didn't on. make any sense to me at all. Yeah, it's crazy. It, it's like even White Castle, the burger joint, man. And some places are selling beer. I'm like, you're already drunk or high when you show already. up to the drive through. You're going to get more something to drink? Come on. It's crazy, right? <laughs> hey, hey, I, I, my wife at the time, she stopped it, but she put an end to it. But they used to deliver the beer to my house because when I moved into the house, the guy who moved out, he already had the deal. And they said, they, they came and knocked on my door and said, hey, you want to keep this deal going? You left the guy before you. It's monthly. We're gonna drop off. The- oh, sure, sure, sure. Dude, they used to drop off a rack of the, rack, a rack of beer every every month, man. And my wife was like, "Hey, we gotta stop this shit. They can't be delivering beer to the house." <laughs> she was like, oh, man. "She was like, I don't think so. You gotta cut this shit out." Yeah, it was still, shit is still, The internet is still kind of shaky out there, I guess. Yeah, so <laughs> Marlena sent me a picture of their internet that, that they're using. She says it's crap. Uh, they had a new one. They put they installed yeah. a new one for the. Uh, yeah, I'll show you. I what, have what is, is, it one of, is it one of those little handy things, little square box? You, have, you hold it in your hand, you put it in your pocket. Oh, uh, I'll show spot, you. The spot, the hot, smart, smart bro. Yeah, the smart bro, the little hotspot things. Uh, I don't trust those things anymore. Yeah, no when I first way. arrived, though, I, I didn't have no choice. I wouldn't have internet. I tried. I got that, and I was doing that for a little bit. The first year, I'm using a using a globe prepaid. Yeah, it's a globe prepaid. Okay, I, I got fiber. I'm looking for the picture of it. Um, they used to have a uh, PLDT fiber, but I don't need it. Because at the time, my uh, fiance she was Wi-Fi. living here. Two X. Uh, I have to turn off the uh, yeah, backdrop, virtual. yeah, that green, that green screen thing. Hey, yeah, there you go. see that? Okay, you got the little box. Okay. Do you know that one? Uh not me. I've heard of it. I think it's Globe. What brand is that? PLG? Globe. Oh, Globe. I have a uh, globe at home, but mine's got uh, the antennas on it. The box, but it has antennas. Yeah, mine too. In the pub. But that's what. Not here at the house. I got uh, fiber. What call this thing? A converge, converge fiber optic. Anyway, I got the little wire coming over here. Sometimes the rain be hard, the wind be hard, that wire be bouncing up and down, but that motherfucker never broke yet. <laughs> Dude, don't <laughs> jinx it. Don't jinx it. Yeah. 
be watching on the CCTV, motherfucking birds be jumping on it. <laughs> I mm -hmm. wish I had a way of just pushing a button and getting the damn birds off of there. So how are you, Michael? What up, what up, what up brother Mike? Hey, Mike, up, Mike, take it easy, man. Your time. It'll improve later, bro. It'll get better, man. Yeah, I, w I went to uh, the bar on, on on the base all the time. We used to do a lot of drinking yeah. in the bar. Yeah, man, you can raise some hell fucking around with them damn Air Force guys. Because they've got yeah. the quality of life, and it's better. To them, it's like a big, being in the Air Force is like being in the college. They're just chilling, man. They're just having a good well, time. I'm hanging out with cops. That's who I'm hanging out with. So the guys at yeah, the gate, SPs. When, they, when they signed me in, so it was SP's, yeah. SP Fred signing me in with one of his colleagues. And the guy yeah. would say, oh, how long are you staying for? And I said, how long am I staying for? To the guy, oh, today's Friday. It's Sunday. You're here till Sunday. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Whatever, because everything's on the base. Um, yeah, you got the cinema, shop there. You can go shopping. Bar. Cinema. Uh, bar. Bowling alley. Commissary. You can buy some food from the commissary. If PX, you get him. PX. PX. A BX, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. everything. I mean, yeah. I couldn't buy anything in the shop, but uh, yeah, with they, them, if I wanted something, card. I just give them the money and then there they go. Because they have to there show their military ID. There you go. Good times, but, uh, man. And then I'd be on and off the base because we go out on the piss. So yeah, we'd yeah, roll yeah, in at two or three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and there you go. Go on. They were not sober. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, was there. I was over there for six years, man. It was crazy messing around in the damn Air Force. And then down south in the, the Navy guys also. Well, Southern Germany. Like, I, Germany. I was brought to places on the base that I shouldn't even be seen. <laughs> Yeah, you said you you said you saw one of the planes. Yeah, yeah. They, said, they took you to the damn the, was, Yeah, that was the pilot of the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just got me on it, <laughs> I, not in it. You know, I was right beside it. But shit, that's I've the all, you say, oh, this I've is the plane I've under there and sit sat inside and all kinds of shit. Just no, I didn't sit show, in it. No, never went. They showed us just, all. They showed just us all this shit, beside man. it, touched it. You know what I mean. Yeah, I've been all around and fucking shit. And I thought to myself, wow, these guys got a great jobs, man. They got a great quality of life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he went off on a mission, uh, but he couldn't talk about it one time. He says, oh, I'll be away for a week or so. And he says, I have to go off on a mission. Oh, shit, what year was it? They probably going to go bomb He's somebody. He's in the 80s. Somebody. 80s. Yeah, they went to go bomb somebody and come back. <laughs> no, he was going, he was going, I think he was going to Israel or somewhere. He kind of... He didn't. He couldn't really say much, but he was going far away, <clears throat> so it wasn't Bosnia or something like that. Well, it could be. I don't know. I thought it was Israel or something like that. He'd be heading. Wow. But who knows? Yeah. You know? Who knows? Yeah, being in the ar army and then seeing all these guys that I worked with, I thought to myself, "Man, maybe I should have jumped." But I never uh, questioned it because I always thought to myself, if I went that route, maybe I wouldn't have finished up and made it. You know what I'm saying? Through well, training I mean, or whatever. Who knows? Yeah, because I'm not talking about physical because the Army is all physical, jumping and running and jumping, jumping out, all this bullshit, right? But the mm -hmm. Navy or the Air Force might have been some technical shit, sitting in some classroom trying to pass some tests or some shit. Yeah, well, I probably wouldn't have made that, it. <laughs> I probably, probably wouldn't have made it into the military. Well, I mean, you could have been a pilot um, in the army because they have their own planes and their own helicopters. Yeah, but what I'm saying, I'm saying, like maybe now I could just fall, or, or, or when I was thirty or forty or so. But when I was seventeen, my brain wasn't wrapped around no. sitting learning some technical shit about avionics and. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, uh, too, too young at 17 doing that oh, kind of stuff. Come on, man. You're not ready for learning all the stuff that I learned later on. I learned some shit about field artillery and weapon systems and all of this crap and blowing up stuff and explosives and C4, all of this stuff. When I was 17, if I had tried to learn it, I would not have passed, I don't think. There's just no way. Once I got older, I was like, oh, wow. And the officer school and everything and training, it was mm -hmm. good because I was older. Mm -hmm. I was like 20, 22, 23, 24. I was learning all this stuff. When I was 17, 
I don't know. I just my I think my my mind back then was just I, I just wasn't thinking about schooling and learning something like that. But when they but being seventeen and going through all that physical training stuff, oh, that shit was good. <laughs> Had some fun shit, man. Walking around with the water splashing around in the water, getting yelled at a little bit. You know, what I'm saying, hey, get up this motherfucking wall and jump over this thing and jump into the water, all that kind of stuff. That was like fun. I know some other guys are crying like babies, but that was fun to me. I was like, wow, what's wrong with this guy? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, you you did other things that were important. You got to go visit places that you went to. So, I mean, you, you still did your thing. You still yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just because you're, people are pilots, they need logistics, they need people, mechanics, they need, you know, certain things, and they need people like yourself or other people to help them to do their job. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I, well, even I, if you didn't, I mean, even if you didn't shoot a gun at the enemy, you were, you're still in an important part of the military to help these guys with their job for them going to war. Yeah, but like I said, I wasn't in the Air Force or nothing like that, or Navy. But once I got older, I got to be places with them. Mm -hmm. See, he knows fucking our <laughs> Michael's field artillery for a little while. Shit. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. It's crazy I mean, shit. Shoot that gun. It's yeah. a big ass gun, man. Yeah, I, I've only seen it on TV and documentaries and that kind of stuff. But that Howard, yeah. sir, wow. Yeah, that's a big ass gun, bro. That yeah, is I think, a school. I think it's just <laughs> some of the, the the professor. I'll tell you what, man. She some of the alive. training you know, to get to shoot that gun, the training was very intense at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. They're not gonna just let you shoot a damn gun. <laughs> they could you do some serious training, man? Oh my god. I mean the it's math. a computer. It's a gun with a computer. Yeah, but check this out, bro. There's two, there's two schools. You have to pass the manual classes first before they start doing showing you the computer. So when you're pressing the button later on, you know what the fuck it's doing, all the math and fucking trigonometry and shit on the board. Mm -hmm. I sat in that classroom that day and I was like, what the fuck? Hey, right on. hey what's up, what's really guy? going on? I'm over here helping cool you down, work on this shit. Hey, uh -oh. <laughs> We get it done. Hey, Dan. Yeah, you know I me. Mean? <laughs> on his computer. I'm putting you in would... Adobe on the shit right now. You oh, just got the printer that, up and running. Get that software and I'm out loaded of first. Uh oh. You use, man, you better finish <laughs> up that software word. before you get. Huh? You forgot I your can't hear shit. What up, Dice? What's up, Jack? Prime. What's Minister. up? Duh. Hey, man. Y'all can hear me, but we can't hear shit. Okay. We're only on the live, ain't we? Yeah, my bad. Yep. Yeah, You're fine. All right, You're we fine. got that Adobe done. Let's go ahead and uh, set this thing up. Then you get you some Canadian, Canadian Miss later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you already set. Okay. You have a type where you had type shit on you, just read a typewriter. Uh huh. You know, you, your computer, you just type stuff in there. What? Can I set it up in here? We can type, type stuff into it. Yeah, with the keyboard. Oh, the keyboard, yeah, like a letter place or something. Yeah, and you, unless you want to put that Microsoft keyboard on the screen. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna no, get me. I'm gonna get me one. Of, I'm gonna get me one of those. Uh, What's up? I'm gonna get me one of those keyboards that's uh, uh plug in. You plug in on uh, 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 what do they call that? Wireless. The USB. Yeah, the wireless. There you go. I'm gonna get yeah. one of those to put on my little chest when I'm sitting up in the bed, lazy as hell. Yeah, it's handy to have. I use it oh. when I'm editing. No, somebody Same thing with the mic, with, the, with the mouse. I'm gonna get me in with a wireless mouse. Nobody too, muted so you. Can... You're not mute. I know. We hear you. Shit, you mute yourself. <laughs> you mute you. I don't know. Well, you already downloaded. I'm finna come back to it and hit We done done Your done internet enough. connection. <laughs> Yeah. We did a Your bear run, a weed run, <laughs> a bank run. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You need to, hey, now you need I'm ready to do an end run. 
That's what I'm telling you. You need, you need to get that fucking medical marijuana. You that. All right, we out of here. We in the senior community and shit. Hey, I'm going to do some t shirts for the pub that say medical marijuana on the but front. They got free lectures. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the back is right, that Southern Lodge pub. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Oh, medical marijuana. That shit when that when it finished, some shit like that. It's funny that. shit, man. You, All of them young oh, yeah, kids will buy that t shirt, man. I'm telling you. It's cold like this, motherfucker. Yeah, Washington State's getting cold right now. It is time. Ooh, bike rubber. Like Man, you look like motherfucking, motherfucking Navy SEALs. They let me out like of the house half a drink. Oh, yeah, so you have to copy and CDs on it. I should take a screenshot, man. You got, you got your Navy SEAL uniform on. Um, you know, put, put in the copy on the second one down below. Well, I might, you know, burn the CD or some shit? Yeah, burn CDs and copy. Yeah, I might have to bring you my, my Roxy uh, CD. And we out of this bitch. Hey, go. hey, can I get my stogie off the porch? Go back home so you get my some stogie. good uh, uh, internet. Yeah, hey, man. man, I didn't like I'm that. Uh, you, Mike. <laughs> ah, there she is. Ah, the old stogie. Oh, that's Ooh, what we should do. We should write something so we can see it. <laughs> the double filter oh, cigarette. Hey, what's on, guys? <laughs> I like those we military guys drinking those, smoking those camels with no damn filter at all. I was, I was oh, like, oh man. man. Yeah, you see this guys? Yeah. Man, I see I will wow. see you ladies back at the lab. Okay, all right. All right, clear that. Right, I remember right. years ago, I'd run out of cigarettes and my friend's like, he got them camel no filters. And he's like, you want one? I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to eat, I don't want to eat half a thing. I'm trying to smoke it. Yeah, they get their lips all over it, and you start to drink some beer, and I'll be like, what? Oh. It used to look like a mess inside the inside the ashtray. I used to be like, what the hell is that? It's like you're like spitting out, like you're chewing tobacco. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, those are those hard guys. Those hard guys. Those, you know, military guys would be smoking them camels. Are those like roll, roll your own, no filter? Oh, you know, those are the guys I met in Germany and in and in, 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 uh, Netherlands. You go to a pub, sit down, and talk to a guy, and he looked like some dude in high school in New York. He's rolling shit. I'm like, what are you rolling, man? <laughs> <laughs> Is right that that good shit? Bar. He's sitting right there in the bar. And he's like, no, I'm just rolling. He showed me a pack, and I was like, oh, okay, you're rolling your own cigarettes. But that shit. Got a little. A little pouch out and like it's like yeah, a little pouch out and shit. You gotta look. It's almost like he's putting together a little science project. He's putting all this. He got the pouch. He's got the papers and all this shit. Then he's got a thing that he's squeezing it with. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> all that for a cigarette, man? Come on, man. Come I'm on, trying to save some money, man. Come on, man. Buy some cigarettes, man. Buy a pack of cigarettes with a filter on it. I give me a couple of bucks, man. I don't see that. <laughs> Oh man, but then you get in the Netherlands, you meet some dude and you're talking to him. You could be in McDonald's, you could be anywhere. He'll break out the thing, get his little pouch, and he's doing his regular tobacco. This it's kind of dark, dark uh, black the tobacco. And then he'll break out another pack that's kind of bit much, much lighter. And then he's got some weed in there. So he's doing his own little blend. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, he's doing his own little blend. And then he rolls it up. And he's just smoking it right there in the Netherlands. I was like, yo, this country's out of control. Yeah, I told you the story how we got, uh, Jack, I told these guys a story one time. We got drunk in the Netherlands. We were hanging out, and we misplaced our car. We didn't know where the car was. And a oh, constable man. walked up to us. Yeah. And he was like, hey, how you guys, how you fellas doing? Was, oh, sir, we can't find our car. And he helped us find our car and waved goodbye to us. Now, please. We are now the leaving the senior citizen, senior citizen community. <laughs> the geriatrics up in this piece. <laughs> he is, uh, oh. old people, huh? Well, it ain't raining and the sun is out. Woohoo! There you go. All right. Yeah, Time to man. get it cranking. Police officers helped us find our car in, in the United States. As soon as the uh, police officer said, "Hey, how you guys doing?" Oh, uh, we're looking for our car. Boom, boom, get on the ground. We got our ass kicked. Not the Netherlands. They were like, okay, well, find your car. 
is this one? Oh, that looks like our car. I said, well, good. You guys be safe. Bye. Said, oh my goodness. <laughs> you can be you can be drunk, smoking weed, whatever. Police officers don't bother you. And then uh, he's all right. <laughs> Unless you crawl and if you crawl or something, they're like, no, 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 no. We gotta help you. Out. But nah. If you walk around, you okay? They ain't gonna bother you. Hmm. It's a different world, man. Different country, right? Like back home, night blacks be hemmed up. Yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Come on. In New York, you would be in jail. Period. Somebody mm -hmm. trying to come downtown to get you. To get you one phone call. Call somebody to get you. That's yeah. if you can make it. It's like, day, like, 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 it's like now, like, well, back in the day, you used to remember everybody's number, but now, nowadays, everybody's like, it's all programmed the phone, and you don't know no, anybody's no, no, phone no. number. Nobody knows the phone number. No, 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 no. So, 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 so you're in jail. You get that one free phone call. Like, oh man, who do I call? Where's I don't know anybody's number. Where's my cell phone at? I, I, well, I don't know. This is what you came in here with your drunk ass. Oh uh, shit. I, I don't know. <laughs> But you know what they're going to come up with eventually? That's it. I'm a mass communications major, so my, my doctor, professor talked about all this stuff back in, back in the 80s. But he was right because it all is happening. Um, <clears throat> if I sat there and paid attention to him, I would have made a million dollars off it because of all these applications that came out, I would have been ahead of them. Anyway, check it out. Eventually, no matter where you're at in the world... <laughs> You could be able to sit down at a computer if, like, if you went to jail or something. And say, okay, sit at the computer and do your thing with Google right here with your password or whatever. And you could just look in there and see on the cloud all the phone numbers and all the shit in your fucking computer. In your, uh, it was like, like scan your eyes or something like that. Whatever it is, whatever that gets you pass to get the password, whatever how you get into it, you can go see all your stuff on your phone anywhere on any PC and then log off. And it, you know what I'm saying? You end up, end up hitting the wrong one. Is like, oh, don't, no, 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 don't call a dope man. It's my, <laughs> my own phone call I got. <laughs> dope man, dope man, come get me to the, come get me from the police station, dope man. You got the snowman coming. Here he comes. Oh man, the police officer would be like, good. We don't have to go chase his ass, bring his ass here. Fuck. Mm. Call the ex and got a PPO against and she got a PPO against you. Like, oh no, 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 no. And they catch another case. Yeah, don't let him come. <laughs> He'll just come with some paperwork to get signed to put to keep your ass right there. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh it's man. 530. I have 30 more minutes. I'm taking these damn dogs out. Take them out again? Yeah, I let them run, man. I let them run every day. At around about 6 o'clock, I let them get out there and do their thing. And they come right back. <laughs> you just, like, you just like open the gate and just let, let them run out and take care of out. business and come back? They take care of business, run around. And they also, they do this, you know, dog. They do this thing where, you know, they might have to use the bathroom real quick or pee. And then they just run around in circles and play with each other. Because I keep them inside in the cages. Mm -hmm. So I take them out twice a day and let them run out in this big, wide open field. They just have a blast, man. Running around yeah, in that I got, field. I got, I got one in a cage because he's a little bit stupid. He's a, oh, but it was a street dog, and, and and I adopted it, and then it wants to kill all the cats around here. Oh, okay, he's kind of wild. See, he's wild, but he's uh -huh. good. To, a wild dog is good to have in a cage because if somebody comes near your house at nighttime. He's gonna sound off loud and uh, he's he's the loudest one here. The loudest one. You need that though. You know what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. needs uh, hey, I'm paying, I'm I'm feeding you because you are a good damn watchdog. You make a lot of noise. That's mm -hmm. a good dog like that. And like another That's street dog. That was that was a puppy from like, I don't know, five years ago. It, it it's, it's in here like every night inside oh, the gate. See, see he he, he, he was a puppy. He was already young. He was young when you mm -hmm. got him, so he's kind of cool. But this wild street dog, he was kind of big already, right? 
Oh yeah. Uh, he's never like a, be broken. Kind of looks like a greyhound looking looking ass thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> he's never gonna be. Uh, he's always gonna chase the cats and be wild. But uh, it's all yeah. good because it's all good because he he makes that noise at night time that I need. You know what I'm saying? And my uncle's dogs dog. will walk. My uncle's dogs will like walk over here from all the you know all the way to the other side of the you know six unit here and just come over here and and my that dog in a cage gets louder than I'll get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. That's what I need, Jack. I need the dogs to make some noise. Mm -hmm. Especially here in the Philippines, they all all the dogs make noise anyway. Mm -hmm. Hey, Rocky. How's it going in Boston? Do you have time to stop by and get you something from the bubbler before you come here? I got my ice water. <laughs> I was teasing Rocky. Yeah. Get the bubbler. Get you some beer. Drive your car down to the uh, a local bubbler. That's cool, man. I used to work out there, man. That's all right. I worked out there for a little bit in Boston. It was cool for a minute. Yeah, I saw a documentary on Whitey Bulger's brother when he was president of the Senate thing. President of the what? Senate thing in Boston. He was president or something. Oh, okay. Government or civilian? Government. He was running uh, South Boston. Man. It was everything back, went through him. <laughs> back in the day, politics was some dangerous stuff. You get your ass shot. If you had the wrong political views, man. I saw an interview he, he did. He's not he wasn't known for doing interviews and he did a sixty minutes one in ninety three or something. Mm -hmm. Um interesting. Interesting fellow. <laughs> To say the least. Very oh, Irish. Very Irish. Let me do something real quick. Hey Gary, how's it going? I see behind you an interior that I've seen on other live streams must be the same interior designer. Yes, Gary, same interior designer. <laughs> it's called StreamYard. I uh, first time I used it was yesterday on somebody else's live, so I decided I'd do it on mine because everybody knows my where I do it from. So I figured I'd change, change it up for a change. Billy Bulger, that was his name, president of the universe. But he was, he was a senator or something before he was in government. Troll, silly getting yeah. trolls. Yeah, they, they they're everywhere nowadays. They got this, uh, they got this little system where they just track you and chase you around with this vet, this wound that, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. All, whatever all this bullshit that they get. I don't even time them out anymore. I just block them. Wasn't that on the the same person from the last live chat? No, it's different. It's different. Once, once, I'm, once they're blocked, they're blocked. Ah. They just have to. There's so many trolls out there, Jack. Yeah. And then, on, just, and on the other, that's the bad stuff. But on the other end of the spectrum, you get some of these little uh, YouTuber girls that'll pop onto your channel and subscribe, and then start chasing the pub. And wow, chasing the pub. Hey man, click on the fucking private chat. Right. <clears throat> Sometimes those are the ones that chase the button and send in messages and everything. Back in the days, I would have bent her over and broke her fucking back. <laughs> you want to see my OnlyFans? 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would have been there over and, and, and would have upset her liver and redistributed her fucking guts. <laughs> just, 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 just beat it out the frame. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. oh my goodness, back in the day. Oh my goodness. No, no joke, man. They got some. They got some girls that are jumping on this live stream now that are just. You go, what the hell? What is what in the world is this? What the hell? Wow. You got some nice ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what up, boys? Back at the lab. Oh, he's yeah. like gangster leaning. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way to do it from the side of the bed. <laughs> Man, I left the house at 9.10. I'm just getting back at 1.38. Running. Damn, that's too much time, dog. I, I ain't I'm that saying, much time. I told these knuckleheads, I'm going to be up in here sewing today. I got to make some pillowcases. Oh, no. We'll get fucked by your time. We need you to do this for us. Come help us. Come help us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm like, you're 30 <laughs> passing. So now LeVon, he done paid daily because when he got in the back seat yeah, of the car, he fucked around and left one of these nasty ass things in it. Oh, uh, no. What? Oh, oh. 8%. Man, that's some half beer and half. They got some fruity stuff in there, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. Some, I'm like, I'm gonna save it. I ain't gonna drink this shit. That's a ladies' drink. Yeah, yeah like, try to I, knock them out so you can break their back. No, yeah, you know what's a ladies' drink? <laughs> and I'm sitting up here with all this shit. That's yeah, a ladies' that's drink. Oh, that's good stuff. That's the good stuff. I got I like tequila that. and whiskey. Yeah, I, I like that little no. tequila stuff. I'm not drinking that shit. Uh oh, Bobby C. Yeah, bro, I'm there. All right. A little late. Well, let me take I'm my there. living room out of the equation. You see, my my Balik Bayon boxes are ready to roll. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, get a pen, get a pen of paper, and I'll give you my address. Hey, 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 yes, <laughs> just type it in. Just type it in the. What's that, Jack, Just type What's it in the Ronald? private. Did, did Ronald come out of the closet or something? What's up? <laughs> He's got two cameras on. So, Jack Alderson, welcome to the panel. What's up? What? That that was coffee. Okay. We got a lot of boxes, bro. Uh, hey, I'm sending them all the shit they ain't gonna buy. <laughs> you know, what the hell? How's it going? What the f- <laughs> they ain't gonna buy none of this shit. <sighs> none of it. You know what I mean? What's up, Jack? <laughs> Not much. I'm laughing at the professor's name on here. <laughs> no, no. What? I show up in two minutes, I catch it, and you've been up here for an hour. You just now saw it. <laughs> What's my name? I, I love, hey, I hey, love white, 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 white men. Yeah, that's they had that shit up there last night. That's the in reverse effect of what's his name? Uh, yeah, but it's Jeffrey only the, it's only yeah, mm-hmm. no shit, right? It's only uh, but, hey, you or the host can change the name. I can change it to whatever I want. Yeah, yeah but, but, Daryl, but Jeffrey John, Dahmer like. A little bit of Mexican in his life, though. Oh, yeah, he, he, oh, yeah. he liked he liked Mexican food also. He was he was oh, definitely yeah. like soul food. He was eating lots yeah, of he had some soul food. You know mm-hmm. you know how you know how they called Jeffrey Dahmer, don't you? Uh, how did that? They found some heads and shoulders in his shower. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he was he used to make soup, man. 
Yeah. That was like one good dude, man. Yeah, let me stop before I make myself sick. He was he, he, he like gumbo though. Man, this some this some soul food here. And he was trying to feed it to the other guys, the other victims before he killed them. Hey, and they were like, "What's that smell? Oh, it's a little it's a little gumbo." No, it's a little. Uh, let's get it started. There we Back go. In the day. Back in the day, some black velvet. Oh. You no. Know, somebody's drinking a red horse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> red horse, man. Hey, Michael. Here. I think for Michael. Uh, you got some electric yet? Or are things settling? Or are you still having to deal with the heat? I think he's going back and forth a little bit. Yeah. This ain't Tony's first rodeo. So he just got to calm the fuck down and remember where he at. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like the paying the price to have all that year-round beautiful weather, waking up by the beach and everything. But once in a while, here comes Mother Nature. Yeah, brother. Here comes the typhoon. Shit. That's fine. There goes your and there goes your power. Internet That's why you gotta power. be prepared. Fresh well, look, water. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna be in a latte, do don't be on the eastern side. Go to the western side. Go over there along the side of the Kamote Sea. At least you got it the doesn't matter where you, where you gotta be. If you build it correct, it'll last, and you have all the other shit necessary to sustain yourself. You're going to be the only one standing. Well, like the good book says, build your house on a rock. Don't build it on the sand. Mm. That's what I always type in my birthday greetings. Rock steady. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. I might get this this one striked for rock steady. Somebody might go and you're like, oh, that refers to a song. Oh, we got to strike this one. What? (laughs) <laughs> when, when it's time for me to leave, I'm gonna hit the pawn shop so fucking hard, it's gonna be ridiculous. They got all them damn gener- gas generators sitting up in there for dirt cheap. Box them and send them. I don't know how much noise it makes. I got light. I don't know if you can send something that has gas in it. Yes, you can. Oh, this is a big one. Yeah, you can drain it. Oh, you gotta get a your certificate. Those it's got to say that it's it's been purged or whatever or whatever they call it. The push come to shove, send a brand new one. Uh, I'm gonna give you some good advice. Don't anything big like that. Don't worry about it. When you get here, there's too much Chinese crap here. Very low price that'll help you out to get you started. Right. Yep. But in yep. the long run, you know Chinese crap gonna turn to Chinese crap. I know. But the first but the, year, the, you good. But the Filipinos yeah, here right. can fix you're pretty right. much any damn thing. There yeah, you go. Fix the motherfuckers will fix that shit. That's, that's only in the beginning, but later on, like I told you, you, have to, you want to get a solar generator and get away from the gas and the noise and the fuel yeah, yeah, and the yeah, smoke. Yeah. And the, Look, yeah, a, generator, so. a gas generator is easy. All right. Go oh, in the backyard, dig a hole that's about two feet deep, at least higher than the height of the generator. Set it in the fucking hole. You ain't going to hear shit unless you're standing on a generator. That's what we used to do in the Army. Dig a hole and put your generator in there. Nobody's going to hear it. (laughs) No, this is for Gary. He wanted to know what the label of this bottle was. It's like me, Gary. Black velvet. I'm that soft. And smoke. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Ronald. Black velvet and white man. Black velvet. Oh, no, shit. Man. You call my brother in law Billy Bob. Billy Bob Fit Day. Billy Bob Joe Briggs. Let me get out my Budweiser. <laughs> you should change, change your name to Dirty Strange. Hey, yeah. I don't like strange. I don't do strange. <laughs> strange. And they're, they're done that. That's mm. like some of that midnight pussy. It's dirty strange. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like going to pee and using your left hand instead of your right hand. It just doesn't work. 
<laughs> it's something you don't bring around your friends, you turn lights off, or you, you don't bring it home. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you want to... All right, now, we got some ladies in the chat, so uh, we have to be and nice. you're getting tired of the old routine, switch hands. <laughs> Kind of freaky. <laughs> we ain't got nothing but men up in here, right? So. Might have a friend of mine, Sue, might be coming on. I just sent well, her the link. Like when Sue gets here, calm down. Mm -hmm. no, let me get a refill. Hang on. The professor, don't ever send my mom the link to this channel. <clears throat> Say who? Don't ever send my mom the link to this channel. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, big brother Gary? Michael McFarlane. Hey, Jack, what's wrong with my channel? We're all gentlemen here. No, I'm getting, sitting there just getting. No, oh, I'm not even buzzed yet. Just sitting there. I'm still going to do my goddamn pillowcases. They done screwed up my whole morning. I could have, I could have had five pillowcases done already. Do they have eye holes in them? Are they white? No, no, no. Because I have a, a like a body long pillow, right? And I have flat sheets that match the other pillowcases, but there's no pillowcase for the long pillow. So I use the flat sheet to make a long pillowcase. I don't give a fuck mm. about a flat sheet. I, I I miss the whole you know the whole body pillow like. Mm. Yeah, but Ronald's got a body pillow. He calls Whitey. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, 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 his, that's his white man. If it wasn't for the white man, I wouldn't be here. Come here, brother. Hey. To, all, to the white guys, thank you. On behalf of me and the professor. I'm telling you. Well, I, keep, is... I keep the white close to my chest. You look. <laughs> <laughs> Two of us here. We're out oh, Ronald, I love you, brother. I love you too, my brother. Bobby C, my main squeeze. If we was in a fight, we gonna be in a fight. Oh yeah. Man. I ain't gotta worry about him jumping in. That's right. I'm gonna run the other way because I got a bad back. <laughs> hey, oh, speak it out. Dude, and then I'm gonna if you if I catch your ass running. I'm going to turn, grab that bottle, and hurl it toward that door where your ass is trying to get to. Get your uh, ass back in. Let me tell you, Ronald, I woke up at 5.30 this morning. Everything felt fine. I got up. I said, like, God, Jesus, really? going to fucking piss. Well, I get up and I go freaking piss. All right? I go back to bed. I wake up at 7.30. I can't even stand up straight. My back was just freaking killing me. Mm. You, slept, you slept funky. Fighting in my sleep again, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, all no, you know, dude, I have some freaky ass weird dreams between four and eight o'clock in the morning. And if it goes well, I wake up and everything's fine. Is that what if you mean fight or something? If it, if it goes poorly, I wake up, dude. I look like Mr. Burns in The Simpsons. I can't even stand up straight, man. Well, you know, you know when you get those lucid dreams, those those are real good ones. But if you drink as much as we do, they they are called owl lucid. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's I can't. I all kick it in. So for the first three hours today, dude, I mean, I was in some serious pain. I mean, it hurt so bad I couldn't even get to the liquor store. I tell you, I know, I know the feeling, bro. When your back is gone, you ain't doing shit. Why do you think the apartment looked like this? The minute I start to clean it up, the back says, yo, ho, hold up, stupid. Just move. Just move, motherfucker. Move. move. I dare you. <laughs> so start all I, leave over everything, I leave everything right where I can get it without making me, you know, yeah, put exactly. myself in pain. Mm -mm. No, that was, today was one of the worst days I've had in forever. It felt like the the day after I blew a disc back in 2019, man, I kid you not, I got up and like, what the hell? Robert, I drove all the way to Tacoma from Bremerton to a... No, uh, that's, that's what? 50 miles? No, it's something like 30-something miles. 
28, something like that. But I had to do that DBQ to the the physical lady. Some oh, doctor. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, by the time I got there, you know, I get tunnel vision from driving far, so I, it was an yeah. accomplishment and on its own. But when I got there, I got out of the damn whip. I felt like Methuselah. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And it, I, good thing I brought my cane because I got out of that motherfucker like I never walked before. Yeah, that's how I was this morning. It was that bad. I said, you shitting me. Yeah. Now, until I did physical therapy, I couldn't drive 45 minutes but to an hour. And I get out of the truck and it felt like I had a stone bruise in my left heel. I mean, it was messed up. But after six weeks of some, actually, just physical therapist of all places, Perry, Florida, the guy was actually really good. So I can drive three, four, five hours, and I'm still fine. Oh, no. Every no. once in a while, I wake up in the morning. Oh, no. uh, it's like, oh, no. you're jacked, dude. You need to go to a nursing home. <laughs> so, yeah. no. and, and all we need now is some woman to come up in here. Oh, look at that bunch of old men talking about the goddamn aches and pains. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, like, it's like when I did my CMP interview when I went for the full 100%. And I told her, I said, look, lady, I said, I grew up working horses. My life is outside. Ain't laying up inside, sitting in a chair behind a flipping desk. Oh, you want me to do this, sure. this, and this? Instead? I said, I'll give you three yeah. months and I'll blow my damn brains out. Because I'm going to be looking out the window, missing my life. So where do we go? Because you can't do, do that. But you're sitting you know, it's, like, it's, it's, like little, it's like little Johnny sitting in the classroom, you know? Teacher, Wait, you know you know, little Johnny's looking out the window going, like, damn, man. Get, I can't go out and be out there shooting that squirrel. Let's go get some what you Prime Minister. What's that? What was you saying? I was saying he's sitting behind a desk now. No, no I'm sitting behind a desk. You guys. Oh, <laughs> you're entertaining us. <laughs> yeah, that's entertaining. What we do. We're entertaining no, if, each if, other. If I was, if I was working a nine to five in an office, I would lose it. I did that. I didn't like it. And nah. you know it's rare. You know it's rare when you got five motherfuckers sitting up here, all of us unemployed. Every last one of us. Well, ain't got Gary's nowhere there. to be. We got we got Gary don't people. work. Yeah, Michael Gary don't work. work. Michael doesn't work. That makes seven. Um, I'm two years late for work. And, yeah, and Jack is two years late for work. So he ain't worked in two years. He's a W O L. That's him without me. Shit out of luck. <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm good. I'm part owner of the uh, where I work, so I'm good. Right, right, right. So you, you, you can't be A O L when you, when you are, you know, C E O. Shit. There you go. <laughs> Shit. We're all CEOs. Tell you what, it, we all CEOs. You, when you spend your whole life outdoors. Getting stuck without a whole lot you can do physically, it's it's difficult. You know, yeah. it, it really can is. Can you imagine if that happened to Bud? That would crush him. Oh, Bud would be. That farm though, it, it, well, that'd be that'd be work for him. You know, just being on the farm. Yeah, yeah but if he can't, he'd have to, he to hire somebody to throw chicken scratch. Yeah, if he can't do it, that'll crush him. You can't go hunting and fishing. That'll kill him. Yep. Yeah, that would. That would. Had a killer. Now so, I'll still I'll still go fishing with my dad when he gets back from their timeshare next week. Go mm -hmm. back to do some pit fishing and get some more largemouth bass out of Newberry. Uh when him and I both go fishing, we start out okay. After about two, three hours, we get out of that little boat in those pits. Let me tell you, both of us are hurting. All right, you old geriatric bastards. You better get your Xbox or a PlayStation. You know what? Hold on. I'm going to change my hat. 
<laughs> oh, Uh-oh. no. No, no. We're going back to... Uh, I know where we're going back to. I'm going to go get me a Koofy. <laughs> I think I think we need a Yankee hat. Let me get a Koofy. You're going to be looking at a Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Daryl. Yeah. Oh, he didn't. <laughs> oh, shit. I got my Daryl hat on. <laughs> Yeah, but I he, just, he usually I has just it open pulled, all the way. I the sides up. <laughs> His is open all the time. All right, since we're changing hats and shit. Oh, let's get it started. Ronald, Ronald went to the Panama Jack. I'm all in there. Well, I'm going federal. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it, FBI. Mm-hmm. FBI. Oh, my God. <laughs> So you're all, all right under now. arrest. FBI. No. Is that, does that now stand for full-blooded Irish? No. No. no I don't know. But according to the hats, I'm looking at the hats. I'm looking at dirty sergeants fucked up. I'm looking at the prime minister as stuck up. And I'm just up. <laughs> <laughs> Self-praise is no praise. <laughs> Hey, you hear that? Mambo number five. Hey, what is what is Jack guy? Jack, where's your person? hat? Jack, where's your hat? My hat. We know what Daryl got. Yeah. Daryl got some yeah. nice hats. See? We saw you open a package that looked like some kind of meth crystals or something. No, it looks like I'm a... Bringing- the foot and the ankle leg it looks like a yeah. like some what is, oh, like me oh, too, the, uh, on the cigarette oh, box. they put this warning on all the packs yeah, it looks yeah, like yeah. a burn up ribs okay that would be uh, hey, man, what, were, what, were, what were we talking about earlier about what should be on a t-shirt I forgot damn <laughs> I gotta write some of this stuff down. I forgot we said something earlier. Uh, we uh, medical marijuana or something like that. Yeah, there you go. Something about uh, medical because I uh, I got the full blood of Irish uh, FBI. <laughs> 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 All right, Gary. Next next live stream, we're gonna put it at the top of the at the banner. Hat well, day. Hat day. Hat day. Hat day. <laughs> Roger that. I'll put, I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll, I'll put it on the, you know, like when I advertise doing this, I'll say in couple letters, nice hat day. So everybody comes on with a hat. Full blooded Irish. <laughs> I can't remember uh, what we were talking about. Uh, All right, about hold on. Marijuana. Well, we went to hats, yeah. Daryl. No, when you, no, before when you that left for a bit. We were talking about something else. Medical stuff. Medical, oh, okay. was medical Maria Huana. Medical mar- marijuana? Maria Huana. I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. I wasn't here, was it? You can't say you can't say marijuana because you get demonetized. It's Maria Huana. Okay, Maria Juana. No, it's Mary Juana. Mary Juana. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Sticky Icky. Sticky Icky. Sticky Icky. Oh, shit. You're right back. What did my grandmother call it? And funny tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> Local weed. Mm. Stink weed. Is it starting to get daylight over in the Philippines now? It's six o'clock over there. Oh, no, never. What time does it get daylight over there? Oh, you, Anybody I know? You said legalized. No. Six ni- 19. Six nineteen. Right. it starts getting daylight. Yeah, mm-hmm. sunrise starts pretty early. It's a, it's a couple of minutes from daylight right now. Roger that. 
Okay, Dice. I just saw your message. All right, Dice. All right, I'm going for a cigarette. I'll be back. All right. I ain't got to go nowhere. So where's Jack at? Jack in the Philippines or is he stateside? Jack in the Philippines. Where at, Jack? Where are you at, Jack? I'm right here. No, where are you at in the Philippines? Um, Bacol City. Oh, Bacol. I had to go upstairs and grab my yarmulke. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, he's black Jewish, too. Black, Jewish, Filipino, Chinese, Korean. Hey, Jack, you know, on this, on this panel, if you say the wrong word, we're going to take it and run with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what you do. No, but don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Jack will say it himself. Trust yeah. Me. <laughs> I'm not that many uh, horses into this one. Right, right. Okay, cool. I've, cool, I've cool. been, I've been, I've been taking it pretty easy today. Because I, I went on online. I've seen like Filipino, like uh, uh chat. So, uh, what's up? Whatever. And I'm like, eh. then ended, and my my fiance was like, "Is there? Is uh?" There's guy, is he doing the live chat? I'm like, let me check. Oh, 5 a.m. I'm going to try to get through another three hours. Yeah, so we're sitting there just playing Uno. <laughs> playing Uno. <laughs> I won. Hey, do they play Junga in the Philippines? Um, I've oh, never yeah. seen it. They play everything. So I still want. The world, they'll play. They'll try. I still want to play some pool out here one day. Mm, that reminds me of that joke. <clears throat> What's that, Ronald? Uh, the little boy was asking. Uh, he was saying, "Oh, the, to the actress, your name is Michelle Pfeiffer." He says, "Yes." Well, why, why didn't you pronounce the P? She said the P is silent, like the P in pool. Oh, so pool. she lights it up the ass. No, you're not but getting it. Talk about it. Let me say it again. <laughs> I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to say it again. The little boy said, your name is Michelle Pfeiffer. She says, yes. He says, well, why the P is silent? She says, the P is silent, like the P in pool. 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 Like, pool. Pool, like in Brownstown. <laughs> no, not pool. Pool. Now, I, I, I'm going to have to explain it to you because I never, a comedian, never explain a joke. When you're in the pool and you pee, can you hear it? <laughs> no, because the pee is silent. Hi, Nicole. Yeah, right. You want in my grabby bar? You want in my uh, caravan at six o'clock this morning? That pee was not silent. Well, no, well, you weren't in the pool neither. <laughs> that shit was loud, man. It's like, <laughs> oh, this joke is not difficult. If you ever swam in a pool and you peed in it, nobody heard it. The pee is silent, like the pee in pool. Yeah, okay. Cheese and crackers. <laughs> okay, the P is silent only after she did 50 Shades of Grey. Okay. Oh, snap. No, no. She was never in that movie. I'm going to have to burn you up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that guy Garrett choked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the hell the fuck way? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's my pen on the back. Oh shit! Hey, when that happens, hey Gary, if you're there, just click on the link if you want to come up. What's up, big brother Gary? Uh, he says somebody's using his handle, so I don't know what's wrong. I hope it wasn't one of them Vietnamese people in his apartment. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> was it Lady uh, Boy? Hey, I gotta go make pillowcases. You wanna do some work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might switch to the phone and let y'all see how the master works. Yeah. Yeah. Put it Hello on. Cases, pillowcases or haversacks. Make sure you get those eye holes aligned in the right place. What eye hole? There's only one hole. <laughs> no, there's, there's three. <laughs> what one, hole you one, the one where you, where you put it on your head and the two where you look out. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the wrong. You're talking to Robert. <laughs> 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 oh no. Oh shit. Welcome to uh, the show. Let me get the uh, I go to Home Depot and get the eight by eight, some some lag bolts, gasoline, some rags, pole salt digger and oh well, what am I doing? <laughs> wasting, time, wasting time on the FBI panel. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Somebody's like, oh, oh, he's about to have a little uh, picnic with his uh, friends with their bed sheets. I tell you what, brother, watch out on this panel. If they can make it into an innuendo, they will. <laughs> mm hmm. They just like pick apart like all of our conversations as they put them together and it'd be like the, one of the greatest fucking viral. Freaking videos online, like, oh, they're incriminating themselves. It's all chopped up. <laughs> yeah, we don't care. <laughs> mm hmm. I think that's Bring why brothers, Darryl cousins. So much. <laughs> Daryl, Daryl likes to slip in when you're not looking, you know. He pulls a sneaky Pete. <laughs> No, nah, but it's all good. No, you're in a good place. These guys, these gotta, guys here are actually pretty tight. You know, that's got to find a place out in the middle of the woods where there's nobody. Just only a two track going down. Well, if I ever if I ever do get back to the Philippines, there's going to be about an eighty hectare track in the middle of freaking no place. It's going to look like a plantation. Am I, can, can they work on it? Yeah. And, and I, I, can make, I, I, I can make it. I can. I can get you the best shirts. No, I just bought Chris a bunch of t-shirts for his parking lot attendance. Okay, I don't want t-shirts. <laughs> but no, if if and when I do get back to the Philippines. It'll be at least a heady, 80 hectare track near a na near a national. What, what, what is what is that um, compared to acres? I'm I'm lost on that. Okay, a, a hectare is a little bit more than an acre. It's probably a thousand meters more than an acre. Now, if you want sustainable land. You've got to have at least 100 acres, which would equilitate to 80 hectares. Mm -hmm. So it's about 20%. Mm, yeah. Give or take. If you're, you're saying 100 acres and is 80 hectares, so that's 20%, correct? Right. you gotta, you got to look up the math. Okay, an acre is based on square yards. Whereas a hectare is based on square meters. Yeah, and a square extra, meter, three, extra three inches. Right. A square meter is 39 inches by 39 inches. An acre is 36 by 36 inches. So it's going to be a little Not bit. A yard. Mm -hmm. Yard. Yeah. But it just, my plan, it's a little slow. Plan, yeah, right. Whatever. It is what I'm it saying. is. <laughs> You blame, said it. Blame the white guy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but they sell land in the Philippines by the square meter. Hey, Maria. How are you? Oh, Maria's here. Okay, clean it up, guys. Maria's online. 
No, wait, I forgot. She's married to Simon. Gosh, gosh darn it. No, she's married to Simon. You can say, God damn it. <laughs> God damn Americans. Mm. God damn Yankees. <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, he's always like, well, damn Americans. Yeah. But if you want a sustainable living, you have to have at least 100 square acres. That's going to be about 80 hectares. Mm -hmm. And that's given space for rotating crops, growing a woodlot for your firewood or whatever you're going to try to do. You've got to have at least that 100 acres. And you rotate everything because mm -hmm. after you grow so many years, you're going to have someplace else to start growing on year number seven. So the place that you were growing can rest. Now, that's that's actually biblical. That's It's called the, the year of the Jubilee. Yeah, so I know um, up north in, in Michigan. After they so like, many uh, years, you're at yeah, after so many years, you got to let the ground rest. Because if not, you burn up the soil. Mm -hmm. so I know up in, uh, in Michigan, in other surrounding states, they'll be like, they'll grow corn one year, and next year they'll, they'll turn it, and then they'll, they'll make uh, soybeans, then back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. But after six years... You don't grow anything. You just put Let the ground sit. rest and don't touch it. And if you do that, your land will be, it'll, it'll stay perfect. Hey, Maria. Slayer beside you, I presume. Hello, Kennedy. That's Maria. It looks like I'm wearing a MAGA hat. MAGA? It's red on the bottom. Yeah, the oh, that, it, that's Michigan. <laughs> no, I, I, I bought this in the Philippines. That's not even close to Michigan. Okay, We're so that would be this. Manila. I'm going to call it Ghetto Michelob. Simon's in bed at 10 o'clock. Jesus. What? Does Simon have the coof? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Check the oxygen level. Yeah, there you go. That's the first. Pitch his, pitch his thumbnail. See if the color goes, comes back within two seconds. <laughs> No, it just pushes through. It's all blood now. Oh. Maybe he <laughs> caught the... You know what? Mm. Yeah, I said the coof. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking, because he never goes to bed at 10 o'clock. Well, he went to bed the early... What was it? Thursday night when I was doing the live? Yeah. He went to bed early that night. Yeah, he vanished. Because he, he got a bottle of Evan Williams, and he sent me a message on Facebook, said, that shit sneaks up on you. And I said, yeah. Oh, that, 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 was, that was <laughs> Tuesday. Or, no, that was um, that was last Saturday, I think. Last Saturday? No, Friday. Yes. Friday. Friday. When I was doing New Year's Eve. That was six days Saturday. ago. Yeah, that was Seven, eight long. days ago. Eight days ago. That was eight days ago. Yeah. He must be sick. If he's not on, he hasn't. He was he's resting. Maria he says he's on. resting for Monday. He came on. He came on Missy's texting a little bit last night, and then he disappeared. Yeah. He didn't come on Thursday. He texted a bit Thursday. The only one that he was really being on was Christmas Eve, or sorry, New Year's Eve. So I'm thinking maybe he caught that, you know what? Not sick, Garrett. Been chilling, watching fishing videos. 
Okay, just thought he was sick because he's been pretty quiet. Because, you know, like when I was sick those four days, I was sick as a dog, man. Yeah, I remember that. And I mean, I was supposed to fly out on the Monday morning or Monday afternoon. I, <laughs> six o'clock, I woke up. I said, no, I get now no blame. Well, he was trying American bourbon that night. <laughs> you mean the Williams stuff? For, that was Friday. That was Christmas Eve. Or sorry, New Year's. Yeah, that was New Year's Eve. He started drinking. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Evil, he started drinking the Evil Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was passed out by like one one thirty. Uh, we awesome. went backstage. We went backstage. Uh, about, I think I went on to two or three, and then we did backstage. Then after that, yeah, two or three your time, but it was still pretty early American yeah. time. I just said, yeah, yeah. I just said, fuck it, I went to bed myself. Yeah, but what city you in? Florida. He's in Gainesville, Florida? where where I used to live. Uh he's he's. Uh, uh. University of he's, Florida. He, he, he's, a, he's a Florida man. Go Gators. 13, I'm 13 hours behind you. T type in uh, Florida man in your your uh, birthday, your uh, month and day, and Google, huh? and it'll come up some random oh, weird crap my, that some find, crazy Florida guy did. On, you can find my birthday on Facebook. I don't hide shit. <laughs> uh, oh, he still have some of that Williams stuff left, but vodka is still a must. But he, he, the vodka is gone. He no, said he drank vodka, that all. vodka is just potato squeezings. Grey Goose okay. or something. What was it? Grey Goose or something? The yeah, bottle that Maria goose. got him. Yeah, Grey yeah, Goose Grey is uh, potato big liquor. Yeah, I think Grey Goose is like top of the line, like ten years ago or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's gone. <laughs> yeah. That was gone in a week. <laughs> a week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on, man. Man, I you get, drank the I get, a, I get a two liter bottle of bourbon and it don't last three days. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's you, Robert. <laughs> that's not silly, man. Man, I'll, I'll take a, a fifth for, for breakfast. See, yeah, exactly. Ray says, Grey Goose didn't last long. So, it was gone in a week or less. Yeah. So, yeah, I only had two beers. Uh, well, I had a beer at 8 o'clock, and then I had two beers with you guys at 12 o'clock. That's it. And I haven't had a beer since. Light I'm going off. I'm going. No, I'm going off the beer for what? No, if you can get off the beer, get off the alcohol, and you can spend five to seven days and not drink. Hey, I was off it for three months. Doesn't matter. On it for one day. One day. It doesn't matter. Off. If you can, that was if this you year. Get off of it, if you can get off of it and have an extended period of normal activity, you're doing good. Ask Ronald. Ask Dice, ask Simon and Maria. I was off it for three months, back on it one day, off it for three months, back on it for one day, off for three months, back on it for did, one day. Did I doubt you? No, did I'm I just saying. Like ask them if you want. Now, it would be nice if I could go three weeks, three weeks without the corn squeezing. <laughs> Oh, dang. Dude, I can tell you, I go, I go seven days, seven days without the corn squeezings, and I start going insane. I'm like, what do I do? In oh, the, I gotta find something the, to do. Oh, I gotta do this. I gotta do that. Oh, I gotta go here. I gotta go there. Take the dog for a walk. And then you, no. then you lose a sock in the process. Your dog, your dog would love you all those walks. Yeah, right. I I don't walk my dog. My dog walks me. Okay, well let let her let her walk you. Uh, I've went. 
I've went nine months. Yeah, that's good. Without. It does I've actually already... feel kind of good after a few days, though. Without. Uh, how many? But how many would. Uh... Of those bottles, would you drink in one session? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, today is a little different because live chat. And it just in the live chat I watched earlier. So I've been drinking ever so slowly. So how ever many so bottles? Slowly. How many bottles? I think three. Oh, that's nothing. That's nothing. Yeah, that ain't shit because it's only what no. six, seven percent alcohol. It's six point nine. Yeah, here's Craig. It's Craig. It's hey y'all, how y'all is? Hey Craig, what's the uh, yeah. computer? Uh, I'm not on it right now. Get Baby. your wife, get your wife get to turn computer? it on, and then you don't have to hold the phone all the time. Get the laptop on. <laughs> Yeah, that's Bullshit. Get the laptop. You've been a pain in the ass today. Yeah, great. And I'm, and I'm, I'm cooking for it, too. Here's her hat. <laughs> Darren just sent me a picture from the house. Go pick up truck. It's, in, it's looking good. That pick up I got my new way. shirt on. I got my new shirt on. Hey, Greg, it's hot days yeah. today. We're all I'm not afraid hats. of anything. I, I'm married to a Filipina. Yeah, but I'm just saying, it's hot day today. We're all wearing hats. Oh, is yeah. it? Baby, yeah, bring yeah. my hat. <laughs> my hat. Good, it's hat day. It's hot day. <laughs> Hey, it's hot day. Don't give me no shit. <laughs> Girl, don't give me no shit. It's hot day. I can wear anything I want to. Yeah, it's, it's hot day. day. Don't give me no shit. Can we do hood day tomorrow? <laughs> I, what's that? Can we do hood no, day I'm tomorrow, wearing, professor? I'm not wearing pants. I'm not wearing panties for you tomorrow. You can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh. the, the professor likes likes white men. It's hot day, woman. It's hot day, not hot day. It's hot day, not hot day. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give him hell. Oh, look, everybody, look, everybody's wearing a hat. I don't look, look, look. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> you want the bottle that I have or no? Yes, 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 yes. So, what the hell? <laughs> who, who let Kathy in? It's the baby $20 per hour. And it's crazy. And I pay, all, I pay all the bills and everything. I know. She's crazy. No, Most Filipinos are, but I still love her. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah. She's about to put you out. No, go, go to my messages. Baby. My messages. We got something that's live. Yeah, hang on. She's coming on. Uh, get, yeah, go up there. Go there. Yeah, you're right. Put, 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 it's hot day. Are you 18 years old? No. Older? I'm 16. <laughs> I'm only 20. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to put Kathy on, I'm going to change my hat again. She's too, she's too chicken shit to come on live stream. She's scared. Uh -huh. She's too shy. Wait for Chris, Chris Hansen to come in. Like, oh, Andre's kids? Andre's kids? I'm going to expose myself to anybody. Okay. Okay. I put this one on for guys. Uh-oh. Oh, there we are. We got, there we go. We got it. 
That's okay, okay, girl. It's okay, girl. Here's yet another one. She's, she's scared. Oh, because it's like she's scared. Oh, she's scared. Oh, she's scared. Don't be scared. Let me switch off this phone. Don't be scared. No, I'm not scared. He's I'm the one right there. Open it up. He's scared of me. We're just a bunch of foreigners. I'm scared of you too. <laughs> he don't like white men. Uh oh. Alright. Uh oh. Uh oh. It'll, It'll be back. That's what happened to us. It always happened with them, uh, Craig. At least he's better on the computer instead of using mm -hmm. the phone because he has to hold the phone all the time. It's back to work, ladies. All right, so I do something different. Yeah. Now I gotta take this no, one. No, no, no. I gotta open up a steam kettle and reshape this one. I ain't wore this one in like eight years. It's like holy fucking shit. I mean, he's got the cobble hat on. I got my head on backwards. Gareth got his head on forward. Yeah, because I'm FBI. <laughs> Mm hmm. If he had it on backwards, he'd be IBF. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Move that one over my head. <laughs> I got it straight away. And, 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 and Jack, you know what IBF stands for backwards? Ibuprofen. Irritable bow fucker. That's what it is. You ever ever had IBS? You know what irritable bowel is. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> there we go. All right, Michigan. Yeah. You yeah, shove a Modi in there, like. You know, like I, I, I changed my name to I, I love. Uh, okay, you just pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, Gareth. Yeah. Make your, What's make, your cap, make your cap say IBF and they'll think ibuprofen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this camera's all backwards. Is... That's what I hate. You know, you go to fix your hat, and it looks like the left side is low and the right side is high. You adjust. It's like, wait a minute. That's fucking backwards. Just put it down over your head. Over my head or my face? On your face. Like I mm. am. Because you've just got it up like that. <clears throat> Anyway. A little bit of the hairline still there. I shaved mine, so I couldn't. I don't have one. Yeah, I think I need maybe tomorrow. Eh, later to no. Hey, hey, I'll wake up hey, every, hey, morning, I'll, I'll every, morning, up every morning when I take my damn dogs out. I wear the same fucking hat. You guys can't get with the program. Yeah, Daryl, I had my booty hat earlier. Now you're wearing the uh, Gucci Man hat. I wear my hat every motherfucking morning when I take these dogs out. Get with the program, who You saw, you saw, you missed uh, <laughs> Ronald's hat. Uh oh. Uh oh, Ronald, what do you, yeah. see, you should see he Ronald's hat. Panama Jack. Yeah, yeah, the Panama Jack. <laughs> oh, I love the Panama Jack. Yeah, I got some leftovers from last night, man. What's this? I had fish all and right, chips last night. I couldn't no. eat them all. I had six pieces That's of fish. I, Oh she yeah, shares. the salmon. The salmon. No, no, that's salmon. This is a uh, white fish with the oh, chips. Yeah, yeah. That's big. Oh, that's a huge chunk. The that's a huge chunk. The the chunk of five pieces of it. And I, and I had uh, these fries. I haven't even touched last night. I fucking fell asleep drinking beer. <clears throat> the other chips were like actual uh, uh, potato chip slices. Yeah. Yeah, I made a video. The video is up already. Uh, those chips, I love those chips. What's up, Panama? Panama. Jack? What's going on? A little bit of Monica in my life. 
<laughs> that song came out when I was in Germany, man. Motherfucking Germans were dancing in the street. I'm in a bit of Monica in my life. They were loving it. Jessica all night long. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now you make me feel yeah. old because when I was in Germany, I would it was the fucking bird dance song. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like I remember that shit. Break. And we can't forget those 99 red balloons. Yeah. Oh, that was, mm. that was yeah. Mina. That was Mina. It's like I remember that shit. Yeah. 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 You want to mute the uh, YouTube, Craig? Yeah. Yeah. That was Mina. Come back, Craig. What's up? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that was Your your YouTube is on your computer. Your YouTube is on your. Wait, wait. Hang on a second, Craig. Your YouTube is on. Just mute your YouTube on the computer. Your YouTube is on your. Wait, wait. Hang on a second, Craig. Your YouTube is on. It's on here. Yeah. On the computer. Oh, okay. <laughs> it sounds crazy as fuck. You, you gotta find that. You gotta find the tab. I got twenty tabs open. Okay. Cool. You ain't that live. Yeah, that was that and, was and five uh, of them in porn channels. Uh, I, I wonder if I can go in here two times. I got my other phone. Wow, 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 I'm watching wow, YouTube. Wow, wow. That's yeah, you can. Oh, you have to give me the thumbs up. Where's my thumbs up? Because I've only had six so far. Hold on. I, I, I was straight hey, from Messenger, bro. Commando. I, I, I damn sure didn't do it. Let me let me give you a thumbs up. So I, I got to find out where the hell everything is at. I, <laughs> I got to get that. <laughs> I, I, I damn sure didn't do it. Me neither. I went straight to uh, Messenger. Yeah, you I went on the thumbs up. Uh, I'm going to go to... I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on StreamYard and see if I could go on twice and just hop back out. Because I got my other phone. Yeah, put okay. it on, Mom. For no reason. I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> man, I just took the dogs for a walk, man. Yeah, not, a, not, a creature, not a creature in sight. This is like a fucking United States neighborhood at, at six in the morning. Nobody was walking. Around, not a dog. Not a cat. Nothing. Miss Universe came out. She saw me walking the dog. Miss Universe came out and started watering down her little driveway. I didn't want to be creepy and get a picture of her. <laughs> Did she not say hello to you? Yeah, I said, she said hello, and I said hello. Okay. She had them damn shorts on, them short shorts with, you know, the, the type of shorts that have whatever color it is on the side. They had the white line. So why didn't you get a picture yeah, of they're her, called, man? They're called no, hot no, 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 no. Secret, no, secret, no. secret. How do you do that, oh. man? With your phone. <laughs> Hold it yeah. down here. No, nah, you would have to have like a, a, a I don't know, go, I don't know. Somebody got this shit on. Echo, echo, echo. Daryl, no you gotta go back. You gotta go back to the 1970s when they had hot pants. I know, stupid. Oh, almost, hair. it's almost like How that. What are you doing today? Hey, man, you know what terry cloth, terry cloth shorts are? Terry cloth. Yeah. And yeah. then they got the white line down the side, and uh, they outline it. That's what she had on, because you know it's yeah. her privacy. It's in her driveway, man. It's her private life. She didn't expect some, some, <laughs> some sixty, some sixty almost year old dude taking pictures of her ass. Yeah, that's why she did it. She's waiting for you to come by with your dog <laughs> and take some photographs. Mm -hmm. Make them feel sexy. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I had to do it. Some bullshit like that. Hey, Sounds like you Craig. Toilet. Howdy, Craig. Howdy, Howdy. Robert. How be is it? So, Just Craig, enjoy some leftover fish and chips. Craig, you're on the panel before you started chiming in. What's up with that? What's that? You're on the panel before you started typing messages. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's messed up, bro. No, okay. he was saying, saying it I'm to Maria. I'm backwards like that. He was saying hello to Maria and Michael. No, I'm just. What's wrong with I'm that? Just, I was looking on. I was looking on because I can't see the chat. I was looking on the chat to see who I was there. 
Yeah, I'm just instead poking of saying fun. hello to them while everybody was talking, I just typed it in. I'm just poking fun because you're gonna because you're gonna monitor you're gonna you're gonna use all the speaking engagement. Hey, Craig, I'm just poking fun, man. I know. Oh, well, on that note, I'm going for cigarettes. I'll be hey. back. Ooh. I already am. How y'all doing today? Not bad. How's everything in the Philippines? Good? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's good. I heard, a lot, I heard they're locking stuff down again, man. That's, that's a drag. It's like, I, I, I heard... Hold on, but it ain't going to be nothing. Let me mute this. Hey, man, it's 78 degrees, a light wind coming out the south. Ain't no drama. Ain't nobody shooting nobody. There you Good go. Man. Nobody fighting, nobody arguing. I went out to walk my dogs. It looked like the world came to an end. There was not a – I didn't even hear no birds chirping. I don't hear no damn – no insects, no nothing. It's just me and my dogs walking through the grass. I could hear them walking through the grass because ain't nothing going on here quiet as hell. And then Miss Miss Universe popped out on her on her driveway and started watering down her driveway and then waved oh, at yeah. them. Oh shit! <laughs> I missed that. Just quiet. She's she was quiet. trying to drop them DMs. Well, as, as peaceful as it can be, because you know. The hey, hey! I had, had to move fast different. because I'm wearing my pajamas here, but I ain't had no underwear on, so I ain't want somebody to like. Uh, I ain't want to be walking around like Pee Wee Herman. Uh, uh, sw <laughs> sw swing, swinging that shit. You know what I'm saying? A fucking, you know, all of a sudden, uh, four skins start pulling back, start looking out, going, hey, what's out there? What's up, man? Yeah, it's like, what's up, Papi Chulo? No, Papi Chulo. <laughs> yeah, man. It's all good. I sent G G Garrett some pictures when I was walking, but he ain't showed none of y'all pictures. Oh. He is. He is. He's, he's hot, hard him for himself. You know what I'm saying? He was hoping that I'd make a mistake and get a picture of Miss Universe so he'd, keep it, he'd hoard it to him for himself. Uh, I'm hoping the part will go out. Mrs. Universe, Miss Universe. <coughs> okay, somebody's doing a dual feed. That's Jack. He, but he, yeah. one of them doesn't have the mute and sound on, though. Yeah, well, you see, Jack likes black man, but Ronald likes white man. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. <laughs> it's just a play. I did a play on, on his, hey, his you thing. Like you have a buffet, man, like Jeffrey Dahmer buffet. Oh, oh, we need to get we need a, get a Mexican in here. Yeah, I get my tab. Should, should I get my tablet? Hey, Zeus. <laughs> and I get another one, maybe. Maybe a maybe an Asian. I think he did one Asian. I know he did yeah, one um, Mexican, and the rest were black and maybe one white. I think. Yeah. He's yeah, like, well, oh, I just take uh, let's take the genitalia off and throw that in the freezer. I'm like, oh God, come on, man. Oh, dude. man. Just, <laughs> hey Jack, anytime you can, make fun of all of them because they earned it. Eyeball. They play all these stupid fucking games. It's like holy fucking shit. That's some of the sickest crap I ever heard in my life. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I hate these fuckers. They try to turn everything into some kind of innuendo or a uh, racial obscurity. It's like, come on, dude, get a fucking life. Mm hmm. You can't just yes, go out sir. and date somebody, not just dude, go go to McDonald's and get your get yourself a yeah, freaking burger. Yourself. Don't don't don't, uh, don't eat somebody. I could go to McDonald's and eat four Big Macs. No problem. Yeah, yeah good. we know we, we know Gary. I can knock out two of them, my damn shit. I know for sure I can, I know for sure I can knock out two. Two? <laughs> nah. I know for sure I can knock out two of these motherfuckers. I'll I tell you what, four. you know what? Do you know what I Even missed? this year. I missed back in the late 60s, early 70s, when everybody could go to a restaurant and just have a fucking meal. Yeah. And it, today it's like, holy shit, why are you going to turn it into some kind of obscurity? Why? 
Well, that just goes through. Yeah. Karen's everywhere. Just use drive through if you don't want to be in there. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Daryl. Daryl, I love the I love the Asian meat without the soy marinade. Yeah, too much too much sodium. sodium. <laughs> oh my god. You know what's you know what's <laughs> nice about Asian? You know what's really nice about Asian? Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> you don't have you don't have to deal with a bearded clam. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't go far and say all that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what, are gonna, what are you gonna do is ask and it's gone? Shay 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 shay. <laughs> Back in the day. I'm keeping it to myself. Hey, no, hey, hey I'm keeping man. it to myself. Hey. Uh oh, Ronald went south of the border. <laughs> but he's doing he's doing some uh, <laughs> machine work. He, he's making his hoods for the the meeting later. No pillowcases. Yeah. Pillowcases for <laughs> six of them. Pillowcases. Oh. <laughs> 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 he wants to join yeah, the KKK. Right. Hey, Ronald. Make <laughs> sure those pillowcases don't have a pointed top. Makes an antifa right up. He's gonna he's gonna round it on the top so it doesn't look uh, what is it uh, <laughs> iconic. So you know it doesn't look like it's. Supposed to be. Oh, man, I reckon. oh god! <laughs> Funny. I got my, I got my, I got my sack. Me and my friend, we got our sack to clutter, collect our uh, cotton later for my, my shirt. anyone. Yeah. Nothing scares me. My wife is Filipina. Nothing scares me. <laughs> there you go, Craig. <laughs> I'm telling her uh, hobo shit. Yeah, she's in the backyard playing with her cat. Put oh, it down. So it's too Daryl, high. You did take pictures. That's the CCTV. It's nice. So I can zoom in on uh, Miss Universe sometimes on this on this on this one right here. I can just zoom it in, blow it up, and she be and she be bending over playing. With, Trying to trying to water her her her, her stuff, and I'd be like, "Damn, she doing that shit." On please, purpose? please don't show us your your crusty sock next to CCTV. <laughs> Man, that's a that's not a sock. That's a a, a face mask. That's that my my wife has this uh uh she has a, a I don't know it's a thing that she does. She always even a plastic bag when we eat food. She always ties wash that shit. She ties it and, and 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 you know I'm like why do you wash plastic and then tie and dry it and tie it up for you know they got like a oh the, yeah the, I, he gonna show me the same thing why do they do that <laughs> she does you the same thing like, with the mask now like, she'll wash I, the mask I, and then tie them up and then hang them and stuff and I'm like throw that shit in the garbage who gives a fuck we we'll buy another one shit my my mom back in the day. When I was like, shit, maybe like 10 years old, she was washing out, um... Sandwich bags? Oh, paper towels. No, paper towels and, and paper plates. But and they're laminated paper plates, dry. and you hang them in the, in the kitchen to dry it and reuse them again. I'm like... You know, that's poor. What? what? Come on. That's what that's what, that's, what, that's, what, that's when you grew up with nothing. They make everything last forever. Mm -hmm. and, and she like she likes to hoard things too. So I I guess us, you know, she grew up here. Of course, she left here in '77, went to the U.S. But she hoarded whatever she can you know hoard because she didn't have much when she was here. Yeah, that's that's normal, Jack. Mm hmm. But on Daryl's side of the fence, it's like trooping the lines. Make everybody break out all their shit and lay it out. Every one of them damn troopers has one sock that's called Mr. Happy. And it stands up in the corner. Ow. Yeah, you don't you don't want to know who Mr. Happy is. 
Are there are there any are there any girls in this uh, chat? No. I could bring some, but I sometimes it ruins it. When they first met me, I used to bring girls here to be acting giggling and laughing and fuck up the stream, man. I, I was gonna say something, but it's probably I, 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 I don't want to say it. It's pretty inappropriate. Oh, context. Uh, we can do it backstage afterwards. Mm -hmm. it's just Everything on this channel. Yeah, Maria is probably Maria's right there. <laughs> where is it? Where is the um, what they call that thing? Where is the, the thing for people to add? Call it a link, I guess. You call it a link. Okay. Where is the link for this thing? Link for what? For this YouTube. Stream. I, that's yeah, Sorry. Stream for Streamyard. Why? Who's somebody? Somebody want to come up? I'm getting ready to buy some hoes. What? Yeah, bring them up. Bring them up, Daryl. Do you you mean you mean get rid of uh this one? No, 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 no. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave okay. it. Hey, you know we've, what? We've nice got space. Tonight. We've got we've got space for uh for three more. Yeah. All right, uh, I'll be right, all right back. I gotta make some room for uh my uh cold coffee. Coffee. There you go. Okay. Stick it in the microwave or top it off. Oh, oh, I'm not in the microwave. Garrett, Garrett do you know what's That's nice good. about hoes? Oh, you know what's nice here. about hoes? Hoes are honest. They'll tell you the truth. There's the link, uh, Daryl. I'll find out where I'm at here. Where, where you at? Right back. Am I wrong, Daryl? I don't know what you said. I said hoes are honest. Oh, hoes are honest. They're honest. They don't care. I don't know what you said. <coughs> said they'll tell you the truth and you just deal with it. Sometimes you don't want the truth. <laughs> nah, the truth, the so truth mad. will set you free. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me, uh, I gotta do something. Howdy, Gordon. Just got a new guy up there, Gordon Freeman. Yeah, on, he doesn't, Gordon? he doesn't have a channel. I checked him out before. No, that's all good. But I think it's, uh, somebody that I know, that we all know that's no longer up here anymore. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Anyway, doesn't bother me. It don't bother me. Anyway, we got space. We got space. I thought Sue would come up because she, uh, I sent her a link. Yeah. Uh, that's true. I know. She, no. Not Daryl's wife. Somebody Sue. Sue. No, Olga. Oh, Sue. Sue. S U E. Oh, okay. She lives in Cyprus. A friend of mine. Okay. Because she said to me last night, uh, it, "Well, I'm doing a live uh, to let her know," and then I did, and then I sent her the link, but nothing. So I don't know. Might be a little late for her. She's only two hours ahead of me. What time is it there now, Gareth? Twelve fifty-one. Yeah. Yeah, she's still awake. Oh well, yeah. Well, I don't know if she could be out because I she posted a picture it's like up there, Jack. She posted a picture there a while ago that she was out, so she could be out. I got these Aviana bikes. I can't drink right now. Bombs me out. You teasing me like that? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> hey, so Greg, I'll Greg. Get a, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Craig, yeah. I haven't had a beer in eight days. Good for you. Or bad for you. I don't know. It depends on where you no. stand. Hey, it's no yeah. big deal for me. I'm off of, like, Robert. Yeah, is that Diet like Coke? I don't drink, yeah, I don't drink very much anymore either. Is that Diet yeah, Coke? Yeah. That's not good for you. Craig. That's my, I'm addicted to this crap. It, it's not good. Nice my mom stuff. turned diabetic. Yeah, it's not good for me, but I drink it. I tell you what, Craig, when I used to go to the Philippines, I'd buy those uh, 
four Coke light. two liter bottles of Red Horse. Yeah. And we had about, a, we about like the six, beach, six in the case. A bunga, and then a big barbecue. Oh, God. Everybody was shit faced. I drank a six of them by myself. They get on a bike, go to the bar. I remember yeah. you saying that. I drink San Miguel's all night long. <laughs> I could drink like a fish back then. Yeah. But now when I drink, it just reminds me why I quit. I feel like crap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, put it this way. When I go over to Daryl there in the future, um, that's going to be a hell of a piss up. Big time. It's, it's hard, Gareth, because it's so cheap. Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like pennies. Too. My yeah. first night with Daryl, you think we're going to be sober? No, <laughs> <That's> what happened? <laughs> you live <laughs> sober. If I went to Daryl's, I'd, I'd I'd need a hand truck to wheel <laughs> us out. I'll I'll even go live. I'll even go live. <laughs> you guys can watch us. And he's inviting oh all of us over there, so we'd be we'd be one hell of a mess. <laughs> oh, I got to be a mess. <laughs> I could, well, I'm not going to be uppity like Marcus when he was in his pub that time. Yeah, that'll well, be a bigger mess when you went to bed, visit Simon. <laughs> no, I wasn't drunk there once when I was over. I was drunk on uh, Tony's live months ago. Yeah, but why didn't you get drunk on Simon's? Simon doesn't drink. Well, Simon that wasn't been, drinking that, that much. That would have been funny. I, I never drank in Simon's house once. Every time I was in his house, we never touched the drink. That's crazy. I just drank. I just drank water. Because Simon always talks about what he drinks. I try not to drink water. No, he people wash their butts with that shit. He had. We were in Liverpool. He had. Uh, it might have been because of the girls. But if what, I go to no, I go, sure, it was just I him go, and me. It was just him and me. The girls weren't with us. Yeah. And he, was go, down, and he was in the hotel as well. We were at the bar. If I go, if I go to Simon's house, everybody's going to get shit-faced. <laughs> because it's just funny. Well, I, I swear to you, Robert, you weren't around then. I did a live from uh, the hotel bar with Simon sitting beside me. <clears throat> I was drinking beer. Simon was drinking Guinness. Simon had two or three points. That was it. I had more because I wasn't driving. Well, yeah, Simon Simon knows how to regulate his alcohol. Yeah, but he was driving. He was driving. Yeah, that's okay. That's cool. Yeah, but you don't you don't do that in Ireland or UK because you can get clicked like that. Yeah, well, you can here in the US also. Yeah, I know. You go to <laughs> But me, they, anyway. they, they, they look for you. In the U.S., yeah. so look for anybody that's going to touch the white or yellow line. Boom, you're pulled over. Yeah, but I thought Maria would have given him a lift down. I didn't know he was coming down in the car. Well, he came down yeah. in the van. I would have thought he would have come in the van. Or sorry, Maria would have dropped him off. No, he should have came because he's only five minutes. Yeah, but he's only five. his house is only five minutes away from the hotel. Five minutes. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, he had he had two or three points of Guinness anyway. So. No, that's still a substantial amount. Okay. Yeah, but he had something to eat as well. He had dinner in the in, in the hotel. Yeah. He had uh, fish and chips. Well, you know, I can sit here and I can drink for like two days. Yeah, but you're Go, not to, the liquor store, go to the liquor store 25 miles away, come back, and join back in. Like, no else? way, man. There's no way I would do that. That's suicide, man. That's suicide. Welcome to the world of alcoholism. <sighs> I'd just be scared if I kill somebody. No, the road, the road that I drive is a straight highway. Okay, a straight highway. There's no traffic. Yeah. There's other cars on the road. I mean, I'm like <clears throat> I'm like 30, 40 miles west of Newberry. Mm -hmm. There's nothing out here. Yeah, unless, you make a motorists. Trip, unless you make a late night trip to Hardee's. Yeah, but no, Robert, 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 you're not listening. There's other cars on the road. You're not the only car on the road. 
Well, when I drive, mm-hmm. I'm the only car on the road. <laughs> I used to go out. I used to wait to like, like, like eleven o'clock to go out, and that way I could drink all night and sneak back home in the in the morning traffic. Going to yes. work, I would sneak back home about six, seven o'clock in the morning. Nobody ever noticed me, but I was on a motorcycle too. Hey, there's one time I got pulled over. I'm not going to say Colorado Springs, but south of Colorado Springs in Colorado. And I had a really bad night with my issues. I was drunk as shit. And I was driving through Southern Colorado doing like 60 miles an hour in a 25. And a cop pulled me the fuck over. Was I drunk? Oh, I was drunk as a motherfucker. I was drunk. But when I rolled down the driver's window, I also rolled down the passenger window. And he asked me what's going on. He couldn't smell anything because I got the cross breeze. And I told him, I said, look, I'm retired. I just had a bad night. You got me. I'm sorry. Just write the ticket. And we'll call it a day. And he did that. So he wrote me a ticket. Yeah, Jack. Tell him to take it up. Ticket for doing 65. We can fit 10 people up on here. Okay. And then I went to court and I had it dismissed and moved to a, we call it a disabled vehicle charge. Paid eighty five dollars and I went back to fucking home. I don't give a shit. Ask her to subscribe to my channel, uh, Jack. I could do it all the subs I can get. <laughs> but when look when a cop when a cop comes up to your car, don't just roll down your window. Roll the window down on the other side of the car. Nice. Put them both oh, down. I and when you, talk, it. when you talk, when you talk to the officer, don't look at him. You can talk and hold your breath at the same time, like a ventriloquist. Not a chance. That's bad advice. The only, the only reason that a cop will talk to you in a traffic stop is because he's fishing. He's looking for more. <coughs> Roll down you're both giving, windows. Robert, you're giving bad advice. No, I'm giving advice. you I'm giving you sound advice. That's Roll bad. down I both do windows. It. I, I would don't never care. Do it. I don't care if you drank or did not drink. Roll both windows down. Don't look at him when you speak. If I'm sober, I can look at whoever I want. Well, it I doesn't matter. Do it. it don't matter. Look, I've been pulled over by the cops in America. I've been pulled over by the cops in Ireland. I've been pulled over by the cops in the UK. I okay. always look at the police when they, officer. When they ask you, where are you, going? where are you going? I tell them. No, I say, no, when I tell them, I'm going that way. And they when say, I where? Tell them. I just say, that way. I'm going the cop that pulled me, the cop that pulled me in the UK, said, "Where are you going?" And I said, "I'm going to Hollyhead. I've got a boat to catch." I didn't give him and that then, information. No, I that's did. Not, that's, that's none hey, of your business. I don't care. It's none of your business what I tell the cop. Come on, if so I want to tell him something, not, I'm not going to cause business. hassle with a cop. I'm not going to cause hassle with a cop. No way. I'm going to be polite. If you ask me a question, I'll answer the question. End of. No, I don't I don't give them crap either. But when they ask me where I'm going, I just say I'm going that way. Because I have freedom of travel. <coughs> yeah, but I'm not going to get into that the de- situation. The, desti- the destination is none of their business. Yes, I know that. But I'm not going to be rude and end up sitting there for an hour or two. Because I'm a no, cop choice. You're not going to sit, you know, sit there for an hour. Because anything over 20 minutes 
So if you're not having it's anything, you're done that tomorrow. It's called unlawful. Anything, anything over 20 minutes is like unlawful detainment. Yeah, well. They got 20, they got 20 minutes to write you a ticket, charge you, or arrest you. You got 20 anyway, minutes. Robert, it ain't going to happen. Are we going okay. First Amendment auditor on here? Yeah. <laughs> Seems I don't. Like I it. don't go. I don't. I don't go for that. I don't go for no, that. I watch do a lot I. of. Do I. I've seen, I watch a lot I've of videos enough. and people getting clowned because none of it matters anyway. No, the, the first minute hours, whatever, it doesn't matter. And like, oh, or the Moors, like, oh, we, we own this land. No, your Moors are usually the black people, but they were born in the U.S. and they don't own the land, but the. People that actually own the land are the Native Americans that are getting shoved into, you know. Yes. Reservations. And so you, 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 got real bad. Real bad. you got to understand in the U.S. how. If anybody long owns reservations, it's American Natives. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you understand how the law works in the U.S., anytime you get pulled over, the cop doesn't care what you just fucking did. He don't care. Don't you want to be five, eight, nine miles over the speed limit. He don't care. Every question he asks is fishing for more information. So what? So don't give it to him. I will I give it to him. Here's my driver's license. Here's my insurance. If he wants to search my car with any warrant, if he wants to search my car... Robert, if he wants to search my car without a warrant, no problem. No, you never concede to a search. <laughs> well, Ever. I will. I will. No, I won't. I, I did one time. One time in my life I did. And I did not know that my ex-wife had a gun behind the back seat of my truck. Well, the car that I'm in would be a red cops. I told the cops, there's nothing in my truck. Go ahead and look. Robert, the car that I'll be in will be a rental car, so there won't be any gun in it. No. My my truck. Okay, I know. I'm saying, if I'm stopped in America, in a rental car, I know there's no gun in my car. So what's the well, problem? Check your fucking vehicle before you say that. <laughs> And, if, and if it is, and if it is, and if there is a gun in there, it's the rental cars people problem. They didn't check it, and they well, clear it up. Rob, you got it. You got it. And if I don't get stopped, I got a brand new gun. One of these guys that's a, I'm a, a sovereign citizen. I'm gonna do this and that. You're gonna get in trouble, man. No, yeah, exactly. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, Daryl, and Colorado, the state, state of Colorado, and, and, oh, uh, and the state. Of Colorado. Let me get my, let me get my script. Oh, uh, where, where I start? Where I start? Uh, what would you say? Oh, okay. You can point out on my my script where it should start. Oh, oh, section three. Okay. Oh yeah. It's just stupid things, man. You just make people get in trouble and just go to jail for no reason. Yeah. Just comply, yeah. give me your ID, and just move on. It's a simple. Yes, sir, no, oh, sir, you got no, a you got no. a brake light out. You're good. Yeah. Just fix it in ten days. Hey, Susan. Anyway, Susan's in the house from Cyprus. Hey, Hello, Susan. Susan. Susan, how are you? <coughs> what if I could if I could add Daryl with my third wife? Okay. My 1911 was in the house. It was in the closet and the bedroom on the shelf. We had some stupid whatever. She was Native American. She was whacked. Crazy as hell. I left on a Friday. I came back on Saturday to get a uniform, get my truck, so I could be present for duty on Monday. I've said it a thousand they, times. They put, no, they put the damn gun behind the seat and said, I threatened her with a gun. It's in my truck. The hey, bitch was up. psycho. We got that's that's, that's my fiance. From... Oh, okay. I've said okay. it a million the times. Cops, what's, what's, her what's her name? What's what's her name? Risa, Risa Hello, Marie. Risa. Hi, Risa Marie. Hello, Marie. Nice Marie. She was. She wants to come into the chat. Yeah, she can come up. Just click the link. I'll drop it again. 
Ninety-nine percent of people's problems are brought on by themselves. Yep. Exactly. Craig. The cops asked that they could search my truck. I knew my truck was clean. I said, "Go ahead. There's nothing in there but an old broken." Oh, see, it was your fault. You trusted your wife or whoever she was. It put guns Thank behind you. you. And the first thing they did the was pull the front seat that. forward. They pulled out the fucking gun. I'm screwed. Now I'm AWOL facing domestic violent charges. No bail. No nothing. Never, ever again will I, I say hey, Robert, you can search my truck. Robert, Robert, we've Robert. been on this cop thing for an hour now, please. Next. We're changing the subject next. Next. End of. Okay. Just giving you my closure. Yeah, we'll talk about it on the private chat. Some yeah. spectrum stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's got too heavy for me. Here's all of this crap. She'd be like, oh, I don't think so. Oh, man. Okay, we're have a good time. We don't hear all that. Mm -hmm. I think that was my first time, like, voice to voice with one. Like, you know, Karen, I haven't uh, witnessed uh, Karen in real life, but I'm sure Jack, when I get back home, Jack, I will. Jack, Jack, too much. You know what I mean? It happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to rein it in. You know what I mean? Every time. Anyway, I've got full control. Oh, yeah, I have to click a button. <laughs> 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 yeah. The, put it this way. We're all, it, we're all friends here. Oh yeah, we've been friends here a long time. But sometimes okay, some people are you ready to get me? Huh? You too ready to get me? Just huh? rain him in. Huh? 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 I've explained to him the rules before. So <laughs> if it gets overboard bearing, he knows what's gonna happen, what I'm gonna do. Oh no, another dead soldier. Gotta get no, 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 no. Just a timeout. No, I mean this one here. Jack ran out of beer on that bottle. That's a shame. <laughs> I sure you got get I got, a, cup, I, I got about four yeah. ounces and a six ounce cup. Thank you, Reza. Howdy, Reza. Is there is there gonna be a live tomorrow? No, I'm not doing one tomorrow. Should I, I, I did one Thursday. I was on uh, Mrs. Probably. yesterday, oh, and I'm doing one today. So I'll, Tuesday. I'll do one on Tuesday. Well, usually you do Tuesday and Saturday. <clears throat> well, before you came back, Robert, I used to do Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Oh, okay, I thought it was just two days a week. No, I used to do three times a week before okay. you came back. Before you came back. With all this Rona going around, you might as well be on every day. <laughs> Man, that's yeah, no too much. I, sometimes so, I have to walk away from YouTube because I'm spending too yeah, much time on it. I know. I don't even have I only have cable TV. And every time I turn on YouTube, there's something about three or four people getting shot. I said, damn, man, every day. Give me a break. But I, I like break. watching documentaries and things like that. That's why I use YouTube. But you know, like I'm checking my channel, I'm checking this. There's comments I have to reply. Yeah. Like I had a shitload of comments yesterday. Yeah, I, I, do a lot of, I do a lot of research on YouTube. I must have like 15, 20 comments, so I had to reply to every one of them. If you read YouTube right, it can be like college. You learn so yeah. much crap on there. Yeah, I had 15, 20 comments yesterday. I had to reply to every one of them. So, you know, like I can't just say thank you or I appreciate it. I have to write something, you know what I mean? I don't, so, just uh, them, I, I don't just give them a thumbs up or a heart. I actually, you know, have a conversation back to them. Yeah. Sometimes they can big, sometimes they can be small. So it takes I mean, a while. I don't, so, I don't uh, even have TV. Yeah. All I have is internet. <laughs> I turned yeah, but, off regular TV years yeah, ago. Robert, it's easy for you because you just got to do this. I'm a YouTuber. I make videos. I have to reply to my subscribers that's my yeah. job to a that's point, my job yes. and hosting panels like this is like a job as well because this is kind of like entertainment 
for all of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll give you that. Have a, have a, Jack, Jack's uh, have, a, have, a, uh, have a question. Uh, next um, next panel we got, mm -hmm. next uh, live. Since today was hat day, what's the, what's mm -hmm. the next one? <laughs> T-shirt day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm already in a T-shirt already. Yeah, well, everybody has to wear a T-shirt that day. Or an ugly T-shirt you don't no, like. Is it going to be a sweaty armpits T-shirt day or just a nah, t No, nah, no. No, you can't smell that, mate. <laughs> How about a T-shirt that don't fit? Oh, I've got I one got of those. That. I've got one of those. T-shirt that don't fit. I'm a T-shirt and boxer. Oh, right shit. Now. I can't. <laughs> Fucking green screen. Shit. I, th I think the T-shirt the and uh, boxers pile won't go good no, with the... No, no, no. Yeah, we, ain't, we ain't doing boxers. Ain't that's gonna be no much, boxers. Jack, that's too much information. <laughs> that's too much information. Socks and sandals. No, we're not gonna, we're not gonna look at yeah, you. Oh, I'm already there. All right, you got to now. Just clean. Just make it sunglasses or something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I have to dig out hey, a pair of. Uh, hey, Ronald. Why don't we have a, a pillowcase? Yeah, a pillowcase. We all wear a pillowcase over our heads. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, we, no, we no you can't go there. We change the names. Of no, the you, you, and people no, have to no. guess who's, who's who. <laughs> no, no, Dad. We, we didn't have 500 years of pillowcase. <laughs> So Thank let's Rick. we're gonna do what? Hello Case <laughs> Friday? Mm -mm. <sighs> I'll have the NAACP in this motherfucker so fast. <laughs> How many did you get done wrong? Yeah, and a random fucking leprechaun like standing here with the fucking <laughs> no, Guinness, really. like oh, why am I here? Oh shit, I'm in the wrong fucking place. <laughs> no, Maria, he's on he's on the Diet Coke. Now there will be no sheets and pillowcases. I'll drink whiskey. Ever. What? I'll sip on scotch every great now and then on the rocks, but I don't I don't drink regular whiskey. There you that go. Char that charcoal shit in there make me gets my gag reflex just right and I'll be puking all over the place. Oh la la la. Hey Risa. Yeah, hey Risa, hey, hope Risa, you subscribe to my Risa, YouTube. Risa, come on. Babe, come on. And give me a thumbs up. Oh, need the thumbs up and a come on, Risa. You're Show upstairs, my house. It. Show her how to do it. She might know how to do it. Okay, is this this one muted? No, leave it there. Yeah, yeah, your mute, your phone is muted. Risa is a university student, she ain't stupid. No, but it's Sorry. the phone. Well, anyway, I, was make sure she's Craig, I was gonna tell Craig, at least you can fill up some. I just dry heave. Nothing comes up. Uh, I, can't stand, I can't man. stand whiskey. Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, none of that crap. I just can't drink it. It's just nope. nasty. Yep. I can well, sip on a little scotch on the rocks. That's pretty good. I can drink tequila. I can drink white lightning. I can even have a little bit of vodka and a bloody Mary, but no, nah, I don't even like vodka that much. My right. favorite, my Me. favorite is white lightning, but it's hard to come by nowadays. What what is white lightning? Pure grain alcohol. Oh, it's, like, okay. it's like it's like it's like it's like it's like 100, 180, 190 proof. Moonshine. It's like, yeah, moonshine. Yeah, right. I was gonna say moonshine. Up. Moonshine's like one eighty to one ninety proof. Yeah. We call we call it putching over here. You can what? put it in your car and drive on it. Greg, we call it putching over here. It's oh, Irish. Okay. You know, I read all when I was in this when I was in the Philippines. I read all the laws on that, and there was no law against you building your own still on your property or in your house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got and, uh, and, and John the in the house. They got a version. They got Hello, a version Rob's. in the Philippines that is made hey, from coconut trees. Hey, John, come up on That's the panel. Just wicked. How are you, monks? 
John was uh, at uh, Simon's house for Boxing Day with uh, yeah, Zen, Boxing his Day, wife. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, that was a that was funny as shit, man. Funny uh, as yeah, shit. That's, that's John. How you doing, yes. John? Yeah, I just said John. <laughs> oh, that was funny as shit, man. John beat Simon. I fucking knew it. Simon said, <laughs> "Oh, I'll beat John." Simon or John beat Simon big time. I wasn't being biased with Simon because I know Simon, but uh, I knew John would beat him, and he did. Nice one, John. Hey, John, wait till I go to Simon's house. I'll get Simon so shit faced he won't be able to see sideways. <sighs> See? See what I see? Yep. We all know Simon came in second. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Rubbers no, no I'm not trying to brag. Rub his nose in it. I'm not trying to brag, but I guarantee you, I will get Yeah, Simon we know. So shit faced, he won't be able to see sideways. And Robert, we'll Robert, if I was, if you were in Simon's house with me and John and Simon, you would beat the three of us. One hundred percent. I would put my money on you. It's not because it's not because my liver's jacked up. It's just because no, you I'm win. that kind of an. I don't care. I'm an you're asshole. Really, you're already fully saturated, John, Robert. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> Maria's I'm getting so her serious. words in. Maria's a, getting her words I'm, in. Mister Four Percent. I'm a tenacious asshole. I don't care how drunk I am. I'm not going down until no. you go down. It's just how it Where is. did they get a load of me? Well, see this. John writes, to be honest, I came first. Yes. Yeah. Then Maria. I saw her try to pour wine into a glass with the top still on. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> John. John. He ain't running. John ain't running to me and Robert and Daryl yet. And then, and then Maria puts some what got some rose into the glass and then she spills it. Out the well, I might even start drinking for that. Hey, how about when Maria was trying to pour a glass of wine and get my, get my, get my That's what I just said. Tequila here. I just said that, Robert. All out. Yeah. Oh, that was funny as shit, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I cracked up. Well, no, I'm such an asshole. When you're not looking, I will eat an entire stick of butter before we start drinking. Why? Because butter will come. I know, I know, I know, I know. I've seen it. Yeah. Many times, many times you've told Maria, many times I've seen the text. Yeah, eat the butter. I can't no, thank right you. Uh -uh. It works. I don't care. I ain't doing it. I don't like butter that much. What's the side effects of that? No, there's know. no side effects. Care. It slows the uh, heart disease. Is um, is there a way? Um, tell some a friend of mine. He's he's back home in the U.S. He's trying to get back here. To, he's got a girl here. You can see. Um. Can I invite him to the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, um, Jack, we can fit 10 on the panel. And if we need space for another person after we got the 10, I can mm -hmm. knock off one of your cameras. So we have loads of yeah. space. Daryl, stick of butter, side effect, runny stool. <laughs> oh, oh, got the shit. Professor. Buttered popcorn. <laughs> Heart disease, running stool. Buttered popcorn and B. No, I kid you not. Smell like butter. I will, no, I will eat a stick of butter. Go for it. And then it. you want to do it. You want to do a chug -a -lug contest? I'll empty the entire fifth of bourbon without even swallowing. And when everybody's walking around being all fucked up, I'll go, the house. I'll go behind the house. I'll stick my finger down my throat and I'll pick it up. Hey, and maybe. 
Bam. Let's get it cracking. That, that wax on the top of that seal. And Skippy. Mm. Great Kentucky flavor. Get you some, Ronald. Put a hole in your back. <laughs> in his liver. When I, no, when I sneak around the back side of the house and I stick my finger down my throat and I get it out. Uh, too much information. Robert, Robert, that's too much information. We're live. Come on. No, it's hey, bad. Those, it's are, no, those are drinking games. If you can't do it, you can do it. Too bad. That's good yeah. internet. If you can watch Earl for a while on the internet, you can watch somebody stick two fingers in Earl. Ronald, Daryl, y'all ever played Colonel Puff Puff when you was in the Army? A drinking game? Then no, Jerry? No. How'd it go? Oh, you got to drink. You got to drink one thing. It's, it's a complicated. I can't do it right now. I'm not drinking. Woo! And it's complicated enough. Every time you make a mistake, you got to drink another beer down. Yeah, Woo! exactly. And if, if nobody is looking and I walk around the corner and I gag I'll, myself. I learned it at AIT and we was about six of us playing and we had like 10 cases of beer stacked up. You know that, John? That is a good one. This homemade you shit. You ever see it, Robert, where they dip their own fucking bottles in the wax and shit? Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't know how to play the game, don't get mad at me, because I'll beat you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, you beat us anyway, Robert. That goes with that saying. Hey, Daryl, you know what that remind me of? You know what Robert said that remind me of? Them, them, two, them two gay motherfuckers on the uh, on, uh, living color. Don't be mad, Twan. <laughs> <laughs> snap, snap. <laughs> I tell you what, Ronald. You, know, you do not know how many drinking games. Rams and Greer. No, but that little hat on the head. <laughs> You know, when nobody's looking, I'll go behind your car. I'll go behind the house. I'm going to get that shit out because I know it's stupid. But all you knew and all you saw, as I turn around and dump the fifth without swallowing, and I'm still standing. That's all you know. Get over it. How do you do it? I drank, I, I did that with a bottle of a half gallon of wild <clears throat> one time and drank about a quarter of it and it almost killed me. I almost died from that shit. That was the last time I yes. drank whiskey. I uh, nope, never well, again. That's when you that's when you should have took a finger, put it down your throat, got uh, it out, okay. and nobody was looking, you'd have been okay. Uh, that's crazy amount of alcohol. That's I'm lo I'm lost. Huh? What are we talking about? What did you drink? Greg, wild, uh, wild turkey. Uh, so, yeah, I drank. I drank about a quarter of a half gallon of wild turkey. Went straight down and it guzzled. Yeah, like, the, like the yeah. Been there, okay, okay. I've been there and done. I did that, and yeah, uh, I'll never do that morning, again. Uh, the next morning was not a pretty sight. Yeah. So my question is, when nobody was looking, why didn't you walk around the corner and puke it out? Yeah, but my, my question was, was, I wasn't, I wasn't next morning is like, why did I drink it at all? I mean, yeah, right, exactly. It's I was drinking, I wasn't puking. Wild turkey is hard. Why would you drink something and go turn around and blow it out in your fucking hole? Yeah, what, wild because, turkey is because nobody is looking. Well, why would you drink it? <coughs> you gonna spit it out. Let's change the subject. Hey, man, uh, I'm going to send a message out trying to get a couple of people to join. Hey, Sean. What's this? Last time I had Maker's Mark, a strip of violently green fat glitter into my eye. Okay. You just got to learn how to play the drinking game. No, all thank right, you. Right. This wasn't a drinking game. 
Don't eat it. I got bad enough health. I don't need to make it even worse. Yeah, exactly. I've got to the point now. I'm trying to stretch out as long as I can. Yeah. You. I'm not going to kill myself with alcohol. Not my scene. Well, I'll tell you what, Craig. The first seven days are the hardest. Or so they say. But once you, you know, get look, past, once you once you get past the first seven days, then it's going to get really, really bad. <coughs> After seven days, you get past the headaches, the nausea, you know, because you went so many hours without I having to drink on it. Review and Sean, Sean, I I definitely like Maker's Mark, but uh, even Maker's Mark, I take it easy, you know, because when I used to live in Kentucky. At Fort Knox, the you know Maker's Mark it was every bar had Maker's Mark, and the local people loved Maker's Mark because it was made there. So right. I don't yeah. much of it, and it tastes good, it tastes good, but it'll get you hammered quick. So I would limit yeah. it. Make, it Maker's easy. Mark is cheap. It's cheap. I might go back over there. Yeah, it's yeah, cheap. You know, I'm just saying, what, what did I just say? Let's stick to what I'm talking about. I take small amounts of it because if you overdo Maker's Mark. You'll wake up the next morning on a damn a bus bench in uh, the middle of nowhere in the morning. So, no, if you're gonna, if you're gonna quit, you're gonna quit drinking, my feel, feel. There, it there it is, make his mark right there. That's the stamp that they put on there. The still, still, still. Take it from me. Yeah, I'll go for a cigarette. I'll be back. Okay, Maybe there. Robert said he take it. Uh, 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 Ron said he takes it easy with it. He's still, he's still full. He don't even mess with it. If, That's what if you, you want. You, 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 you got a little lady over the house, and you can her take a little drink, drink. You know, if you keep it for that special occasion. You don't, you don't want to drink Maker's Mark every day. No, no, no. Man, if, you want, if, you want to, if you want to get off the hard liquor, get rolling. Already, somebody the first, the first, the first seven days are the hardest. If you can go okay. seven days. Then you gotta beat. You really do. But you're gonna, quit. Go to, you're, gonna go to of, you're gonna get a lot of withdrawals. I quit my study drinking about a month before I got married. Now it's just very, very occasionally. And that's February, uh Valentine's will be five years, so yeah. You you never get off you never get off the hard withdrawals. You're always gonna be drawn to it. And that's just that's just Not necessarily. Well, 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 well. Uh, a dirty star. I never had to go through that because I was already predisposed to it when I was coming up out of the womb. My father was an alky. My mother was drinking with him when she was pregnant with yeah. me. I ain't never had none of those freaking problems. And I just I'm just coming off ten years sobriety. <laughs> Yeah, Ronald, you went what you went how many years you said? Ten. Ten years? Ten years. And you got back on it. Yeah, when my mother passed away three years ago. Exactly. You never fully get off of it. Oh, I was fully got... off of it. After ten years, you fully off, but you, you got triggers. Okay, a trigger means you never got past it. I got past it 10 years long enough she was still alive and the only thing that triggered it was her passing. If she's still alive right now, I wouldn't be drinking none of this shit. Yeah, exactly. It's like cigarettes. You know, I went five years without a cigarette and I let some stupid fucking bitch pardon my French to the female viewers pissed me off and I bought a pack of cigarettes I lit one up it tasted like shit I threw it out the window in my truck 10 minutes, 10 minutes later I sparked up another one and it was like I had never quit I kid you not it wasn't the first one the first one tasted like ass my, my. Like Ten minutes later, I sparked up another one. My God, that son of a bitch and cigarette was the best thing I ever tasted. 
I know. But sometimes I taste some of the best ass of the time. Boy, some of that ass was tasting really good. <laughs> <Okay, Jack. laughs> yeah. Look at Jack. Jack, Jack going on. He, he wilding out. <laughs> That much nicotine well, turning green, saying, Jack. What I'm yeah. trying to say is an addiction is a lifelong conflict. I mean, every day of your life, when you go when you get off of an addiction, it just sits there waiting for the proper opportunity to tempt you. I know that and I got a mobile right, addiction personality. You know, right. You okay, guys, right Maria's off it. to bed. Maria's off to bed. Good night, Maria. Sweet dreams. Take care. Good night, Maria. Uh, remember those who sleep with itchy bums wakes up with special fingers. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wakes up with itchy bums. When you get off with itchy bums, there's something itchy. wrong. It's yours. You can you can rub it or scratch it all you want, Maria. <laughs> Smelly in the morning. <laughs> but, no, what I'm saying See, is, Maria. when you break an addiction, it's thanks for stopping by, Maria. It will haunt you the rest of your life. It just sits back and waits for an opportunity to tempt you. And then when you try it, you're like, what the fuck did I do this for? This is bullshit. 10 to 15 Night, minutes, you will go back and do it again. And it's like you would never quit. I kid you not. I put it down to this. It's, a, it's, it's all, but, all but an illusion. If you wanted to, you wouldn't have to. If you want to, you will. Use your will to do whatever you will. But if you don't have the will to do it, you will do whatever you don't want to do. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect sense. Because you know. Well, what I'm saying, Ronald, it never fully goes away. No, 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 none of that shit ever goes away. I'll be right away. back. It's just like anything else that doesn't, doesn't go away. It's no always there. It helps a if you don't think about it all the time, though. Right. As long as you don't think about it all the time, keep putting on your mind, bro, because when you're an alcoholic, you think about it every damn day. There's no getting out of it. But you don't sit there all day long thinking about it. No, no. It will come across you. It's to do to keep you occupied so you don't do it. Yeah, it comes across every day, no matter what happens. It'll come across and you'll say, no, not today. And you beat it down that day. But then one of them days, they'll catch up with you and you'll go, oh, well, fuck it. I'll have one. There's never such thing as a one. Yeah. When, 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 you have, <laughs> yeah. when you have well, one, man. when you have one, it got you. It got you by the balls. I got to the point now I can drink three and I try to put them down. That's it. That's all I want. Yeah, I mean, if I go out for a good few beers, I'll me, have eight. It took me a long time, but I found, finally found control. I like, have eight. I was born alcoholic. My dad was alcoholic. First time I got drunk, I was four and a half years old. Yeah. I'm just going to have one. Yeah, right. I mean, my grandfather. My grandfather was an alcoholic. His father was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic. I was born with it. My grandfather was an alcoholic. My grandfather was an alcoholic. Yeah, it just came natural. My dad doesn't drink that much. You know, drink a glass of wine at night. Well, quit for a while and do something unnatural. Me, You'll I might drink for three months. I've done that three times this year. Is that right, Ronald? Oh, he's not there. Yeah, I'm here. Say that again. I'm just saying, I stopped for three months at a time, two or three times this year, right? Right. 
Yeah, yeah. See, now when I went to AA, I went to the meetings and I yeah, read the book. I went to Big Book. It doesn't matter how many you drink, if you keep drinking, you're an alcoholic. It's this bottom line. You can wait till an anniversary. Oh, we're going to have a toast. Yeah. You'll have that drink. As the yeah. many times you abstain from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly because the big book is a motherfucker. If you ever read the big book from way back there in 1944, 42, whatever they wrote that bad boy, yeah. they got CEOs living in the Man. gutter, waking up the next morning with three piece suits on, sitting at the head of a table, running a company. Ooh. Just that easy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the DNA. That's what I said. I was pre predisposed. I ain't mad at neither one of them. Well, I'm no, I ain't crazy about my daddy. I love my mama, but that's just the way it is. And I ain't got time to be going back blaming nobody. For yeah, what? Exactly. We all responsible for our own shit. After that, yes. They dead and gone, and they ain't holding no bottle to my lips. <laughs> it's on me now. Amen. Yep. So I ain't never mad at none of them. I ain't making no excuses for my alcoholism, but I, I do have fun while I'm doing it. <laughs> you like I used to, two, Rob. Uh, you like Tupac. Uh, I, like, I ain't uh, mad at you. I used to have a blast. Yeah, but Rob, uh, Ronald, you stopped a few times during the year as well. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a couple of breaks in there because I said, yeah, I'm a, I, I don't had enough, and then I'm just like, you know, I'm like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Locked so, down. I mean, this, that, the other. You know, I yeah. find a. You could do it like me. You could do it like me. Christmas and New Year's was just warm up about Mardi Gras. Right. I can all if you want if you want to party and have a good time and you know you know who you are and you know I ain't gonna have a good time unless I have at least one or two, then you're gonna have ten. Yeah. And a good time. Because we all been there. We all been there. We say, I ain't drinking. I ain't drinking. Go to a party. Oh, this party sucks. Oh, well, I will. I was invited. Like, put it this way. Next week, I'm going to take a taxi up to the hotel during the week to upload my next video of my UK trip. And I'll say I'll have about five or six beers, probably. And then I'll get a taxi back. Yeah. Right? You'll have more than that, Gareth. Right, because you already set the number. Yeah, but I, I just know myself anyway. I won't have more than ace. Truth is, though, is that drinking beer after your fifth or sixth or seventh one, you don't get any drunk or anything. You just keep drinking. You just keep well, drinking. Yeah. Well, I've only got one. Alcohol yeah, but... is alcohol. <laughs> I've only yeah, got but... one. Yeah, I've only got one video to upload, so I don't right, have right. any excuses. But 80 situation. proof as opposed to 5%. Uh-uh. You drink 580 proof and drink five beers. Who's fucked up first? Me. I can, I can <laughs> Not sit there and I can drink Yuling, which is 6% alcohol. I can yeah. drink Yuling from the time the sun comes up till the sun goes down. Me too. Yeah, I, I can drink Red Horse. It, it, it don't do shit. No. Red Horse is good stuff. Yeah. Well, I was, that. That's the one thing, major thing I was worried about when I first went to the Philippines. I, mm. I wonder, man, I hope the beer ain't like Miller or some crazy crap like that. Yeah, and I got over there, and it was some good stuff. I was, just <laughs> yeah. natural, I was used to drinking that natural ice. I'm a Bush, I'm, a, I'm an Anheuser Bush guy, you know, but shit, man, I got over there. Damn, you could drink that Red Horse warm or, or room temperature, not warm, but room temperature. It didn't bother me none. Yeah. It didn't have none of the bad, nasty tastes that, that they do in the United States. Mm -mm. That and Sam Miguel, I love both of them. Shit, I know, but right now my my alcoholism is accelerated. I can't fuck with that beer. I can't fuck with Red Horse or malt liquor or any of that shit. I'm going straight to the source. You know, you want to meet the devil? Knock on his door. <laughs> yep, yep. You know it. It it it, it is. You ain't what welcome it is. Out here no more. <laughs> Hey, uh, Ronald, is it tomorrow or Monday uh, a certain person is flying to the Philippines? Yeah, Tony's leaving out of here on the 9th. 
The ninth tomorrow. You're right, tomorrow. So he's all ready to go. I'm jealous. <laughs> Are you gonna go this year? As soon as me and Robert know what we're waiting on, I'm out of this motherfucker as fast as you can say. White lightning. How yep. far more? How far more do you have to go? Twenty percent? Thirty percent? Ten. Ten. And you'll get uh, that this year, do you think? Oh, most deaf. And then you're gone. I'm out of this motherfucker. Ronald, oh, send yeah. yourself a send yourself a still in a buckle buckle bio box. You know it. <laughs> I'm I'm it. Tell it. Hey dimples. I got How plenty of corn there. Hello, dimples. They got plenty of who? Plenty of corn. Oh Lord. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm gonna not. be nice. I'm gonna be nice because my Jonah need me around, so I ain't gonna do too much. There's the I'm, link, Dimples, if you want to click on. I'm doing all this now because we ain't together. When I'm there with her, see that face in that picture? Yeah, that there you go. I ain't fucking around. I'm gonna give her plenty of time to be with me. Top bro. That's why I quit drinking so much because I was I was, I didn't want I didn't want to cheat on my wife with a damn bottle. Right, right. Well, Ronald, when I went over to I Simon, spent more time with it than I was with her. Ronald, when I went over to Simon, um, were you watching the live? I can't what, remember. What day was this? The day I flew over to England. Over no, to Simon. No, no, no. Huh? No, you left on a Wednesday too. I know that much. Yeah, but what, did you watch the live when Simon went live when he was picking me up at the airport? No, I missed all of that. Remember? Yeah, Y'all sure wound up at the club that night. Yeah. In the hotel lobby. Yeah, I missed all of that. I only caught the part where you was all, you was pissed. No, yeah, I wasn't pissed. Not that time. I only caught the other part. Oh, when I did the live from the hotel. Uh, bar yeah, and... yeah, you were pissed. No, it wasn't too bad because I had my dinner in front of me. Uh, yeah, but you should see the video. You had to go back and watch it again. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I had, I had my chips and then I just left the burger. Till the last, till I got kicked out of the bar. Because I left you guys on. I left you guys on. I closed the computer because I had to put all the equipment away. I ate yeah, my but... burger, went up to the room, came back on. You guys were all talking away. No, I'm talking about the other time when you were sitting there. Tony. <laughs> huh? Oh, that was over here. Hello, Jumbo. That was that in was the... You. Yeah, when I was pissed as a fart at the bar. That was in Dublin? Yeah. <laughs> that was before I went to the UK. Oh, okay. You forget? <laughs> I wasn't there. You missed that one as well? Yeah. <laughs> oh, All okay. I could hear was there. Ronald. Ronald, you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in great humor that night. Great humor. Oh, that was a fun night. Do you remember I tried to go live when I got home? Oh, man. I couldn't even get it straight because I was trying to put people up in the panel and I forgot how to do it. Well, you were trying to drive it. I, I, I was on YouTube and I was on StreamYard and I'm saying, why is nobody coming up on the panel? <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot to drop the link. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was there that night. I was fucked. I was fucked. Soon as I hit the fresh air, boom! Oh, I was so drunk. I saw the I saw the replay of that. Ah, oh. uh oh, Slayer is awake. Slayer is awake. Howdy, Sam. Simon went to bed early. Oh, he slept a couple of hours. So Simon's awake. Yeah, Slayer's awake. Imagine that. I thought he was out for the count. I couldn't believe Maria had said he'd gone to bed at 10 o'clock. Jesus. No, wait, Simon just said, God damn Americans can't handle their liquor. Wait a minute, who was it that fell asleep on New Year's? Probably uh, <laughs> Simon. Yes. Simon fell asleep. 
Uh, whoever's, whoever's I love foreigners, show your face first because you're not coming up on the panel until I see who you are. <laughs> Come on, Simon. Come up to the panel. No, the somebody's at the Hey, Ro Robert, hang on a second. There's somebody down below here with I love foreigners, and I need to see their face first before they come up. Well, that was John. No, it's you can't see it. I'm saying somebody wants to get up on the panel. Unless I see their face yeah. first, they're not coming up. Okay. Well, tell Simon to come up. Oh my God, you're not. You're not comprehending what I'm saying. There's somebody there no, now. It's me. Oh, that's you. I love foreigners. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I'm no, I have to. I I'm have to make I'm sure. I'm bored AF. I have to make sure who it is first before because do you remember I told you that thing the other day. Yeah. Oh, mm. Robert, some guy showed his dick on the thing when I did this. So what? I'm no. it again. No, you get it. You get a lot of trouble. You weren't here. You, that chick yeah. lab, a chick that you invite on your live stream. Right? <laughs> Some guy uh, used a, a girl's name yet. that I knew. Used a. Uh, they swing his dick at everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. So, my rules, my channel. Gotta see yeah, who it is before you get so good. Is that the, is that a troll? Yeah. yeah. With some guy Somebody. showing his dick. He was uh, inviting some chick up on the panel. And somebody stuck in between them. He got up. <laughs> He's sitting there swinging his dick up. You'd be like, hey. Some chick in the background giggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah show, you, show you the head. It's one of the tips. Jack, you've got your mic on on two devices. Okay. Let me. Uh... Click the then... mic off one of them. I'm not drunk and I'm that... seeing double. We good. Right. <laughs> oh, wait a second now. This is ridiculous. Two, uh, who is, who is there's just two, there's two black guys in here. Yeah, well, and and both Jack, of you. Jack, oh. you're both of them. <laughs> well, there's two of them hiding. There's one. No, knuckles. No, I never hide. I'm working over here. <laughs> Yeah, so the the I got the one pillowcase, a half a pillowcase done. <laughs> the now, who point, is Simon? Who is Simon? No. pillowcases, are they, Ronald? Say what, Craig? They aren't pointed pillowcases, are they? No, I don't fuck around. Okay, okay good. <laughs> if they are, don't put no eyes on them. These are regular. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, they're a cake size. Yeah, that's for that body pillow. Oh hell yeah! They don't. You can't find them in the stores. That's how much that's why Ronald Ron loves white man. How much you charge for them body pillow cases, Ronald? I don't charge yeah. nobody. Does it come with the hood? What's it cost to make them? It don't cost me nothing. But the cheap came with the set. It's repurposing. Yeah, of course. What I'm gonna do with a flat cheek? No, no, no. I don't use that shit. Nobody used the flat sheet except those proper people. But, by know. the way, Jack. By the way, I'm Jack. You had three cameras. Uh, up. And a, and you had three cameras up, sheet. so I kicked the other one. The one with the no okay. avatar on it. Who? Wait a you second. Had three. Who is? You had three. Who is Simon? Which one? Simon? Which one you want me to kick? This one or this no, no, one? No, 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 no. I've already done it. Okay. You had three. I don't have. You had three. It was three. I, I anyway, don't know. I had worry, three. I had two cameras. I had two, yeah, cameras, I've, I've I've two phones. Yeah, I've I've sorted, love black it's, sorted, it's, sorted, it's done. It's done. Hey, it's over hey, now. Hey, Jack okay. is a Jack is a multitasking fool. I mean, back in the day, he must have had like. Not no threesomes. He used to have them quadruple subs. I got, I got added all those flip phones. Oh, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. I was one of the first flip phone guys. You know what I'm saying? Hitting that up on Kick Messenger. Hey, Dice. 
You like Latino meat? Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, bud. That was like too spicy. That was like too spicy. Okay, I got a... I, I've been, do something I've been with south this one. Chula, been, Chula Sexy Chica. I've been south of the border many times, and that shit ain't bad. Eight, eight years at Fort Bliss, Texas, south of the border ain't that bad. Oh, Dice is putting on the barbecue. You putting on the barbecue, Daryl? Yeah. So what are we cooking up, Daryl? Some uh, sausages on the grill and some chicken. Hey, man, somebody's got to do it, man. Somebody's got to do it. Damn right. That's easy peasy. I'll have some rushers, uh, some eggs. Uh, some some, sausages, some, sauces, some, some white cheese. pudding, and some hash browns, please. Double the order. <laughs> four sausages, four bacon, four hash browns, four pieces of white pudding, and some uh, sautéed onions and uh, mushrooms. Thank I you ordered, very much. I ordered two, I ordered two, two of each sauces. Gear, uh, Gear, is that you? Part. Yeah. yeah okay. You can throw in uh, four yeah. hot attack. Yeah. Can't wait to get that stuff. What's up, brother Gear? How's it going, Gear? Hey. How you doing, Gear? I'm joining the AA party. <laughs> Gear, uh, this is Jack down here. Hi, Jack. What's up? That's, the, that's Gear, Headless Norseman. I like Jack. That's the, my oldest son, is Jack. Mm. Uh, where, where are you from? I'm the Weezer. Howdy, Gear. Yeah, I uh, live in England. Hey, Robert. Gear. Yes, Robert, you guys play nice, okay? You're taking a piece in the barbecue, Daryl? I'm getting I'm just getting started. I'm gonna throw a little chicken, some little manuk. Hey, you only have one thing to do. Go and grab that Miss Universe uh, bitch and uh, take her over for a party. Hey, you were here earlier. She was doing the little short, short thing and watering her little driveway when I was walking. Well, around. I don't believe you. Until, <laughs> until I see it, I don't believe you. You're just full of shit, my friend. <laughs> hey, 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 Gary, Gary, show him some of the pictures. I can't. It's on WhatsApp. I can't show it on this. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, God. Well, you can WhatsApp them to me. Uh, okay. Paris. I can. I can forward them to you. Okay. Just to see you walk. Your I can't dog put them on again? the screen here. I can't put them on the screen here. That's FBI, full blooded Irish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, by the way, gear, you have to wear your hat. It's hot day. Uh, I'm in bed, so fuck that. <laughs> I'm sitting on mine. <laughs> How? Mm, okay, I went to. Okay, I thought I was on three. I'm like, Ooh. no, you're on two. I kicked the other one. <coughs> hey Craig, hey. how are you doing, man? Hi, hi, Gary. How you doing, buddy? I like your shirt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> ah. That could that could go also if it was a Brazilian or a crazy Latino. <laughs> You know what? I, got, I, got, I got the rice ones. I got I got the white one that says exercise. I thought you meant extra rice. <laughs> hey Gareth. Yeah. 
if we can't find anything to agree on to uh, come into the next chat to match on, how about we go just post some messed up names, but not yes, too sexual. Whatever. whatever. But not too sexual, so it's still, it's still in context with the, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I don't care. All I have to do is have thinking about that. I have a good time. I have a hard time remembering to put Craig up there. Uh... Okay, Gear, I've sent them all. Okay, I'm checking on my phone. <laughs> There's a shitload there. In the, I think me and the professor got the good ones. That's what he sent me. But no pictures of the girl. I said, Where's the picture of the girl? What the heck are you sending me on this? I know. That's what I said. I said, Where's the picture of the girl? You see? Well, I, two pictures. I said do it, do it secret. Here, I said do it secretly. Oh, I can't do yeah. that. Yeah, too late. I see all this shit live. Baby, is there sausage left in that refrigerator somewhere? You asked for it. I gave you what huh? I gave you. Yeah, but buddy, I thought it was of the woman. So did I until he sent them to me. <laughs> you got what he sent to me. So. Dude. This is, this is creepy. It's fucking dogs and hens and, uh, <laughs> and pigeons and fucking rabbits. And <laughs> see what we got. Okay. Well, you thank go. you. Anyway. Hey. Oh, Daryl's not there. I don't know how many bikes you've got either. Um, it's messy! <laughs> Boy, that's... <laughs> what you doing over there, Craig? Hey, Daryl, Daryl, if it's messy... Uh... It needs parental guidance. You can see it needs parental guidance. Robert, that's yeah, Craig's right. wife. Needs no, we did. Watching no, I thought that was Daryl's wife. No, it's Craig's wife. Oh my no, God, but, she's saying that. She's saying it's I had, messy. A, I had the freezer open and trying to get trying to get red hot. So, so don't let them see that. That's too messy. It's Craig's mistress, not wife. His wife just went out and I sneak in. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dara. Yeah. It's, it's walked away from the co the computer, Jack. Um, is there? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bump off tonight. Yeah. Are you doing the one tomorrow? Tuesday. 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 Okay. Yeah. Probably. Uh, I'll 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 hop on that one. I gotta. I'm being summoned to bed. Roger that. Get some cookie time in. <laughs> As the, wife is talking. Jack. the wife is talking. You need to come to bed now. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. You. You've been up all goddamn night. You gotta come to bed now. Yeah, I haven't. I need some sleep. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably message you tomorrow and see what time. Probably well, five o'clock Tuesday. No, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll just text you on Facebook, Jack. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, okay. mate. Hey, bro. Good. Later, Taylor. Take it easy, brother Jack. Let's see, you guys. Maybe. Guess two after this. Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, I will. All right, bye. Be good. See you, mate. Right. Bye. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. John just asked how many motorbikes does a person need? I tried to tell him on the, the YouTube side. I said 10. <laughs> but I guess yeah. it didn't come to me. No, what he does is he buys cheap, cheap bikes, fixes them up, and then sells them on. Yeah. You only need 10. Any more than 10, <coughs> you're done. He's a bike dealer. Instead oh, of being man. a drug dealer, instead of being a drug dealer, he's a bike dealer. <laughs> you should have seen the bike in the car shop today. If he had, if he had sidecars, he'd have his own fleet of taxis. <laughs> Try to but, after, but, but after ten, what are you doing? He's a uh -oh. bike dealer. There you go, gentlemen. That's that's it. That's it, uh, Daryl. Get sidecars, and you can give people. You can give people a ride home when they get drunk at your place for free or for, for low charge. Nah, fuck that. They can pay 200, for it. 200 pounds and they pay for it. Yeah. Mate, I used to charge people to bring them to the airport from my pub. I get like, uh, the taxi would charge 50 sterling or 50 Cypriot pounds. I would charge 40. That's 80 euro, my money. And 80 euro in pesos is um, 4,665. So 200 pesos is fair. No, 4,665, I would charge. But it's a 45 minute drive to the airport. Of course, no, we every time I took a tricycle in the Philippines, yeah, back to the hotel, let me know. It was 200 Just pesos. Like yeah, but we're talking about Europe. We're not talking about uh, Philippines. I like that little Honda back there. Yeah, that's what I it was simply pounds in, in, in my day. So, oh, okay. like I said, the taxi would charge 50 simply yeah. pounds. And I would charge 40. Oh, okay. So yeah. say like somebody came into the pub and they'd ask, oh, can you order us a taxi? We need to go to the airport or something. So one of my staff would call me because I had the Mercedes. <laughs> and then I'd and you take them to the for airport. 40, uh, 40. 40, yeah. 10, 10 Cypriot pounds cheaper than the taxi. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's what, 30% over cost. No. No, the cost, the cost of your taxi, 300 It wasn't a taxi, Mercedes. it was my personal car. It was my personal car. Right, that's a, that, that was what, a 300 SD, 300 SD. No, 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 it was at uh, E200. Okay, an E200. What was the cost of going from... Oh, I don't know. Fuck, Robert, I don't know. I don't fucking plus, know. No, the, the cost of point A to point B... Mate, plus I don't know. 30, plus 30%. I don't know. I did it for cash in the hand. That's all I did. Anyway, it, was a good, it was a good deal, Garrett, because they got a better car. Got a no, no, no. All the, all the taxis are Mercedes and Cypress. Oh, okay. That's what they use over there. They have the new ones, the old ones, and the stretch. You know, the, the, the wedding cars that they use in the UK and Ireland? The Mercedes? Well, you got they import you them. Got they, import them <laughs> they import them onto the islands and use them as taxis so they can carry seven people in them. Well, yeah, you got, you've got to map out the city. Major oh, point to major sake. point versus no, but, distance. I mean, it was on, cash I'm in my serious. pocket. It was cash in my pocket. What the fuck? Yeah, and it was wearing tear on your vehicle. Oh, for fuck's sake. Mate, I brought the car over there. I used it for the time I was there. I sold it on. I made four grand profit on it. And then I bought another one and shipped it over. I made another hey, four you grand. Got, you, you got lucky. No, but because I'm a, I was a I'm car dealer not... and I bought the cars in the UK trade price. 
that's fully. Okay, what I'm saying is the cost of point A to point B. Robert, I was doing it illegally. I didn't give a shit. Okay, go. Cyprus wasn't even in the European Union in 2001. Or, uh, 2001. Yeah. It wasn't even a European Union country. The only reason I was working there is because I owned a business there. That's why I was able to work there. You had to have okay. a work visa. But because okay. I owned a business, I get okay. a work visa. Okay. That was it. Okay. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. And I did it for extra cash. <laughs> Now, I agree with make a little bit of cash profit, but all I'm saying is if I was doing the same thing, I would map out the city. Major, major point to a major point, mileage, fuel, distance, cost, maintenance, plus Robert. percent. Robert, I don't know what you get into your head. I don't know why you have to explain things. It wasn't a business. It was a sideline. That's okay. it. Well, I'm just saying you were either thinking you're making a profit or you're actually losing your ass. I put petrol in my car. I paid for my car to be valeted. Okay. I had cash, cash in my pocket to go drinking somebody else's pub. I had money okay. to I'm buy just food. Saying, if, you, if you take the cost of an oil oh, change and the oil <coughs> transmission... Can I tell you something, control, Robert? Robert, the car was never the car was never there a year with me. It was there okay. for seven months on English plates, registered to me with my trade policy so I could drive it on the island. I sold it on. It went into a, into a bonded warehouse until the guy paid the import duty on it. And it sat there in the impound in the tank. So when the guy paid the tax on it, he put a Cypriot plate on it and then sold it and made a profit on it. Yeah. That's it. And, and what I'm saying is... No, more. In seven, no, what I'm saying is in seven months, in seven months, it's doing all fluid changing. Don't I had it serviced by my mechanic Yo, in Ireland. It's not happening more. It's a new point. Yeah. And it was serviced in Ireland by my mechanic. Gareth, get back, get in your time machine and go back and charge all of yeah. the way you want fucking to. Do. Fucking 20 years ago, fuck's sake. <laughs> Look, I just had a nice car to drive around in for a number of months. I sold it on. I bought another one. Hello, Mark. That was it. It was just a sideline. Make a few bucks. Oh, How you doing, Marky? Welcome to the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, you know I'm going to call it chaos because that's what it is. Margie, Margie, as soon as the, uh, soon as the, um, the liquor band ends, I want, you to, I want you to play at my pub again and sing some music. I love the way you sing. Margie was in your club, Daryl? Oh, my God, Robert. You just feel walk away. Do you know what? Drink some water. <laughs> Drink a cup of coffee. I can't keep, it, I can't keep up with Daryl's life because it goes 24-7. Robert, Margie was on my panel the last time you were there. Was she? Were you on my last panel? No. On Thursday? You were no. not on my panel on Thursday. I don't like it. If I was, I was probably pretty drunk. <laughs> but no, Margie, Margie sounds like a good girl. And I was trying to figure out, come back and sing at my pub. Daryl introduced 
her tools before. That's how I know who it is. We <laughs> 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 a lot of back background noise uh, on your yeah, screen. Yeah, I could. It's. Do you know who it's? Uh, there I don't you know why, how you, why, how in the world, how, why you put up with it that long? I was dying over this mother. Well, it's Daryl. He's forgetting to mute himself when he walks away from the computer. But you, Captain Moderator, you should have shut it down because we were trying to hold a conversation and we all that background shit. I Ronald, you are a moderator. I know, you but I can't, shut, I can't shut him down. Can you not? No. Well, I thought you could. No, I can kick him out, but I can't shut him down. <laughs> okay, I better have yeah, some money into your life. All right, go ahead with your bad self. What is that? Some honey. Mango juice. <laughs> That's prime. You're going to drink raw honey? No, it's a sweetener. Into my barbecue sauce. It's, it's my secret. Oh my God. Ah, okay. Yeah, I've seen that before. Add a little bit of honey to the barbecue. There you go. Yeah, I've two seen that before. Two tablespoons. No more than two tablespoons. Hey, hey, I've been barbecuing for years. I don't use tablespoons. I just fucking pour and I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it a bit early in the morning, Daryl, to uh, do barbecue now? You pour it to you pour it to the to, to, to the spirits of your say, ancestors. Say, oh boy, that's enough. And yeah, I ain't enough. using no spoon. I'm using my finger. Finger. Oh, you know, he's doing that. Like good. Good. I've been start. No, I, I started no. using this finger when I was twelve, and I'm good at it. Girls love it. Daryl is doing. Good, huh? He's doing that stinky poke. He's doing his stinky poke. Hey, no, Margie, I don't have a channel. Okay, Daryl, like the finger. Like the finger, Daryl. <laughs> Licky, Licky. Licky, sticky. Oh, well, let's see. That's a tough one. Hey Margie, why don't you come up on the panel? Join join us guys up here. Are you too shy? Yeah, Margie, come on up. I'm happily married, Margie. About, I'm single here. I'm about the only eight thousand miles away. I'm yeah. single. And hey Margie, this is not the foreskin. This is the chicken skin. Chicken skin. No, that's foreskin. That's foreskin. Now that's a chicken skin. Uh, um, what they call it? Uh, chicharron, chicken skin, chicharron. chicharron. Oh, I love that too. No, it's called foreskin dump. Uh, oh my uh, god, huh? who the hell is dump? He's barbecuing. Uh, foreskin, foreskin is foreskin. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here she go now. Margie, Margie, you don't have to put your camera on, you can leave your avatar like gear down there. And Ronald over there, he's got his avatar on. So you can come up on the panel, just talk. You don't have to show your face. So easy peasy. Yeah, Margie, right. come on. I'll don't go. be chicken. Be nice, Robert. I was nice. There's the link. Click on the link there, Margie. And if you just show me your face, if you come up on the bottom, nobody can see you, only me. And then um, I know it's you because some idiot came on my thing before and they did something stupid. I had to kick him off. So when you click on the stream like or stream yard, you'll come on the bottom here. Only me will see it. Just show me you, then click off your camera, and then I'll put you up on the panel. Okay. Right, it's just to confirm who you are. That's all. Before I put you up on the panel, because we're on YouTube. Yes, Margie. Margie. She said she would. Just, just, just come on up. 
What does that say on the screen, Robert? Yeah, I see it. Right. Now, now I understand the difference between music and noise. <laughs> yeah. I know, I keep... <laughs> And we're going to go to the store and get some uh, cranberry juice and some uh, cherry juice. And, and you uh, can't go. You cranberry can't go. Cherry orange. But you can't go. Pineapple juice. Watch the place. Make sure nobody robs us while we're gone. Yeah, but pineapple juice. juice. Hey. She, here she said you guys are security. <laughs> we are back. Right. Okay, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Turn, turn, turn. One, two, five three, four, people. five. And then all the people on the chat. You yeah. guys turn, are secure. Turn the noise off before you go. Now. Yeah, I'll do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Huh? Ooh. Yeah. No worries. I like that little Honda. You call my brother law Billy Bob. Billy Bob fixed day. If one side of the family don't give the other will. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Now we got quiet. Yeah, yeah. We got you, Daryl. Now, what, what I don't understand is why Daryl doesn't have a Fat Bob Lowrider in the Philippines. You okay, Mar okay, guys. Okay, I see you, Margie. You can turn it off now. Hey, Margie. Hey, Margie. Hi. Hey. Hola. Welcome, Just welcome. woke up, guys. Hey, my dude. It's spooky. My this is my first time. time. <laughs> I'm really shy. Hello. Good morning, Madison. I'm here in the Philippines. So is Daryl has got in the Philippines. and um... <laughs> This is my first time. No, it's so okay, shy. Margie. Margie, don't where, do that. Where are you, Mar Where are you at, Margie? Where are in the Philippines? Uh, I'm here in Mindanao. Mindanao, where at? Surigao. Surigao del Sur. Surigao, okay. How are y'all doing after the storm? I'm in Mindanao. I'm going to hug you. How are y'all after the storm? What? Typhoon? How are y'all after the storm? The typhoon. I don't understand. Ah, it's okay. Yes, yes. But there, there is a little damage in my yeah, house. Go, sir. Our house. Sir, Only go. little damage. Okay, one question at a time. Margie, what part of Mindanao are you in? My God. <laughs> my God, she says so we go. I didn't hear it. I know, that's why you gotta pay attention. Just wait. No split now, Paul. She's going to give you a map. Just wait. No, it's okay. <laughs> I was just because my friend lives in Mindanao, in Davao City. That's why I'm asking. She's at the top and they're at the bottom. Roger that. Just wait, guys. I can open. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Hey, where'd the water go? <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's in the house? Kiko. Hey, What's Kiko. That Kiko? Hey, Liz. Howdy, Liz. That's Kiko. That's oh, Kiko. Kiko. Hey, Kiko. Hey, Liz. Hey, Kiko. He uses Hello. his wife's uh, habit. Hello. I don't know any of y'all's names anymore. Damn. Y'all confuse the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's too lazy to make his own YouTube name. Hey Margie, can I can I address you personally? As a Ooh, person? Hey, bye, quiet. Look, Margie, uh, it's really nice and it would be really wonderful if more Filipinas could come on live stream and just speak the truth. Don't be embarrassed. Don't don't get scared. Don't hide your face. Just talk I'm to shy. It. I'm shy. No, I'm serious, Margie. I'm shy. Just talk it. To it. Be, be normal. Yeah. Well, they don't care what Robert, she doesn't give you the answer. Mar 
Robert, she gave you the answer. Okay, I'm not just leave it. Blade already, guys. So, so I hope understand. It's okay. Hey, Margie, is there any chance yes. you can just make the audio normal instead of echo? Because you've got an echo. You understand what I'm saying, Margie? No, no, no. No. What? The, your voice is coming echo. Ah. Okay, okay, just wait. Thank you. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to say Hello. echo in Filipino. Robert. Hello, Mike. Hello. Margie. It's okay. No, your audio is gone echo. Yeah, yeah. Can you change the audio to normal? Yes, please. Delay, delay, delay. You go into, click on cam mic, and then click audio, and then click on echo cancellation. Hello. Yeah. It's okay. Yes, yeah, perfect. Much better. That's better. Thank you, Margie. Thank you, Margie. Yeah. Hey, Margie, 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 Margie. Oh. Hi. Hi. Echo, echo, echo. Hi. Sura gal del sura. No, Margie. What I was going to say. Sa tago. Tago sura gal del sur. Oh, so I think is one hour for travel, one hour or two hour. Hinatuan. Well, Kiko, now that Kiko's online and we got Margie online, maybe Kiko and Margie can intercede, translate. One of the things that I think, in my opinion, between Westerners and Filipinas, is the inability to understand etiquette between the two cultures. And so what Westerners or Western men, they want Filipinos to come in line, be honest, be open. What do you believe? What do you understand? What is your interpretation of etiquette? And maybe that can go in reverse. Craig? Ronald? Daryl, am I wrong? Margie, Taga Hain Kao, Muli. Lapit lang tayo sa ano, malapit lang kami sa Pinatuan. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the name, name of your town. What does the town have to do with it? I can't Kiko, I'm in, yes. I'm in, South, I'm in Florida. Any but... kind of content, sir, I have. No, Robert, I'm just asking because she's very near where my wife is from. And I no, asked her if she okay. spoke the well, same dialect. Yeah, go for it, Kiko. Here, Margie, I'll have my wife ask you. Hi, your wife is... Uh... Hola. Hello? Where is your wife? Hello. Margie. Taga... Yes, Taga kuan ko, ma'am. Taga tago. Taga tandag, tago? Yes, yes, tago tandag. Yes. Yeah. So, tan dili ko kumayo. Dili, ma'am. Surigao, no? Ano? Oh, oh, John John. Yung dool ra ang ano? Yes, dool 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 ra ang hinatuan sa tandag anak tago. Oo. Dool ra. Tandag tago yah. 
<laughs> Haan sa kau. Oh, let me see. Surigao nang kau, di ba? Ha man kau yes, kuman. Yes. Ya put tuan, aku tago. Tago karo. Oh, na ka sa, na ka sa Pilipinas. I thought you're oh, oh. somewhere. Oo, <laughs> nakaulit na po. Ano, Dad sa bakas. Uh, Namati na sila tararawa, baka oh, wala ka sa bot. Ah! I'm so sorry, guys. Ano, Kal- mahiya ako mag-inglis, ma'am. Ah, Ayok, inglis sila. Para di na ka sa bot, pasagday na sila. Sana ako, puro na nagnganga. <laughs> sorry. I can't speak very well. Yeah. Okay, na amang goy, di ba na amang goy ka nang mag-English ta, it's a very simple English, you know? Yeah, I know. Na, well, pariho sa ita ha, di ba? Uh, fluent, ka, uh, ano sama na menu na ka? What's it again? Ha? Explain to them. Hello, guys. Hey. Yes. Hello. Good. Say hello. How's everybody? All good, Mrs. Kiko. Good. Thank you. Good, yeah. We're cold in here. We're in a freezer. There's snow outside. Guess who's back? Mississippi, Florida. Yeah. Craig is What? Craig is in Mississippi, right? My wife, my wife said, my wife's sitting here listening, both of y'all. She can understand all of it, but she's too shy to talk. Where's she come from? My mouth is full. Don't talk when your mouth is full. I'm eating. Oh, she, she, she's from, she was born in Leyte, but she grew up in Cebu City. Oh, she's uh, Bisayan. So she understand me. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, here's Kiko. No, Mrs. Mrs. Kiko. Kiko. Yeah, I hello. Kiko politely. Yeah. Hi. I'm, big, I'm very big on etiquette. And uh-huh. many people many people don't understand etiquette. Etiquette yeah. is social normalities on proper <laughs> introductions. Uh-huh. In other words, Robert. you have to act when Robert. you're speaking with someone and you don't Robert. get stupid. Robert. Robert. What, Gareth? Back off. It's okay. What did, I, <laughs> what did I say wrong, Gareth? What did I say That's wrong? All I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's etiquette? fine. No, etiquette. <laughs> okay, Robert. Okay, bye-bye. Relax. Chill. No, I'm I'm relaxed. I'm chill. But we all understand etiquette. And culturally, every nation has their own etiquette code. In other words, when you meet somebody, when you present yourself, and whatever road you decide to go down there, there's rules okay robert the same, the before same you way came back on my people. panel kiko was on my panel for months i know his wife i've seen his wife you weren't there craig knows uh, daryl was, knows, was, Ronald no, knows. Hold, on. hold on gareth i asked kiko's wife i addressed her properly as mrs kiko and asked for her opinion did I not? Okay. Did I not? Opinion on what? I wanted her etiquette. opinion. We're talking about etiquette. the differences. I know. What, what about it? I don't know. Greg? No, where are you going with this, Robert? Trying to find a happy medium between Filipino etiquette, Western etiquette, and how to cross the barrier so where it's amicable. I've already done that. Robert. Guys, I'm trying to have a nice, quiet, laid back Sunday. I'm going to have to get rid of you guys because you guys are getting ready to argue, and I don't want to argue. No, because I, I know. No, I'm, not going, I'm not going there's down rules. There's rules, Robert. I was being, there's no, rules. I was I'm going to test ride my motorcycle. I'm going to chill. I like that Honda, Daryl. Did I say something inappropriate? Robert. 
just relax, okay? No, did I say something inappropriate? Robert, do you remember we had a discussion? My rules, my channel. If yeah, I say your stop, rules, your channel. If I say what? stop, you stop. End okay, off. have a nice night. Fine. Good luck. <laughs> I have to go now. Hey, uh, Garrett, what did I miss? Because my wife had the headphones on. I couldn't hear what was going on. Uh, Robert was talking about etiquette. As because because kind of... your wife was talking to Margie in Messiah. Yeah. And then Robert is bringing up etiquette like because they're talking in their own language. I didn't mind them talking in their own language. It's nice to hear. Not that I didn't understood, but I didn't have a problem with it. I said to Robert when he came Just back to his panel a number a while ago that if I said stop, you stop. He didn't listen to me. So I said stop, and then he got in a huff, so he fucked off. That's his choice. But if I say stop, you stop. End off. Because he, that's why he was kicked off the channel before, because he was rude to... Uh, gear and he was off it for a number of months for a reason so he needs to listen to what I say if I say stop you stop end off no excuse no reply stop and if he doesn't like that tough my rules my channel Because everybody gets on here. We've been getting on for months and months and months and months. I'm just not going to have this anymore. No more bullshit. End of. Anyway. Yeah, Jake's yeah Garrett, back. sorry. I, I, my wife had the headphones on. I didn't no, 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 no. Robert no, was going. saying or talking about. I could imagine, but... Uh, there she was go. just trying to talk to her in their native tongue. To yeah, see. that's what I just Mar yeah. Margie said. She, Margie said she's shy, so my I asked my wife yeah. to talk to her and find out yeah. a little more about her. But, yeah, that's fine. And I didn't know what we the consternation was when I got the headphones <sighs> back Fucking, on. Well, yeah, upset. but Robert, Robert, what did they What did they did wrong? You she did nothing them. wrong. They did nothing wrong. It's just Robert been overbearing sometimes because he's drinking too much. That's it. And I gave him the rules before he ever came back on the panel. When I say stop, you stop. End of. Anyway, let's change subject. Yeah, next. Where's Ronald at? We did it. Uh, yeah. Next. What? <laughs> what? He's making pillowcases the last time. Gear, make some humor. <laughs> it's hard to get a word in, but now yeah. it's a bit more quiet now. <laughs> I know I can't believe I got to say something. Hey John. How are you good? Hey John. How's it going in um but uh not blah, 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 blah. I know it's not buff, uh blah, blah, blah. John, are you at a Starbucks? He's at Bakersfield, right? Bakersfield, yeah. I was gonna look on my phone. Central Valley. Hey, hey, what's this? Over what's this? Uh, what's this? Uh, Overstay Road has just put a video up. How to survive a liquor ban. Is that going another li liquor ban in fucking Angeles again? Yeah, that's what that's what uh, what? that's what uh, Daryl was Darryl? talking about. Oh, I missed yeah. that. He just yeah. said something about a liquor ban. Oh, a new shit. lockdown. Oh, yeah, it started in Manila. Now it's starting to spread out everywhere. You oh. stock up, you keep a big old, big old collection of everything before it ever happens. Yeah, happens. you know, like Craig, I don't know if you heard me saying a number of weeks ago they were bringing in, they're closing the restaurants and bars now at eight o'clock, just before Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just before Christmas. Are you uh -oh. fucking kidding me? My court. They're trying to kill the world, man. Michael, are you still on? You better stock up, Michael. 
They're trying to kill every small business in, 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 in the world. It's disgusting what they're doing. And Omicron. I didn't get the first round of crap. I ain't getting, I ain't falling for this. Do you know what? The, the Irish government are subsidizing the pubs and restaurants because they're closing early because they were kicking up shit because they were losing out on the Christmas and New Year's uh, now, you know, here, money. And we've been closed for fucking months, man. Come on. Here, guys, here, everybody, the restaurants close early because they don't have staff to work them. Government giving all that free damn money. Lazy people. I mean, they'd rather sit home and collect un unemployment and get that little bit of money from the government than go out and work and get a real job and, and make money. You got to you close your store because nobody will work. Yeah. Do you know what? I've gone past, there's six pubs in my town and I've driven in the car because I have to get cigarettes or I have to get something or whatever. And I drive through the town purposely just to see how many people are, are in the pubs because I can see through the windows or whatever. They're not as busy. And now, which I, uh, they've brought in, okay, say like I was getting a can of beer for one euro. They've stopped that now in Ireland altogether. So the next time I go to an off license, I'm going to check how much that one euro can of beer was. If a, if, if a case of beer was like 24 euro, it's 48 euro. They doubled Darryl, it. Sounds like a good time to build a still, buddy. People are going to Northern Ireland to get cheap beer. There was a picture Dow, on Dow, Facebook. Dow can, Dow can pump it out and still in his backyard and siphon a hose out there to fill the jugs up in the and the tricycles and let them come up and bootleg all over town. <laughs> yeah, but what Daryl does, what Daryl does is he lets people in the sidewalk. They go upstairs. They go upstairs and they're drinking out of mugs. There's booze in the mugs. Remember that, Daryl? You told me months ago. When you were closed, <laughs> he's still making money. <laughs> so if, if a cop comes in, he's serving them food because he could sell food in the pub, but he couldn't serve alcohol. So he hey, puts Darryl. alcohol into a mug. Daryl, what's that chicken skin you're making again? What's that called? Did your own. I like that Honda behind you, Daryl. I made it like a little bobber. I got to change the steering wheels, though. I got. I uh, see that. That looks sweet. Bars. I had to make the bars a little bit higher. You know, because right now they're like that, and I want to put. Yeah. Them like, Get like some mini eight hangers. Some mini eight hangers and some and some front fork tubes about two inches over. Get your front front fork tubes about two inches over and a twenty-one inch front wheel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be fit, but be sitting right. Oh yeah. I remember. Hey. I remember. I remember. That, what was it? You've had that bike what five, six months, something like that. Yep. Yeah, I remember when you got it. <laughs> Need you. Need hey, Daryl. Like need you get you like a 350 motor and have it shipped Are over there and put on that chicharron thing. Daryl, my wife has a there? question. Are you making chicharron bulaklak? Oh, he's muted. You're muted, Daryl. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm making it out of the thing, uh, out of the manuk, and uh, I'm doing it right there. Grill it. It's like nice a chicharron bulaklak? Yes. It is. That's good. I miss that. With with uh, with suka, right? With vinegar. Yes. Yes, we put it on top. And all the spices, the yeah. I miss that. And honey. He put no. a little honey in the sauce. Honey. No. A little bit of honey. It is. That's honey? the sauce that you were making. Yeah. Do you remember with the honey and the barbecue sauce? Honey, barbecue, a little bit of vinegar. And, and a little bit of Dow's finger in it. <laughs> for, that extra, for, that extra, for that extra, extra special taste. Yeah, got to be nice. Got to gotta be nice. Hey, hey, got to be nice to the basura guys. Even though they already picked up my trash, they pick up some. They coming back. Yeah, I, hey, how you doing? 
Got to be friendly with the Basura guys. So they can pick up your damn trash. Just, oh. just wait for a while, guys, huh? Just wait for a while. No problem, no problem Marty. So you got some sausages on. You got that chicken skin on. What else? <clears throat> Chicken skin. I'm supposed to do some uh, some sausages. She's cutting it up. Oh, I got okay. some mobile red hot star out. Gonna go with my peas. Ah. That's gonna be hot sauce though. Mm. Daryl, just make me some sissig, please. Some sissig. Ah, at my spot, at my at my at my, at my uh, restaurant, the guys are very good at sissig, man. They got it. Got what? Good. A in fact. Of a couple of months ago, I saw when he made the sisig in the kitchen on one of the screens, and that looked perfect. Yeah. On he's a hot plate. Paper, he's like a, he's like a... On a hot plate. Okay, he's like a sizzling, sizzling plate. Pretty good at it, what he does. Man. Yeah. And he used the cheek. The, the meat of the cheekbone of the pig's head, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Daryl, my wife wants to know if you make bangus sisig. I love me some ham and hog jowls. Bangus sisig. That's with the fish. The white fish. Milk fish. Milk fish. Yeah, b- b- bangus. Cheek. Ba- bangus. Yeah. They've, done it, they've done it with the white fish. And they've done it with the uh, squid. And they've done it with the chicken. But... Hold on. We never tried that. Hey, baby, come and talk to them about the C6. Yeah, because that's a new one on us, and then she might want to try that. You know what I'm saying? Put the, add that to the menu. There's no there's no limit to our menu. We can do what the fuck we want to do. You know what I'm saying? They're talking about the bangos. Yeah, 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 because her, his wife is saying that uh, something that she's had where she lives at. I don't know where she lives she's from, but they do... Uh, a bangus uh seasick that's uh that's Here. basically the bangus but it's seasick just like we do uh the, the squid seasick and the chicken seasick mm-hmm. so i didn't know i never heard of that but that's a new one on us kiko that's we'll new. try it we will definitely yeah, try it good. how do you do it it's like a boneless um uh, fish because there's a lot of um bones in the Bones. Yeah, they have a lot of bones in it, and I, when I first started, got here, I like to fry it to make sure the bones are crispy enough so I can crunch it and it'll, it'll get yeah. digested. But there's the way, there's the way the, the, the bones in it. Uh, they don't know how to do that. You can fry the boneless, but still, I'd like to fry it first before I do the uh, seasick yeah. because it's all kind. Yeah, kind of. You have to cook it a little bit, like fry it, and then make it seasick. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. To get it crispy, then, then you could. It should be boneless because there's a lot of bones in it. Yeah, she said that. When we start out, we get the boneless. Uh, we can get it. We can try it both ways. We can get it from the market, or you can also get it from Save More. They have it in that flat package, mm-hmm. but they spread the yeah. they spread the bangles out. Yeah, they make it flat. It's, it's pack- good for pollution, right? <laughs> yeah. Pollution, you can. Yeah, you that's can what we that's that. what we do. Yeah. We use yeah. we use uh, our CSIG. A little bit of seasick for the pollutant we do. Also, some seasick we do is the is the is the hot dog. Yeah. And then we do the corn. Uh-huh. Sizzling corn. Sizzling corn. Sizzling corn. Sizzling hot dog. Uh, the regular small sizzling portion of seasick. Seasick squid. Seasick chicken. Yeah, right? there's a lot of seasick fish, yeah. squid. Yeah. Uh-huh. As pollutant. Pollutant. Yeah, as pollutant. And you, when we have the onions and all the other stuff in there, and you can ask Last Ivan, chef, and he'll make it. He'll make it a little bit mild with the green peppers, or he'll throw some red peppers in there, and it'll fuck you up. Yeah, you you'll that. be drinking more red horse because you're so hot. You're like, <gasps> there you go, yeah, red horse and a chili, chili, lots of chili. Yeah, yeah, lots of chili. He makes it hot. And- if yeah, you ask him. San Miguel. There you go. Party time. No, San Party Miguel time. Red Horse 500. And karaoke. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> video key, kar- video I call it karaoke. They call it video key. I don't video. know. Okay. And then Kiko will sing for me. Uh, please release me. <laughs> <laughs> now, and I will get drunk enough. You'll know when I'm drunk enough. Again. Again. Uh, the love boat theme. The love boat. The love boat. Exciting and new. 
come aboard. We're expecting you. Hey, she had me singing Marta Nevera. Be my lady. And when you get drunk enough, you might hit you might hit every note. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I did. I did. I don't remember it, but they said I did. Hey, let me tell you something about, about uh, St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> I think St. Patrick's Day is supposed to be the best time for an Irish pub. It's supposed to be, you know, good luck and everything, right? Well, since I've opened this Irish pub, I had one kick-ass um, St. Patrick's Day that opened up, you know, uh, we had a grand opening. Because my, my pub started on 17 March. So that was our grand opening. Then we had our second grand opening, and it was nice. The third grand opening got canceled the day before St. Patrick because of the fucking virus in 2020. Damn. Then the second, then the next one in 2021, they let us have St. Patrick's Day the day after they canceled everything. It's like it's like it's like uh, the virus. It's like continually getting kicked in the nuts. Now, just before I get, I'm getting all planned up for this one, lockdown again. So I'm hoping that it'll open up before 17 March. I'll have the event, and I'm sure they'll cancel it right again after. But I just want to have the event. You know what I'm saying? There, there'll be fourth grand opening, blah, 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 blah bullshit. Then they'll cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, story of your life. What the hell? What's going on, man? They don't like you anymore. Just go home. Go home. Get out of here, damn American. I don't know. So... I'm hoping for just a window of opportunity, a little good weather, so to speak, using an analogy, a good weather window so I can have St. Patrick's Day. And then after that, they can cancel all they want. I just want to have 2020's St. Patrick's Day. 2022. Evidently. And I have already uh, the magazine that we always get. Um, the local magazine is called Blue Book. And they have, I got the front page for Christmas and all this stuff. I want the front page for March, and they have already they've already uh, reserved it for me. I hope I get to put the advertisement in and actually have a St. Patrick's Day. I don't want to waste my money, but it's not much. It's only seven thousand pesos. From, you know. from what I understood from Marcos's channel, when they made when they made the last liquor ban, he moved up to uh, he moved up to, uh, yeah, and and they still had liquor sales up there. Yeah. You, but you don't have to do like that. All you got to do is just drive down the road on the, on the highway. It's only 45 minutes. Get you some liquor and come back. Yeah. That's nuts. That's fucking nuts. I'm telling you, huh? or, or just go to the province and get tuba. Yeah. Oh, I like go. that. But last month, I mean, l l yesterday, before it started, when we heard about it, we were like, oh, shit. Because the police officers, check this out. The police officers... The day before the liquor ban, or in my pub upstairs, getting drunk, saying, "Ah, oh, there's gonna be a liquor ban coming." I was like, "What?" So they told our staff, and the staff told us what the police said. So we found out about it. We ran and got three months worth of our regular stock. So we got it upstairs. We got it downstairs. We got it behind the bar. We got stock now. So. If something happens and they stick around three months <laughs> no beer, whatever, I got stock. You're not going to be. You're not going. You got today's prices, not three months from now prices. Because mm -hmm. it's going to go up. It already started. Yeah, oh, every time already, we do that shit, it go. Everything goes up. Everything. It's already, Keep, it's already gone up here. Don't go back down. That's a bitch. It's already gone up here. <laughs> What, what are we doing, man? What are we doing? The it's goal, not what we goal. doing; it's what they doing. It's the they off -night, the the tax. What the, are we doing? Putting up with it? The government well, here. Well, you're in a different country, but well, look. Even if you try to stand up, they just it gets worse for you. Look what the people in Australia tried to do. They tried to walk in the streets, bang, get hit by police. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> like, put it this way: devils everywhere. Like a case of beer, as I said earlier. 24 euro for a case of beer. Now it's going to be 48 euro. I mean, for fuck's sake. Wow. In euros. That's a lot of money, dude. Yeah, no shit. 
Wow. For long, for long, nobody will be able, nobody will be able to afford to get drunk. Well, you know what's going to happen? It's going to, it's going to create a huge black market everywhere. There you go. There you go. Put it this way. They're, then they won't have put, no control over nothing. They won't get the yeah. tax money. They won't get shit. All I got yeah. to make a bunch of criminals. Yeah, but the off license is is supposed to be an off license. It's supposed to be cheaper than a pub because it's off license. Yeah, they're putting the beer at the fucking pub prices. Yeah. Who the fuck wants to do that? Right. So that's why I don't go. I don't. I quit going to bars in America a long time ago with with four or five dollars a beer. <laughs> I I paid, do you know when they opened the bars here uh, last year? Do you know what the bars were charging for a pint of fucking beer, and you couldn't oh, sit right. inside the beer? Eight, six eight. euro, six, six euro for a pint yeah, of fucking crazy. beer. Hey, Hulk, can can you get it? Yeah. Garrett, can price. you buy it at Whoa, t- Tesco? Yeah, but that was off license prices. That was different. I'm talking about the pub Large, prices. Well drink, well drink prices. A beer that a beer that I would pay, say like four fifty, uh, you know, cheaper price, has gone from four fifty up to six euro overnight because the pubs were closed for a year and a half. Gareth, that's my question. Can you buy beer at Tesco? Is it cheaper? Yes, I got ten percent off, but. It's off license prices. They've changed it as of the first of January. I've not been in Tesco's since December, so I don't know how much a case of beer is. When I that bought a case of Budweiser, up. oh yeah. When I was, I got a case of beer. Oh, of I got a case. Guys, excuse of me, excuse me, guys. Yes. I have I have to go now because we're going to church now. So okay. thank you so much. Thanks, Margie. Okay. Thank you. Easy, thank you. Thank you. Salamat. Well, thank you. Bye bye. Stop by again anytime you want. Anyway, going back to your question, Kiko. I bought a case of Budweiser there before Christmas. It cost me. Uh, it's normally twenty six euro. But they brought it down to uh, 15 euro, right? Then I was getting 20% off that with the card that, that my old man has. So I paid 12.50 for 24 cards of the 500 mils. I haven't been into the supermarket since. So when I go back, I'm expecting it to be like 48. But don't quote me on that yet. When I go shopping in Tesco's for food, I'll check the price and then I'll let you know. But as far as I know, it's going to like up to 48 euro for that same case of beer. Wow. I don't know why you guys are screaming for. You go on on a regular day in Norway to a pub, you pay uh, 12 quid for a pub. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah, you guys are screwed over there. 12 quid? One, I'm not there, and two, I don't drink beer. <laughs> it's, at Walmart. it's at Walmart right now, Gareth. Where, where am I here? Okay, how much is that? $19.98 for a case. Is that the 500 mil uh, can? Yeah, the can for uh, 500 24 mil. Pack. 24 pack. Yeah, but is that the 500 mil? It's 12 ounces. What's whatever that? that? Whatever that equates to. Tall can? Is it a tall can? No, it's it's a regular beer. Oh, like a Coca Cola, like a Coca Cola. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Thirty-three okay. mil. Uh, we don't have them, so I don't know how much they would I mean, be. So, I mean, that's uh, used to be about sixteen dollars, fifteen dollars for a case of beer. Yeah, well, that's well, people are going up to Northern Ireland now buy beer up there now. That's what still a still a toy in a bottle, a twelve ounce bottle. No, it's eleven point two ounce bottle, twelve pack, fifteen ninety eight, sixteen dollars for a twelve pack. Wow, Fuck. that's crazy. Dusekis is twelve ninety eight for a twelve pack. <laughs> John, <laughs> time to invest in COVID. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Natural ice is still a good deal though. $16.98 for a 30 pack. Fuck. And hey, Craig, do they still make Schlitz? That used to be the cheap one. What's Schlitz that? beer? Do they still oh, make I Schlitz? Used drink, I used to drink the hell out of Schlitz. I don't know if they have it here or not. 
Let me see if they got it on here. That was always one of the cheap go to beers. Yeah, I, I used to go Hellas, but I liked it. It's kind of got that peppery taste. You, 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 they might have, have it this far. Who knows? Check it out. Check. Let me check, watch this. Watch this. Let me check out Lazada. I remember when everybody drank the old Milwaukee too. All the old men drank old Milwaukee. It was a 14 ounce oh, can and they got more. Yeah, old, old, old Milwaukee, Pat Blue Ribbon, and Schaefer. Those were the two, three that yeah. were real cheap. Pat Blue Ribbon, four, $14.28, 27 cents for a 18 pack, 12 fluid ounces. Bex. Eight dollars and forty-eight cents for a six-pack of twelve-ounce bottles. They got Bex here. They have Bex here. They don't have Schaefer. And I'm going to ask for Pat's Blue Ribbon. You ever drink any of that uh, that Cold Forty Five from over there? No, I never tried it. I drank some of it, man. That shit's strong. Woo. It's very strong. I had it when I was. I'm sorry. I've had it when I was a young guy in high school. Very strong stuff. It's stronger over there than it is over here. I'll tell you that. Now, I don't see any old Milwaukee, uh, old Milwaukee or uh, Schlitz. They, have, they come out with this sub yingling or something. I never heard of it before until I got back. Never drank it. Yeah, I think Yingling originates here in Pennsylvania. I think that's where it's made. Yeah, I've never never heard of it before until I got back here. It was big everywhere, all the ballparks and stuff. Corona, Corona, fourteen dollars and fourteen fifty for a twelve pack, twelve ounce bottles, or eleven point two ounce bottles. Okay. I just checked that here in a test score in England. Uh, exactly the same for Corona Extra 12 of the 330 mil. It's a 1099 pounds, so that would be about 14 bucks. It's about the same price as the US. Yes, 27.73 here for a 24 pack of uh, Corona in the, in, the, in the bottle. Yeah, they do 12 packs there. 12 packs is 11 quid. So eleven pounds is about what fourteen bucks. They do Budweiser twenty pack uh, glass bottles. Uh, it's uh, fourteen pounds. So how much is that? About seventy dollars. Pat's Blue Ribbon, four dollars and seventy three cents for a six pack of sixteen ounce. The Tall Boys. What's that? Pat's Blue Ribbon. Oh, Blue Ribbon. Okay. That's about the cheapest stuff you can get, I think. Yeah. So, I got right. Yeah. Uh, a 20 pack of Budweiser, you know, the, the 300 milliliter bottles in a Tesco in the UK. It's fourteen pounds sterling. Okay, I don't know what it is here. I think if, uh, if I remember right, uh, when I was getting it works out for it works out about two pounds thirty four, two pounds thirty four pence per liter. Yeah, yeah. I think um, because they had a sale on Budweiser. Um, See when 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 it's an announced can, uh, we do it in milliliters. So I don't really know. 20, Greg. 25, 25 fluid ounces. Yeah, but see, we do it. We do it in milliliters. I know, I know, I don't know it, but that's what it says. I I I'm think not, that's a five hundred mil. Crap. I think it's a five hundred mil. So it's two dollars. So what's two dollars in euro? Uh, uh, 
Oh, yeah, ten ninety eight for a twelve pack of Budweiser cans. Twelve ounce. Coors, six dollars and seventy three cents for a six pack of uh, bottles. Okay, uh, two dollars is one seventy six. Uh, I think that's the price uh, they sell it over here. We'll see. When it's, Tomorrow, we'll see. When it's, oh, when it's huh? normal price. When it's Where's normal that? price. No, it's Miller cans. I thought it was Blitz. <laughs> I think it was 176, 178, something like that in my money, which is your $2 before the sales. No worries, Margie. Thank you for stopping by. Natural ice. Five seventy three or six pack for sixteen out sixteen fluid out cans. I like the Bex and the Stella Toys myself. I'm like trying to unmute you, Daryl. Don't touch it. Okay. Rolling, rolling Rock. You uh, click it. You click it off. Rolling Rock is Daryl. Four dollars for three. I was pressing at the same time as you. <laughs> four pack of sixteen ounce. You tried the new set. PPR. What's PPR? Pass blue ribbon. Oh, okay. That's, that's ding, 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 case. ding. You win. $15 for, Daryl wins. Case for 18, Name that 18 beer. Pack. Let me see. I just saw it a second ago. You all ever heard of Iron City? Four, $14. $14.27 for an 18 pack. A pack for the ribbon. I think you know, half, the, half the world, half the world, when times get really, really tough, they're gonna turn to a little bit of alcohol for some, for some, uh, for some relief from all this stress. Craig, I think Gear asked if you've ever heard of Moosehead. Moosehead, yeah, yeah, I'm drinking Moosehead. That's a Canadian beer, I believe. Canadian, yeah. I want to see it on here. Hang on. No. I didn't see it here. I used to like that too. That was pretty good beer. It's probably real expensive because I don't think you can get across the border now. They lock in Canada down just worse than they are America. Canada's right behind Australia, just about. It's crazy. Luckily, I live in the free state of Mississippi where we never really ever got locked down. We're about like Florida. Yeah, I don't see any moose head. I used to be real popular down here, too. Moose on the loose. You know what I used to like to drink when I was drinking and I was in the States? I used to like the uh, Miller Light. Miller I like Light? I like the taste. It. It was Miller Light here. Huh? Miller Light. Yeah, I love the taste of Miller Light. What are you doing to the dog? Say hi to people. Oh, Miller Lite. Uh, 18 pack of 12 ounce bottles. $16. Four, 4.2% 4 alcohol by volume. Yeah. You can drink shit loads of them when it's uh, hot on the beach without getting uh, canned. I got the oh. can. Let me look up and see what the can. Here we go. Miller Light. Eric, here, here. you missed uh, Maria's uh, Boxing Day thing. Oh, man. That was funny. Well, that was... Boxing yeah. Day 
in in Maria's house. Sorry, Craig. I'm just it's explaining right. to Gear about Boxing Day. Oh. Maria's house with Simon, John, which is simply monks, and his wife Zem. Oh, yeah. Simon and uh, John had a competition. Now this was set up earlier during the week. That on Sunday when John comes over, Simon and him would have a drinking competition, and they were going to raise money for the 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 typhoon thing in the in the Philippines. Oh yeah. John will lose Simon out of it. <laughs> Maria was pouring wine into a glass with the top still on. <laughs> <laughs> it was that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the I saw that. That was and when she poured wine in, when, when she poured wine into the glass, she spilled it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny as shit, man. Oh, she didn't spill a, She didn't spill a drop. No, she did. She did. She spilled Not it. With the cap on. She did. No, no, no. When she poured <laughs> it into the glass, yeah, she went to put it on the table. Yeah, but the glass yeah, went sideways. Yeah. The glass went sideways. And, <laughs> <out of> glass. <laughs> and she she blacked out. <laughs> she blacked out. Damn. And she she was giving it loads with Zed. And um what do you call it? Uh she watched the replay the next day. She says, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny as shit. Oh man, oh, what a laugh! I wish I had been there. Oh, I'm telling you, it's been a hell of a good time. Oh, we raised some good money too. Raised some good money. You have that five hundred or something. Nice. Well, I I put I put one hundred and ten in. Uh, Dennis put in two or three hundred. Uh, Robert put in two hundred. And then there was other ones or whatever. So easy five hundred. But it was oh, I was a great laugh, fucking great laugh. <laughs> Maria was fucked up. <laughs> oh, it was funny as shit, man. So what yeah, did you Mom, do for? Mom's son, Mom son had to keep control of the computer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Joshua. Joshua, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joshua was narrating on the on Maria's uh, phone, the stream yard. Oh, it was funny as shit, man. Huh? Great laugh. So, what did you do for Christmas and New Year's gear? Uh, not a lot. Uh, just chilling. Did you have your kids over? Yeah, yeah, I had the kids. I was with some neighbors and stuff. And while mother met for him, baby. Christmas uh, Day, the kids my, were on Boxing Day. My, my Christmas was cancelled. My sister tested positive the day before Christmas Eve. Oh, okay. And we had no turkey, no ham, nothing. <laughs> I saw I had a Tesco free frozen pizza for my Christmas dinner. <laughs> some of some of Kathy's some of Kathy's friends went over to Florida uh, for the holidays and they came back with COVID. And really? Yeah. It's, what happened is all the all the people in New York New York New York City they come to Florida to yeah. get away from all the rules and everything, yeah. and they bring the COVID with them, and they spread it all throughout Florida. When they got back here, they had to lock themselves down because they come down with it. And that's like me when I was supposed to go on my trip, my second trip. Um, oh, baby, I was up in the idea. Kalani Castle Hotel uploading videos because the internet is crap here. So I was there for a number of hours and I had a few beers. I think I uploaded like five or six or something, five, six premieres or whatever. So it took a while. <coughs> so Sunday morning, I woke up, no, Saturday night because I was back early. Uh, I felt a bit of a twinge. Sunday morning, bedridden. Monday, I woke up at 6 a.m. Monday morning thinking, if I'm okay, I'll get on the plane. No, I wasn't getting on that plane. I was in bed till Wednesday afternoon. 
No food. Yeah, that, was, that, was like, that was way before Christmas. Uh, yeah, that was November. Yeah, November, yeah? Yeah. Because you didn't want to say where you were going. Uh, yeah. Everybody thought you were going to go to Cyprus, but then I guess from something else that actually that we're not where you were going. No. I was going to the UK. Oh, the UK? Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Simon, the only person that knew about it was uh, Simon and Maria. Okay. I was supposed to fly out at one thirty or something like that. On Monday where about, where about to? Back to Manchester. Oh, to Manchester? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was all planned. It was all planned. I was watching a video with Texas Filipino. They got on a plane in Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, and went to went to L.A. to catch a flight to the Philippines. They lost all their luggage in L.A. Yeah, he said three out of four bags they lost. Yeah, and now they're in the Philippines waiting, hope, hoping that Philippine uh, Cebu Pacific or Philippine Airlines will pick up their baggage from the uh, from uh, American Airlines when they. He said they were paying one hundred and one a night at his quarantine hotel. Dollars. Hundred and one bucks a night. Yes. And I don't know if it's ten days, fourteen days, what it is. I think it's still I think it's until they get a clear uh PCR test. He said he said he, he said he got in that one day and they count a couple hours early and accounted for a day, but I don't think so because I was I was watching that uh Kyle Gentleman becoming Filipino, and he thought he was getting out. And they told him, "Oh no, the first day don't count." <laughs> so, so it might be different everywhere. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember he was in quarantine. A shithole. It was a. I think it was a school or something. He was in. I think in, in Manila now. I think in Manila now, Tony said that the first it's like. Uh, you can get out after five days if everything works perfectly. Yeah, if you come back with negative everything and stuff. If not, if not, it can be seven days. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good time when you get stuck in a pickle like that. It's a good time to have friends around. Yeah. Bring you yeah. stuff and everything. Because if you don't, you're all by yourself. Yeah. yeah. Kyle was lucky. Uh, subscribers were bringing him stuff over. <laughs> Everybody fucking knows Kyle. Everybody. Oh, you mean this is months ago now? This yes. was in the summer. Yeah, 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 yeah when yeah, he was yeah, yeah. quarantine down in. Uh... And he got that cowboy riding a dinosaur suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's Commander. Commander. I know to think he was crazy, lost his mind. <laughs> That's my mate, Craig. The uh, guy that was wearing that suit is my mate. Uh, he's from here. He's yeah. He's from yeah. I, I, Wales. I, I, I talk to Commander all the time on 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 a. On comments and stuff. He's, he's, he's a, no, he's a, I have him on the phone. I have him on the phone. Guy. I have him on the phone. Okay. Yeah, but Kyle, in that, in that last video, he had one of them. It, was, it looked, like, looked like a cowboy riding a dinosaur. He had one of them suits. He's, he's Commander, had, him. Commander had a, a dinosaur suit. He had the whole suit. dinosaur suit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of his subscribers. Like passed out stuff. riding around. <laughs> Got teal in it, yeah. Uh, in the back of the pickup truck. The one that uh, Kyle got thrown off. Yeah, uh, Commander uh, Ansel is in. Uh, John, this week. man, that's that's crying shame. Forty dollars for piece for ribeyes. They better be some damn good ribeyes, bud. I was talking to Commander today. Um, he finishes his contract with uh, the Norwegian TV company tomorrow. So he's going to. Uh, well, I've been working for Anovitz for NR for Anovitz and TV company. Yeah, before Christmas for uh, about ten days, then he came home for Christmas. Then he went back out just before New Year's. Then we went back to Davo for New Year's. He went to his parents in laws for New Year's Eve. He got pissed that night. He was home for a couple of days. Then he went back up to uh, Bislik. And he is going to uh, tomorrow, or yeah, I should say I, today. I chatted, I chatted with him when he got stuck in, in Cebu, at, right uh, after the typhoon. Right, I really so chatted back and forth with the comments. 
to Magati. He's going to Dinagat, then Gatil. So he's gone to the camp compound, and then he's going home. So he's two places before he goes home back to the missus. But he finishes the contract tomorrow. So he's not leaving till Monday, I should say. <coughs> I'm, anyway, I'm, hope, he, he, I'm hoping he can do better with that fish thing. I hope, I hope, I'm, hope I'm, I'm rooting for him to make it. I really am. Uh, can I tell you something? Yeah, that he had he had to do something with it, but because he's he's making a lot more money on YouTube and with sponsorships now, he's he's been doing some sponsorships. He's been doing some TV stuff. Yeah, beer not beer and all that. Yeah, and now he's doing he's working with a Norwegian TV company. Oh, nice! So he's making more money. So if the I, I didn't actually say to him. I He's was a good thinking guy. that he it. I, I, my idea was that if he fixes it up, fixes up the pond and then puts it on the market, then gets rid of it, then and let let somebody else fucking deal with it. Because well, he, he has problems because his brother in law was working on the pond that he never introduced on YouTube, and fish was going missing. And you know Filipino people are very close when it's family. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to deal business with family and make any money. And that's his wife's you're just brother. Just supporting their habits. That's his wife's brother, Nels. So there's a bit of a kind yeah. of like he's damned problem. if he does, he's damned if he don't. Yeah. So, but from what I understand, he had he had one pond. He had uh, uh, the the milkfish. The other pond had tilapia, and he had a pond for mud crabs or something like that, I think. No, 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 no. Uh, he did uh, crabs. If he'd have made some money, I know. The crabs ate the banks. You know those banks? Because yeah. they burrow into the into yeah, the right. so yeah. they they, they destroyed them. they destroyed his yeah. fish pond. They actually fucking destroyed it. Then he put in Top tilapia, but that's when the fish was going missing. And one of the banks, which is which is has now strengthened up, was breaking down all the time. So a lot of fish was escaping. Plus, it was being stolen. So he's put lighting up on the pond, right? Um, solar lighting. That he put, it, that he got a bunch of money together, and you he, know, all these things. These remote cameras, all that damn thing, too, up right up there by the lights. There's so no internet. The There's no internet. There's no yeah, internet. Yeah, okay. They've only got internet for the phones. Yeah. yeah. There is no yeah. Wi-Fi. I hear you. Kyle that can't get yeah. internet in his place. It's that all done work. by the phone. Everything is done by the phone. Yeah, he's out in the boonies. That's for sure. Yeah. So there is no internet out there. And the pond is only 10 minutes down the road from the compound. Right. So there is no Wi-Fi. So he can't put cameras in because they won't work. Right. And he's got that little house at the end of the road, but that's still not at the pond where he that's, can watch it all the time. No, that's not he his house. That's not, anyway. No, that's not his house. Yeah, you go, you go crazy. No, that's not his house at the end of the road. That's... Uh, one of his one of his friends um, that kind of like looks after the boat, which the boat is basically a write off now. I root for everybody that wants to try to build a business over there, but at the same time, I, I, <coughs> I feel bad for him because I know what's going to happen in the end. He's put a fortune back into the into the ponds. Yeah, he has. I was going to suggest to him, why don't you just fix it up and just dump the fucking thing, get rid of it, and let some other else. Filipino, because. He's not going to have the time to be at the pond all the time doing this YouTube stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He needs as as he to be there. Back, he's going to get. Again. He's going to get robbed again. He's just going to get robbed again. He has to be there. He has to live with the guys in that house, which he's just fixed up. I've seen it happen to piggeries, raising eggs, chickens, a whole night, every everything you can think of. 
Yeah, it does. I think if he can if he can get his money back of what he purchased the property and all the investment that he put into it, he'd be lucky to get break even. Yeah. He right. might lose and a few. I think he's make... going to lose his shirt. I think he's going to lose his shirt on it because of the pandemic. Well, not only that, though, but you're never going to get a Filipino Filipino to pay what he's put into it to buy it. Never happened. He's right. going to lose his shirt. Here, like you were saying, if you can just live off your image and not have to do the hard manual labor, that's the ticket. That's yeah. when you start learning about life and get wise. Right, right, Craig? He was, <laughs> yep. he was, he was complaining a, to me. He was complaining to me there earlier during the week that I wish I didn't do this Norwegian thing. And I said, look, listen to me. You're getting great experience. You're working with a professional television company. You're working with professionals that have many, many, many years of videography. You're not a professional videographer. You're going to lo learn loads of shit off these guys. Just stick with it. Just stick with it. Plus, your name is going to get out there more because they're going to say, oh, this guy is a good guy. This guy is a learner. This guy is this. This guy is that. He'll get more work. He'll get more TV stuff. He'll get more ads. That's what I said to him. I said, and then he was says to me, oh, yeah, you're yeah. right. Gareth, was that the same? Because Kyle went to Manila to do some work as well. It yes. was like secretive about it. Is that the same shit as Kyle is doing? Uh, I don't know. I didn't ask him. I had, I had people ask me, Craig, Craig, go go, go start you a resto bar or, 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 go, or a restaurant or something like that when I was in Dumaguete. I said, man, I said, I'm retired. That restaurant works way too hard work for me to do. And I can't get nobody to do it for me that's going to do it right. So, no, I'm retired. I'll barbecue on the weekends or cook. That's it. <laughs> it was yeah, my job to eat, but I ain't selling nothing. I ain't, I ain't nah. Probably, you know, Daryl Daryl can attest to that. When you own a business, and then you're dealing with people and personalities and and all the uh, paperwork that's involved. It's I bet, it's just I bet a big Darryl headache through, for some of us older guys. You know, I bet Daryl's went through seven several hundred people just trying to find the right ones that would work properly. It took a long and time. Like, and well, if they leave on hard feelings, then that's another problem. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Yeah, I, there's a lot of people out there that, uh, that I went through at the very beginning that aren't, aren't there now. Uh, it's hard to tell, to tell somebody, hey, look, man, this ain't working out. You're not, it's not working out. So, but, I mean, Commander could be watching this now because he tells me he watches now and again. So he could be watching this now for all I know. Um, Hope he is. Hi, Commander. <laughs> hey, guys, that were like, um, he says he watches my stuff. So, God bless you, brother. Hey, Daryl. You can appreciate when we had um, the company <laughs> up in, uh, in uh, about 94 to 2001 to constantly keep three to 350 staff 24 7. So three shifts on for all those years. You can imagine how many staff we went through to constantly keep that room filled. Batch after batch after batch. Oh, God. We paid them well, though, and everybody liked the job because it was uh, it was before its time, really, and it was in uh, Stata 100 in Ortigas. It was in a good building. And we gave every, everybody got free, free, free uh, food. And that they appreciate almost more than the salary, and you know? oh wow, we were such a good company because we gave them gave them one free meal a day. We did the same thing. We did free food. And by yeah, the way, you know, uh, uh, rice and chicken or rice and vegetables and whatever. I mean, it worked out like just a few pesos per head, you know. But I mean, the loyalty you got was tremendous. Uh, by the way, me saying that he's working with the Norwegian television crew uh, is out on his YouTube videos, so that's why I'm saying it. Sure. Where before, he didn't tell anybody, but then he put it out live on his YouTube channel on one of his that's videos. That's cool. I, I believe so in that's why I'm actually saying that he's working with the Norwegian. I believe in the Philippines anywhere you go, man, because it's great. It's a great damn place. He's got it. It's, like I said, Twitter. 
I said to him uh, there during the week, I says, just do it. He says, oh, I'm, I'm bored. I, it's I'm doing my day. head. He said, he, he's doing my head in. Da, 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 da. I says, man, you're fucking, um, I says, you are going to get so much experience out of this. He says, yeah, but it's been dragging on and dragging on. They say it's a week, then it's two weeks, then it's three weeks. So fucking what? See, what he wants to do is he wants to get with Kyle. Sorry, 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 mate, before that. You see, what was he doing for them? I mean, flying drone? No, he's filming. He's a cameraman. Oh, okay, okay. He's a cameraman. He's been hired as a cameraman for okay. this project that he's videographer. doing. He's a videographer. That's why okay. I'm saying you're going to learn off professionals. That's have years and years of experience, and That's you're working with gold. you're working with equipment that is better than yours. What does Do that you tell think you? They actually employed him because they found him on YouTube and because he speaks language. I don't know. I didn't ask him that because I find it strange that a Norwegian professional film crew will take somebody with no experience rather than just uh, YouTube to film something. I think it must be more about if he speaks big English, if he can speak uh if he can speak Filipino, if he can speak whatever. And he has knowledge about the country. I don't know, I have no idea whatsoever, but and, he, and he's really good between going back and forth between the two languages too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what he told me. He's a cameraman, that's his job. Okay. He might be narrating some of it. They don't tell him. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but I'd like to see it when it comes out. Anyway, uh, like I said, he finishes tomorrow or today, and then he goes back. Uh, he goes to Katil, whatever, or that place. Then Katil. Katil or Dama, where, he, where his wife is. No, he's going to two places first. The Dumaguete or whatever you call it. Yeah, and then Katil. Then he's going then to Dana then they got a typhoon wiped out pretty bad, yeah. But see, what he wants to do is he wants to work with Kyle on this uh, relief thing. Yeah, that's, that's what, what he wants to do. Is, yeah. And he wants to make content for his channel. And I said, right. look, I know that's what you really want to do, but look what more experience you're getting. Yeah. Don't be. Kyle is already doing it. Finn is already doing it. They're all yeah. doing it. I mean, he, you he's don't already need to do it. You don't really need to do it. He's already using his truck to get to get the stuff there. You know, he loaned, he loaned Kyle the yeah, truck. Yeah, I know, I know. He loaned Kyle. But the that's truck. the way they are down there. They're, they're like brothers. Yeah. They loan. He everybody. wasn't using it. Everybody's he welcome. Up, to everybody's stuff, you know. Because he was up in Cebu. It's a beautiful he didn't life. Need the truck. So he got the truck. Kyle right. got the truck off now. Because the truck was at home. Yeah. So Kyle rang him up and said, "Can I borrow your truck?" Right. And yeah. Of course, commander says, so "Of course, take the truck." Yeah. Because Motor only up. Nell. Because Nell yeah. only uses it to drive to the hospital and to do shopping or whatever. That's it. Hey, when I was a young guy and I labored for my dad, my dad was a cement finisher. One day, in the heat of summer, he's on his knees finishing cement and sweat pouring down. He looked up at me and said, do something where you use your head. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, always, that always stuck with me. So... Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, cement, you know, concrete, and anything concrete other than masonry, working in no a sweatshop is a move up. You know? Yeah, he's going to get so much experience out of this. I said, "That's what you do, man. Do get the experience. These guys will teach you. This is money in the bank, and you're getting paid for it. What the fuck? You're not doing it for free. You're getting paid for it. Yeah, if you and can live off your image, that's off. better than yeah. a real job, right? Yeah." I haven't said to him about the pond thing. I think it's a waste of time. But see, I don't want to. I'm still, I'm still rude for him. I hope he, I hope he makes. I do. I really hope. He got a good setup. If, if he could trust everybody around him, you know. Gareth, you he know, can't. we were we were all young, and we didn't make good choices when we were young. Yeah, you know. But, and all we, we live and learn. Yeah, and we didn't want to listen to the wise old guys, right? We just. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to live and learn and make mistakes, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd be the same way if I was his age. He's only 29. Yeah, I was He's too. He's only a baby. We all were. He's only we a baby. <laughs> yeah. 
he's only a baby, but he's a sound block, sound block. So, you know, like, he gets down now and again, and we talk and things like that, but uh, yeah. uh, he's on a great thing. I think this career that he's got now, this is it. This is his chance. This is his big chance because the other things that he used to do before, this is before I knew him and whatever, and what he what, what he's put out on YouTube. I said, man, you've got the opportunity of your life. Don't fuck it up. And he likes doing it. He loves doing it. Can't beat that. No, I said it's not a job. It's a passion. Yep. It's a pleasure, and you work, and you learn it at the same time. Eh? Mm -hmm. You can't beat that with ten ugly sticks. And he had a great teacher, Kyle. Taught him how to do the editing. Taught him to do this, do this, be truthful, be this, but that. I mean, you can't go wrong with Kyle. Yeah, he's had many uh, he, years of experience. And Commander seems like a good mate. You know, he he gets yeah, he along does. great with all the he people. Does. And you, your own, the only enemies you're going to have are your competitors, right? So yeah. He gets along with everybody. Not a bad word about anything to anybody or about right. anybody. Right. Yeah. He's a real sound block. I mean, we've had some really interesting conversations when he was back in the UK and all that kind of stuff. He was telling me stuff, which I can't go into. But, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, he had a tough time. I mean, I was surprised he even told people what his problem was. Uh, I was surprised when he opened up when he was uh, the suicide thing uh, the year before I have, last. I had a lot of okay, issues. Gear, you have talking, Gare, Craig was over talking to you. I didn't understand the word you were I'm saying. Sorry. Go ahead, Gary. No, I said that by him being authentic and by him being open about his struggles when he left Philippines and for that Christmas back in uh, the UK and everything, that was when his channel jumped from fuck yeah. all to massive. So that was yeah. fantastic. I mean, that that was what gave him the people to follow him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was surprised he, he went out and said it. Um, without strange. that, without that, he would now have the channel he has. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. He's, nice. he's doing well. He's up to nearly 130,000. So, I mean, he's on his way to 150. He's on his way to 200. So, you know, like, he'll get there. Before the end of the year, he'll be over 200,000. Now, he's not making 5,000 subs a day or anything like that anymore. Like, he, he complained to me a few weeks ago. He says, God, Jesus, I put a video up there uh, yesterday. Did you see it? And I said, yeah, of course I saw it. It's only had 6,000 hits. I said, and so I got 20 hits on mine. What the fuck are you talking about? You got 6,000 <laughs> when I got 20 on mine. What the fuck are you talking about? Beef that's six times viral. When I told him my short went viral, I said, did you see my short? He said, no. I says, I got fucking 8,000 fucking hits. He said, what? I said, yeah, I got 8,000 fucking hits. It went fucking nuts. I was jumping all over the place. I was even doing a live. And I was talking, Jesus, it's going up. It's going up. It's going up. <laughs> fucking 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. <laughs> One video went up to like 4,000 or 2,000. And the others were low because I had four of them. And then the other one passed the other one. And I said, what the fuck? I thought the other one was was better. I thought that the other video was better. The one that was going up, 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 up. The other one took over. Over 8,000 hits. <laughs> Fucking, I couldn't believe it. And I was, I had my, I was doing a live here. And I had my, um, what do you call that? Uh, analytics on another page. So I was going backwards and forwards and watching how many hits I was getting. And I was going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it's just going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. A thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. Fuck. It's going fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking going nuts. I was just there. Like Simon was there. 
I don't know how many people were on my panel at the time. I said, like, my fucking, <laughs> my fucking short has gone fucking viral. My, all of them. They all went over 2,000. I had two over 2,000. What did I have? Let me check. Have you guys seen um, the latest episodes that Harald has put out? Uh, Harald Boulder has put out. Now he's really interesting. No. He's, oh, he's fantastic. He's in Christmas now. He's trekking alone in the Himalayas in Tibet where he's doing this uh, this uh, four or five day trek by himself hardly anybody else in the small tea things up to where all the big when the earthquake uh, was uh, took a lot of these small villages and stuff it's really good what he's making at the moment mm -hmm. okay go sorry go ahead no that's fine it looks like okay. if you haven't seen it and you like what Banker Boulder and Hadal Boulder, it's the, the latest one from him is like fucking awesome. Hmm. All right, I'm just looking at my uh, hits. One video, 8,100. The other one, 2,300. Those are the ones that were playing first. Then I put two more shorts up a few days later or a week later, I can't remember. One hit 2,200, and the other one hit 3,100. First time. Fucking couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. The one that hit 8,000. <laughs> what a fucking night that was. So, you know, like... So if you get a, somebody who's got 6,000 hits on a fucking video when I'm getting 20 or 30 or 40... <laughs> <laughs> be happy. I'm just happy to have 20, 30, 40 hits on a video. That's the way it is. Yep. Practice, practice, practice. I just have to make better well, videos. Content on the one with 8,000 views, whatever I got. Check my channel out. It's, uh, it's Flying High. It's called Flying High. Okay. It's in the shorts. If you look in the on the page or the playlists in the shorts. Oh, the was shorts. it like a short, like a forty-five second yeah. one or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh. let me see. Uh, I'll find it. I'll find it. Sixteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. Sixteen seconds. Oh. Sixteen seconds. Yeah. No, none of my uh, regular videos. <laughs> I've got anything. The most uh, I got was four hundred and something on the video. Maybe that, maybe that tells you you should keep it short and sweet, huh? <laughs> well, then you won't be on a panel anymore. <laughs> I won't do panels anymore. I'll just do fucking shorts. Right. Uh, You'll forget all the bobs. Anyway, but, you know, no, I like doing the panels. It's fun. I've met some good mates off this, so I'm not going to stop that. I mean, I mean, put it this way, I've only been doing it, what, 10, 11 months. And I've made some good mates out of it, including yourself, Craig, Gear, Ronald, Dice. I, I, I've met Simon. I've met Maria. I've hung out with Adrian. I've hung out with Connie. Uh, you know, I've met... Uh, Has anyone heard of Creative Monk lately? How no. he's doing? No, Don't know. he's just I gone underground. Him. I haven't seen him in months. I haven't seen you in months either. About that, I asked about that the other day, Kiko, and uh, apparently he's just snowed out. He was on for a couple of weeks ago or whatever on somebody's, but uh, he's been snowed down with work, I guess. Yeah, he's young. He's probably working a lot. Yeah, young. Well, yeah, it's not that young. He's in his thirties, or late, late, <laughs> Come on, late, late, late compared 30s. to us. Compared to no. us, that's young. <laughs> hey, Kiko, yeah, compared to us, yeah, but it's fucked up, man. Uh, I think he actually turned forty, didn't he? Uh, uh, just uh, last year. Don't know. Can't remember. I haven't seen him in months. I think it is. 
Get him at Mons. Anyway, John is uh, simply monks. Uh, he's funny. <laughs> he's funny guy. That he's other on, one. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's been he's been on he's been on my he's been on my panel anyway, and he's been on Simon's, and he's been on he was in Simon's house, so he was on that all day. Because Maria. Oh, he's that. quite the tall, tall, yeah. slim guy, isn't he? Yeah, listen. Boxing Day. I saw the beginning of it because uh, I was on. I spoke to Maria because uh, she was uh, she was drinking, she was drinking uh, rose wine or something, and she was getting tipsy already. And then I had to go and do some other shit. So, so I, I missed all the fun part of it. I missed the last four or five hours of that stream. I guess. Okay, because I, I don't remember you being there. I didn't see any text. No, I was in the big be in the beginning when they were drinking and stuff. Yeah, whatever. I had comments on there as well. I wasn't there at the very start. I know that. Oh. I was maybe twenty minutes late or thirty minutes late. I don't know. Oh, they started to drink and they were doing some karaoke, and then when they started to do all the karaoke, I had to go and do something else. When they when they started to sing in the living room. Uh -huh. John, John, um, was there like at twelve thirty? He arrived early because he wasn't supposed to be going there till like two o'clock, and I think he arrived like at twelve thirty. <laughs> so they were well on their way before they even went Simon, live. Even Simon was uh, not camera shy that day. Yeah, and did you see uh, Maria's Christmas video, the latest one? No. He's in that. Lots, lots, video, pictures, everything. Hey, Garrett, can I ask you a question? When you went over there for uh, the 10 days? Two, two weeks. I was there for 14 days. Uh, okay, give or take, whatever, two, 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 two weeks. Uh, why Why did you, and, and all the footage you shot there, and it was like two months later, you were still uh, putting out, video from that trip but why did you spread it out over such a long period of time because i wanted more hits on the videos i spread them out two weeks apart oh okay so there because was a I video. Think that last one i saw was just before christmas or something and that was like and uh, i think the last one you put out was like a couple of just no just one what uh part two was last friday there's been a video out once every two weeks. Oh, okay. I spread it out. Oh. One video, one video two weeks later, another video two weeks later, another video. Oh. Two, it's all he spread out. It thin. Because I don't have the content. <laughs> because I was supposed to go back to the UK, but I got sick. Uh, yeah, I remember you were going to go on the Monday and you got sick, didn't you? Yeah, I was sick as a dog, man. Well, you got the call. I got the flu, COVID, yeah. whatever, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I didn't have it. I, my sister wanted to bring a test over to me, and I said, "No, I'm not sticking that thing up my nose." I refused I mean, it. Now, I refused it. With the Omicron, there is no. I mean, look at Australia. Had the strictest rules ever. Hasn't let anybody in, anybody out. They shut down all the different provinces and everything. It's still Omicron. It's going like. Uh, wildfire. So there's mm. no way to stop that stuff. But these people doesn't don't get sick. Look in the UK now. We have like two hundred thousand new cases every fucking day. And but you know the hospitals are not you know, and the death the deaths are not going up or anything. So when are they gonna start to just say that Omicron is a flu? <laughs> yeah, I mean Omicron is it's it, okay. It's more contagious, but it's yeah. not as bad as the Delta one. So what it's the a flu. Fuck are they on? So it's a flu. It's just like the cold. Can you yeah. imagine? Can you imagine if you had a test? I saw, I saw a throat and a runny nose. Yeah. Uh, can you? Can you? Greg, can you imagine five years ago, if you every winter, if you tested the whole population for for a cold or a flu, you would have got the two hundred thousand people every day testing positive for that, wouldn't you? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I got a, I got a really good friend of mine in Australia right now. And I didn't know that I talked last time I talked to him, he had just got out of the hospital with blood clots in his legs. He's a pretty good sized guy. And he had been vaxxed twice and he had blood clots in his legs, almost died. He spent three days in the hospital getting that all squared away. And I said, man, you better stay away from all that stuff. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to get my booster in a week. It's Ernest today. They just put up all the different stats. I mean, tons of stats now for all age groups, who is hospitalized, who is not hospitalized, or whatever. And almost 80% of those who actually get hospitalized uh, of uh, Omicron is all non vaccinated people. So well, that's what they want you to believe. What? That's what they want you to believe. Well, I mean, this is official stats from uh, the government. So yeah, 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 the government, the government, right? The government. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not <laughs> into conspiracy theory anyway, but uh, whatever. Yeah, I saw that, John, with the with the new chainsaw. You know, I sent you a, a message on that. <laughs> you guys don't have time to buy rubbers. <laughs> anyway, I'm going for cigarettes. I'll be back. <laughs> on that note, I'm going for a cigarette. I thought you stopped. Uh, wasn't that like one of your? Uh, wasn't that like a New Year's uh, resolution, uh, Gareth, to stop smoking or not? He's gone now. <laughs> I thought he got one of those uh, headsets now that he could uh, walk and take a cigarette and whatever and still listen. He bought that before Christmas, didn't he? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it. He might have it. Okay. Yeah, he bought that just before Christmas. Yeah, I thought that because you know he used to then go and be able to listen in and be in full control even if he went uh, to the bathroom for uh, out or to have a cigarette out of the window. Yeah, that's what he bought it for. He wanted to get that. Maybe his batteries or something. You know, I'd like to get one of those. It's it's, it's convenient, I think. So how is the barbecue going? Uh, Cool it down now, you know. I took it off the fire and let it sit for a bit. Is this, is, are you are you barbecuing for breakfast? Uh, basically, kind of, you know. Didn't plan on it, but just it just worked worked out that way. Any time, any time for barbecue. I did the same thing yesterday. I didn't. I didn't plan on it. It just worked out. I just started. Barbecuing. Well, it's almost. It's almost a brunch, right? It's about ten minutes to ten in the morning. There you go. There you go. You call it brunch. We used to have that at the hotels when I was a diplomat working at the embassy. We used to always go to the to the diplomat hotel, uh, Radisson Blue, and have the the brunch. <laughs> yeah, not like. Oh, are you making like? Uh... Uh, a, a Filipino version of an uh, English uh, fry up uh, on the barbie? No, no, no not really. It's a, I wouldn't say it's like that. It's, it's just a, a, a chance to do some chicharron off of the skins. Got me some uh, delicious cranberry juice. You do some uh, pomegranate juice. You know, just doing some juicing and hanging out. You make up some. Uh, you make up some fried fried eggs with it as well. Or? <laughs> what did you say? You do some fried eggs as well. Mhm, mhm. That's nice. Just chilling, man. Seventy-eight degrees, brother. Good weather. So did they pull the plug in at Angulus today, Daryl? I mean, did oh, they? Yesterday. Did they put in a new curfew bullshit on alcohol? Yeah, they started that yesterday. For how long? Two weeks? Two weeks until the 15th. And then That's we'll right. see if some, you know, I don't know. We'll see what they do. 15th of Jan or 15th of Feb? 15th January. Oh, okay. So not but, you know, 
They're gonna on see their, right? on their week then. We'll see. When, when is the election for the new president? Uh, May. Yeah. 20, 20, it's in 20. May. I think. Uh, I think my old mate. Uh, 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 gonna get the. Um, Elected I think Marcus. Uh, I think Bong gonna get it. Pacquiao. No, I think Bong Bong. No, I think Bong Bong gonna get it. Can I imagine oh. things will things will change a lot when a new new guy gets in. Better or worse, I don't know, but it'll change. I think yeah. yeah it'll be changes. I, I, I have a feeling I heard from a lot of people now in higher places that I know that, uh, you know, Bong Bong Marcos is in for a really good chance. Greg, since you're in the States, yes, sir. there's a person that uh, we know who's Canadian and he's been to Mexico twice, he's been to Colombia once, whatever. Do you need a vaccine? Do you have to have be vaccinated to get on a plane to go to these places, or do you just have to show a PCR test and just get on a plane? So you don't yeah. need to be vaxxed? I don't think so. All the, all the employees have to be vaxxed. And they were trying. They were trying to do that with the with the, with the uh, people. But the, the Supreme Court closed, shut that down, and the companies don't want to lose all their money. They're, they're hurting bad enough as is. Nobody will fly. Everybody's got to be vaxxed. And and uh, and uh so, they, yeah, you got to show a PCR test and all that stuff to get on the plane, I believe, and wear, wear a mask. Right, because I was thinking, you know, like, if Dennis can go to these places and he can go into the States because he, he drives down into the States to an American airport, he flies off to Colombia, he flies off to Mexico, he comes back to the States and he drives back up to Canada. I'm thinking because Robert's not doing his job anymore. Why isn't he going somewhere on holidays? You know, like, why is he staying in Gainesville doing fucking nothing? And he's on full hundred, hundred. Yeah, but he can do that over there as well. I mean, instead of being stuck doing what he's doing. Yeah. That's crazy, well, man. I if I know. had the opportunity that he's got and the yeah. money um, and, yeah, and he yeah, I, and, He's getting thousands upon thousands of dollars every month, so he can well afford it. Either that, or I'd have a boat cruising over to the to the Bahamas and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. If I had oh, money yeah, and I was down in Florida and I could walk, I'd be out on the water every day fishing. Yeah, I, I and he too. lives. His trailer is right on the water. His trailer yeah. is right there. He yeah, has I a dock. He has a dock right, right beside his trailer. I've seen it. He showed us. Wow. Why is he I, staying I, in his trailer all day when he's got all this money? I'd be out and about, man. And he can drink in Mexico. He can drink in Colombia. He can drink yeah. whatever the fuck he wants. Well, yeah. He doesn't have to be Make vaccinated. In trouble there, too, though, you know? Maybe yeah. he doesn't have anybody to look out for the dog. You can put him in the kennels. There's yeah. kennels just up the road because my uncle used to own it. And I ran it for fucking two years. It's only up the road from his fucking trailer. I know exactly where he lives. Is he is he on the on the on Atlantic or the Gulf side? Yeah. He's in Gainesville, Florida. Yeah, but he's inland, though. I know. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's in, the Gulf, the Gulf. There's an airport in Gainesville. He can jump on. He can drop the dog off he's at the Mexican, at, Mexican at, Gulf side, uh, Craig. Huh? I'm sorry. It's on the Mexican Gulf side, but it's inland. It's not by the sea. It's inland. Oh, okay, he's he just got canals and stuff behind. He's north of Orlando. He's northwest of Orlando. Yeah. Okay, so he'd be so he's on the Gulf Coast side, really. Yeah. Yeah. Of that state. Yeah. But the, there's the there, there's a there's a, a great kennel just up the road from where he lives. But still, it's I ran him. I ran the place. My family owned it. My my dad helped them to you know set this place up right i worked on the place for two years nearly most of those bayous will empty out into rivers which will empty out into the gulf of mexico so i don't know the new owners because my aunt has sold the place since when my uncle died uh 
So the kennels was in great order when I left, and I, I'm sure my uncle kept it in great order when I all those years I was gone because he was, you know, that's the type he is. So I'm sure the new owners would keep the places good. I'll tell you what, if I could walk and I would lived in Florida, I'd be making bank going out there catching them damn snakes, them, them, them pythons have been released. They're paying big money by the foot, pay more for them alive to dead, but you still get paid for them. You go catch them things all day long, man, you make, you make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But he's making thousands of dollars. He's making what? 10,000 a fucking month. Uh, just under, so, just under eight. Okay, just under, eight, just under $8,000 a month. You just, but, but you still need something to do besides sit there with a bottle in your hand. You know, you get, That's you right. Get just all day long. He's, he quit his job in the trailer park. He doesn't work in the trailer park yeah. anymore. He's probably got hard feelings with half the people that live there. And, and he's just sitting in his house drinking. That's, that ain't right. He that doesn't even mix with him. anybody. He has no friends. Yeah, I know. It ain't good for him. He doesn't he hang out with anybody. Yeah, doing he's something. Got his, He's got a beautiful, uh, he's got a beautiful dog, absolutely beautiful dog. And I said to him earlier, uh, you were here. I said, well, why don't you take the dog out for a walk? And he says, oh, the dog walks me. I said, take the dog out for a walk. She'd love you even better. I don't know. I mean, he's a nice guy. Yeah. But when he gets too much of this, he just gets out of control. And that's why I, I got angry with we him. He that's just won't listen. That's why, because he said to me, before I brought him back on the panel, because he was off for months because what he did to gear. And I had a talk with him. And I said, look, this is the way it is. It's going to stop. When I say stop, stop. And he said to me, quote, unquote, this is his quote. If I get out of it, just kick me off. I did, I've never kicked him off. He's kicked himself off twice. Because he doesn't know when it's happening. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see it, you know. I don't want to kick him off. Yeah, I hear you. None of but, us want hard feelings or anything, you know. No, dude, I have no hard feelings for him. I still love right. the guy. I still like him being on the panel. He's very... Uh, He's always up on my panels. He's always sociable he, and everything. Yeah, he, he's chatting away with the guys, whatever. And like, he was going on on Kiko's wife, and I just had enough of it because he was on about the cops saying, "Oh, don't let the cops chat." I said, "Fuck's sake!" He gets on. He gets on, car, he gets on one subject and just wants to beat it to death. Yeah. I mean, he's too, so, he's too analytical. He wants to analyze every damn word you say or whatever, you know, and come up with yeah. different scenarios and all this other stuff. Whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down. We're here to have a good time. <laughs> and, if he and if he doesn't have it in his head, he's on his computer getting the information off the computer. And he's reading off the computer. Because you see him, because he's not looking at the camera, he's looking at the computer and he's talking. Yeah, I know I'm talking to Jonah, right? Yeah. That, yeah, figured that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There sure is. Well, Jonah was on my... Say hi to the boys. Jonah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping one day we could all stumble in the stumble in the Daryl's place. Ronald, she gave me a thumbs time. up. On, she was watching us on I can't my hear Facebook. Them. They can't hear. Well, they can hear me now. We'd have a blast. Anyway, Ronald. <laughs> What I was trying to say was Jonah had given me a thumbs up because she was watching us on my Facebook. Because I'm going out on live, YouTube and Facebook at the same time. And she's watching from her Facebook because we're connected on Facebook. And I got a thumbs up from her. So that's how I knew she was there. Anyway, Michael, uh, what's that about? I don't know where that came from, and I don't know what you mean by it. <laughs> what did you do, Gareth? I don't know. That deserved all the been something awful nice. I think you were talking yeah. about Michael. Like you were talking about Robert. You maybe thought you were talking about him, about drinking. No, I wasn't talking about Michael. Michael has never done anything. 
Yeah. I'm only talking about Robert Woods and he's, Michael. He's getting half the conversation. Michael Michael hasn't been on the panel, so he hasn't done anything. It's Robert I'm talking about. Everybody else knows I'm talking about Robert. It's not. It's not Michael I'm talking about. I would never talk to him because I have no reason to. Anyway, next. Not sure. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, sorry for interrupting. Fire away. Yeah, because I wish if I had if I if I could if I get up and walk again, I'd have me a little flat boat or something. I'd be out there every day, floundering or every night, floundering and crabbing. I'd, I'd have I'd have my I'd learn how to throw a cast nut, have a bunch of flound uh, uh, mullets, and dry them suckers out, smoke them on a the grill or something, smoke them in a the smoker. I'd be, I'd be having time of my life. I think he's got a quad as well. Didn't he had a quad a number of months ago that it, it was up in his dad's place and then he brought it to get it fixed. That was before the summer, I think it was. Oh. And um, uh, what was he saying? He had to get it fixed or whatever. Um, his dad was using it or something. And um, he was getting it fixed, and then that's the last I've heard of it. He showed it, I think he showed us pictures of it. I can't remember. Hey, anyway. hey Craig, can, Craig, can your wife get a, a lot of good different fish there? Fresh stuff since you're right there by the coast. Yeah, we can get a lot, we can get a lot of fish. Uh, what's we her get favorite? The, uh, her favorite, I think, is flounder. She likes she likes Matt she likes uh she, I can't remember the name of it right now. But her she likes flounder. I do too. Uh I asked them, I called them up today. I was asking if they had any boiled crabs at, at quality seafood. And uh they said they didn't have any blow ball ones, they had live ones. And I asked them if they had any big tuna heads or any big fish heads. And they said no, I'll come back Monday afternoon because that's when they get their fish shipment in and clean them. Because I want to try to I want to try to make a fish fish head soup. Yeah, I really they like love that. that. Love that fish I head like soup. soup. I don't like the fish head itself, but the, but the broth it makes, oh, it's delicious. Yeah, my ex used to do that stuff. I remember. I used to, I, I used to be my favorite, that used to be my favorite saying, fuck them and feed them fish heads. I got to the Philippines and said, damn, that, that ain't right. They love it. <laughs> yeah, they eat the fish yeah. heads. I remember yeah. my ex, Nuvi, she would eat the fucking fish heads, the fish eyes, the whole I like yeah. thing. Yeah, I like the meat around the fish head, but not not the not the eyes and the and the, no, nah, I ain't doing that. My wife. Said I tried blue were, once. I tried blue once, and that was enough for me. When my wife said when they were kids, they used to fight over who got the eyes, the fish oh, eyes. Uh, uh, when wait. I first when I first got to the Philippines, when I first got to the Philippines, the people across the street were having a New Year's party. Oh no, a Christmas party. Every anyway, Christmas party, they all invited me over. It was like almost like a block party for for the neighborhood or whatever, and they sent me down here try some of this, and they gave me this stuff, and I started started eating it, and it was some of the nastiest stuff I ever ate in my life. It coated my whole whole throat and my mouth, and it come to find out it was goat skin soup. It was like a gag deal or whatever. Everybody everybody ate it just to prove they could eat it. I was like, what the hell is this shit? And they all started laughing and everything, and they gave me a big old mud crab, big old mud crab, and and here he tests it. Now, that sandwich was delicious, but they just gagged me with that goat skin scoop. Never try that. That's the, it's like it's like having Elmer's glue all in your mouth down your throat. It was disgusting. <laughs> I still to this day have never ate a real tuna steak. All the tuna I've ever eaten is out of a can. I've eaten you tuna steak. There, you never had the proper tuna steak. I've eaten. I used to work on a long line boat for a while, and we pulled them yellowfin up there, and I was a butcher of Wall Street. I'd saw the head off with a big old giant meat saw, and, a, and we had like a trough, like a on saw or a long trough, and we set the fish in there and slice the head off, and we had a big old long steel, steel stainless steel rod with a hook on the end of it so you could hold it, and jam it up and down the spinal cord a few times to make sure they were, make sure they were dead. So when you started cutting around the fins and stuff, because they'd jump, and you'd cut your fingers off. But I took I took I took a paper thin slice of tuna fish right up behind the head, and it was still quivering. I threw that stuff in my mouth, man. That was some good stuff. It tasted, it tasted a, a little, tiny, tiny bit like fish, 
and sweet like a watermelon. It was delicious. Oh, tuna is great. I mean, in Hawaii, they call it for ahi, and ahi steak is fantastic. And same as also some really nice salt swordfish steaks as well. Grilled yeah. swordfish steak is fantastic. Yeah, I, I like the the mahi mahi too, or the dolphin yeah, fish. And the mahi mahi, ahi, the mahi mahi yeah, is great. That's good stuff, especially for fish tacos. This is the best fish tacos you'll ever have. Yeah. Or grilled, you know, freshly, uh, you know, you go up in the mountains in Norway and fish and you catch the, the five, four, 500 grams uh, rainbow trout and then you just uh, grill it, grilled rainbow yeah. trout is super. Yeah, I, I, like, I like all freshwater fish. I'm pretty picky on the saltwater fish I eat. I, I don't eat all of it because I've, I've seen what's inside of them and not very appetizing. All the parasites that grow in some of them fish. Oh, yeah. So you couldn't make you it eat a shark or, or a like mackerel because mackerel is like they eat anything. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't pay me to eat a shark or, or a swordfish. I've just seen too much shit that grows inside of them. All the worms and everything else. Nah, I just wouldn't do it. I've heard I've eaten it once or twice. It was good, good. But after I saw all that, I, I quit eating it. Yeah, but then you know, I mean, what you don't like cod? Huh? You don't like cod? Cod is all. Is, oh yeah, uh, I like cod. Yeah, but that that's uh, that's pretty evil. pretty bad too. I think my wife's favorite favorite fish is salmon. We don't get that very much. And I don't think she's ever had really true salmon from America. She's only had, over there. They only sell it like the frozen salmon or whatever, you know. I think it's a salmon bellies or something. Oh, I mean, fresh, freshly caught, uh, you know, Norwegian uh, wild salmon is awesome. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of dill and yeah. garlic and butter, lemon. I, I'm actually another fish I really really like, and you can bake it or you can grill it and whatever. I mean, I'm a sucker for sea bass. I really really like sea bass. I don't like sea bream so much because it's a bit harsh, but yeah. the sea bass is lovely. I mean, a baked sea bass. Oh wow! Yeah, Kira, I had it. I had a niece. A niece that made that one time, and uh, it was fantastic. I think it cost thirty dollars a pound here in the states. Oh, it's expensive, and then you can was... go. What you can do, you can either you can grill it, or you can bake it just in cellophane and put some prawns and stuff inside it with some garlic sauce. Or you can actually, even more expensive, can you do it in the, in the sauce? You know, you bake it in salt, and then you knock knock the salt apart, and then you get the, the sea bass out of that. Like they do in Portugal and Spain, they they bake the sea bass in salt. Yeah, she yeah. she baked this, and it was just fantastic. I have to get I have to get a couple of lobsters. She's never had that either, and she says she wants to try them. So, damn, you guys are making me. But you got I got to be careful because she's allergic to certain seafoods. She can oh. eat a certain. She can eat a, free, a few. It's weird too because some of them. She can eat a few shrimp, and it, she's mildly, mildly uh, uh, allergic to them. We she wanted to try oysters. I fried up a bunch of oysters one night when we first moved out, when we first got our apartment, our first place, and she ate one oyster, and she was on her second one. And I looked up up at her, man. Her lips were all swollen up. She was, her throat was closed up. Whoa, whoa, stop! She hadn't eaten oysters again. Crawfish, she'll eat all day long. They're too spicy, but she loves the taste. You know, she, oh, can, eat, she can eat scallops. They don't bother her. But there's certain things I got to watch out when she eats. Have you tried, Craig, have you ever tried? I mean, if, if you ever was in Scandinavia, I mean, you know, we have this, the North Atlantic uh, 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 prawns. As soon as they get caught, and then the fishing boats are cooking them, so and they're serving them fresh. So you have them in the buckets, and then you have it with loaf 
and and mayonnaise, and then you eat, uh, and then you peel, and you just eat them together with uh, loaf and, and and mayo. Fucking delicious, you know. Okay. You, you suck the head of uh, of of the pro. Uh, you know they are smaller than you know, but because they are they are so tasty because they come from the cold North Atlantic uh, yeah. water. So they are not. They are not yeah. the, the prawns come from the Mediterranean. Very, very high on omega threes too. If they come from the cold water. Yeah, super high on omega three. I had never eaten prawns until I got to the Philippines. I, did, I I thought they were all freshwater shrimp. I'd never eaten them. And I got over there. There's a little place called. Actually, I can't remember the name of the place. I about Mafunis. And Dumaguete, it was a Japanese gentleman that started a restaurant. We go over there and eat, eat sushi, and I, I ordered big fried prawns. And they were they were pretty good. They were a little bit stronger than shrimp, but they were good. Kind of tempura. You, tried, uh, you, you know, we when I grew up, we used to have at least once or twice a week because in those days it was really cheap and it was full of iron. We used to have a whale whale steak. Uh, oh. A lot when we grew up in Norway uh, back in the you know late sixties, early seventies, and and it's very meaty, you know. It doesn't taste fish at all, and and it's full of vitamins and minerals and everything, and and it's really really healthy for you. These days, it's a fucking delicatessen. So now it's so fucking expensive. It's yeah. like more expensive than. Uh, than the you know like than Bagu, you know <laughs> right right I mean over here over here it's like that with uh beef shanks the stuff they make o okabuso with or whatever yeah okabuso oh what yeah, the, That's beef so shanks, the beef shanks used to be used to be cheap 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 now yeah. since all these high end restaurants and these chefs learned how to do the osabuco and all that stuff well man the price went through the damn roof. Uh, it's so funny. It's so funny. When I was a kid, and uh, my mom sent me to the shop as well to buy like a broiler, you know, like a grilled broiler or chicken, you know. Yeah. The, and, and and behind the counter, they used to ask us if we want chicken wings. They were free. These yeah. days, they fucking charge a fortune for chicken wings, and they oh, used yeah, to yeah. pay for free when I grew up. They have shortages over here for them, Gary. Uh, uh, Gear, they have shortage yeah. of them over here. Uh, we waited, we waited like them. I told my wife, she went to Walmart a few times and to Win Dixie. And she told me, I told her, get some chicken wings, baby. I'll barbecue some chicken wings. Wasn't no special occasion, but it went like three weeks before she ever saw a chicken wing in the store. They got snatched up as soon as they hit the shelf. Now, it's easy to get the uh, the chicken, the, the, the cubs, or whatever you call it, but I don't like, I, I like the wings, like the proper chicken wings, you know what I yeah. mean? Because I like, we got some, we got a, we got a Chinese and, uh, it's a Chinese, uh, Latino, and Filipino grocery store all mixed in one down, down in Biloxi, about three miles away, is Lee's Supermarket, and, uh, we got a bunch of those Mama Cita dry packages of, of Filipino marinade, barbecue marinade. I like to take all that stuff and put it in a big plastic bag and let it, let it marinate overnight. <laughs> then I just take it out and put it right on the grill. Fuck that's, that's that. Stuff, that's stuff that's that's stuff. Great. that you mentioned this. Wow. You know, I used to go to some Italian restaurants in London, and I used, you know, they used to make one Italian restaurant I used to go to. They made this fantastic uh, Utobuco. And when you mention that now, I'm, I'm just thinking it must be four or five years since I had a proper meal with that. But I used to love it, you know, and even you got the bone marrow. Yeah, right. My wife loves the bone marrow. I was yeah. making I was making Mololo over here for her with that. Suck, you suck you suck out the bone marrow from oh lovely. Mololo or something like that, I think it's pronounced. They got it's the Philippines is what is beef shanks. Braised and cooked. It's delicious. Yeah, it's called Bololo. Yeah. Do you see what Michael wrote there? Bubba Gump Shrimp? Or is that a joke? It's a Bubba joke. Gump shrimp. I, I, was down, I was down by a bait, 
Bay La Battery, La ba- Bay La Battery, or something like that in Alabama, about a hundred miles away from me. Because I was thinking, um, Bayou La Battery. Do you know that movie with um, Tom Hanks? Forrest, 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 yeah. yeah, Forrest Gump. That's what guy, I was thinking. The, guy, was the, guy, the black guy was Bubba Gump. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Has as many ways to cook a shrimp. I remember him. I don't, I don't know if that was one take or it was a full take, but he rattled off like 25 different ways to cook shrimp. I'm telling you. And we're still going. <laughs> wow. No signs of slowing down. Uh, I, I, we, I cooked frog legs here one time. I tried, my wife tried one, and she... Oh. She said it tasted good, but she wasn't eating no more because she all she could see was all she could picture was that poor frog hopping around in the yard. Did you ever like that shrimp yeah. scampi that those cold hors d'oeuvres or whatever they serve? You know, if you're someplace fancy, they walk around with like finger food and it's a uh, cold shrimp with cocktail sauce. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. The mini- Is that called shrimp scampi? No, we call no, that's well, just we call shrimp. Shrimp. Uh, Prawn, prawn cocktail. We call it a prawn cocktail here. Now, what I love is when you go into a Mexican restaurant, you get a big old, big old margarita bowl, a big old margarita thing, and it's got the, it's got that, it's got the boiled shrimp, and uh, the tomatoes sauce, or or it's like, I guess it's like the Mexican tomatoes. Yeah, sauce, but are the sh- are the shrimp? Sauce. Yeah, the it's, shrimp got the, pot? it's got the it's got the diced uh, vegetables in it and the avocados and all that stuff. Oh, it's delicious. Are the shrimp hot or cold? No, it's cold. cold. They're cold. cold. It's all chilled in a big glass. You know, I like that. I like one, that. Of uh, most, one of the most standard uh, starters at pub grabs and everything in uh, England, Kiko, is uh, prawn cocktail as a starter. Mm. Is it cold fish, Ben? It was uh, like Tolson Island, Tolson Island dressing, and uh, or cocktail and, uh, sauce. That's uh, Tolson Island, vinegar, Thousand Islands. That's Thousand the Island. Yeah, dressing. No, I, I like the one with cocktail sauce. Kenny Lau. Yeah, we. I ate Kenny Lau when I was down in uh, when I was down in Mindanao, down down General Santos, and it was delicious, man. It was it was yellowfin. Chunks of yellow pin in it. And mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I, thought seen it, it. I, thought, I thought it was so delicious. I ate me a couple of bowls of it and it didn't set it right on my stomach. I was on the toilet for like three days after that. I was, it just, just ate too much of it, is what it was. <laughs> but it was delicious, man. There wasn't nothing wrong with it. My yeah. stomach wasn't ready for all that. <laughs> uh, you know, now if uh, I, eat, I just eat a couple of spoonfuls and that's it, I'll let it go for hey, a while. Hey, Craig, a- ask your wife what is a kiki am. That's what? some kind of kiki am. Kiki M? Kiki M. It's like Kiki-am. a fried something. Like a fried something. Kiki M? Kiki M, as in Michael, is it? Kiki, yeah, like a yam. You know, Kiki oh, yam. M. Kiki M. It's fried. Maybe a. F- I'm a brain fart now. <laughs> like a sausage. <laughs> I'm a brain fart. <laughs> Did she say brain fart? Yeah. Well, you taught her she, well. She's not, she's not very good at cooking, and she don't know everything, but she's real good at eating. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with that. And she yeah, doesn't get hungry. She gets hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start like cooking something. Awesome. Oh, it smells good. I'm starving. I'm starving. Hurry up. Baby, it's going to take a while. Give me a break. <laughs> I'm sorry. She'll start eating as soon as I start cooking. I said, damn it. You'll be full when I get finished. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a sausage roll. Oh, it's like a sausage roll. Yeah, it's made of sausage. I'll tell you what, uh, Garrett. If like I think I've eaten that before. Roll it up, and then you uh, other spices in there. You bake it, and then you slice it. Yeah, it comes comes in a like a aluminum roll. Roll. Yeah. 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 Garrett, if Maria had do a replay of the last half an hour now, she would fucking cringe in uh, her sleep and bed that it wasn't a part of this discussion about food because you know how much she's into food. Eh? Big time. Big time. 
That's why I can't wait when I go back. Her and me are going to the buffet. Even if it's by ourselves, even if it's by ourselves, her and me are going to the buffet. I was laughing my head off because I couldn't find the. I mean, you were stumping after them for like half an hour to get to the fucking buffet. Uh, yeah, it but was like you didn't you, see you, you it. You were walking through the whole bloody town. Yeah, but you didn't see this, which is not on the camera or in the video. When we got to the restaurant, I'd stopped it. And um, I said, there's a fucking car park across the road. And Maria says, I didn't know there was a car park oh, across the road. That. Uh, you've been walking and, and Simon says, but you've been here before. <laughs> and she said, I never knew there was a car park. But it was right across the road. You couldn't miss it with a big stick. Said, 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 yeah. And you've been walking for half an hour in that uh, shit weather and trying to get there. Because mm -hmm. I thought says she don't know, but she eats them. We were, supposed, we were supposed to be going to the buffet where she went. Do you remember when she was before... It was during the lockdown where she went into Warrington and she had the, who was Lily with her or Mia, uh, or she was on her own. And she turned to the left and she says, this is a buffet place that's a really good place that she's been to before. So I thought that's the place we were going to. Then she said when we arrived at the house, because Adrian and myself and Connie were out all day doing different things. And then we got to Simon's house and Maria says, oh, we're not going to this buffet place. It's closed down because there's water damage in the restaurant. So she said, we're going to this other place, which she's been to before. Simon's never been there. So we follow Simon. She gives the directions. We follow. <laughs> so we park in the car park, proper car park place. And we thought the restaurant was just down the road. And then you see how far we walk <laughs> to a fucking restaurant. That's a fucking car park across the road from the restaurant. I mean, you couldn't miss it. It's right fucking there. And Simon, because Simon says, because he turns around and he says, Maria, it's there. How could you not know it was there? And Maria laughs. You know what Maria is? She goes, laughs. <laughs> uh, I didn't know there was a car park there. Well, the, funny, the funny part was that, you know, you, it looked like you got lost a few times and went up and down the same streets as well, trying to look for no, it. No, no, no. Um, we walked down that street. We had passed the first buffet place, the one that we were supposed to go to. Then we went further down. Then somebody turned left. I don't know who was, I think it was Simon and Adrian because they were ahead in front. And then Maria was with Connie, uh, with Mia, and Lily was beside me. And uh, somebody turned left. And I'm just following her. I didn't know where the fuck I was going. Connie and Adrian didn't know where they were going. So I think it was Simon went left. I don't know why, whatever. Anyway, we came back and then went, whatever. I don't need, I put it this way if we parked in the same car park, I wouldn't even know how to get back to the place. Because <laughs> I was filming and uh, I wasn't paying attention. I was just paying attention to whatever I could film that would look good, whatever. Anyway, say Levy. It was, uh, if I hadn't had the, the kebabs. Because I'd eaten the night before and I ordered kebabs about 12 o'clock at the hotel. I had it delivered. So I ordered two big kebabs and I ate the fucking things. <laughs> Tell you what. So I was too stuffed to eat the buffet. So I ate fuck all at the buffet. Did you actually ever try out the pool at the hotel? Yeah. It's in, the, it's in well, not me in the pool, but. I, I show the next video you'll see inside the, the hotel. I know, but I mean, I say, did you try it out? Yeah, I was in it. Yeah, of course, I was yeah. in it. Yeah. Would you go? Would you stay at the same hotel again if you went back? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Nothing wrong with that hotel. I had a great time there. It was well looked after by the staff in there. I thought you said that the Wi Fi was fucked. Yeah, it was fucked. Yeah. 
Well, I just went to Simon's house and I, and I uploaded at his house. That's only five minutes up the road. I did the editing in, in, in my room. Simon picked me up. I go up to the house. If I wanted to uh, put a video up, I did it at his house. No big deal. No, okay. you tried to do a couple of live streams uh, from the hotel, which was a bit. Uh, I did. I know you did because I was on them. Yeah, so Simon was beside me. I think the funniest, the funniest part of your whole trip was when he picked you up and you couldn't get out of the fucking car park. <laughs> you and Peter were laughing over head off. Yeah. Oh, Craig, you should have seen this. Simon picks me up from the airport, so he parks the van. So we walk to the van and threw my bag in. And Simon is live, so he picks, he parks the van, walks down to me. So when he gets to me, he's already live. So we were live all the way, right? We're in this car park. And we can't get the fuck out of the car park. We're coming down to the barrier, and the barrier won't go up. So I'm we pretty sure I saw that. that. And then, yeah, but it's not recorded. It's not on his no. channel. It, it was live. It was oh, live. Okay. See, he deletes it afterwards. So. I mean, he spends, it, you know, Garrett and Simon spent longer time getting out of the fucking car park than it took uh, Garrett to fly from Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I I said to I said to Simon, look, because there was this sign thing, you know, doing the height thing. And I said, Simon, I think you can get under that. I think you probably would hurt me so so I got out of the van. So I just gestured Simon to come. There was about that much space. But I would have, you know, sat on the thing and then just pushed it up if we had to do it, because it was the only way we could get out. Yeah, it took us about 20 minutes to get out of the car park. That was funny as fuck. Oh, and then, and then another part, Craig, was we get to the hotel. So we're live all the time. Live, completely live. And I'm reading the messages that are coming on the phone. So we get to my hotel. I check in, throw the bags up. So we're still live. I go back downstairs to reception. I say to reception, the bar, and this is 10.30. Didn't know the bar was closing at 11. So we go into the bar. They've already closed the fucking bar. Craig, they closed the bar. I'm, I'm listening to you guys. So, Philip that was ca cashing up the thing, I got to be friends with him while I was staying there. So he said the next time if it comes, if that ever happens, Garrett, don't worry about it. I'll, if you come in, if you come in late after the bar is closed and everybody's gone, I'll get you a beer. No problem, Garrett. <laughs> you ready for one after all that? Yeah, yeah, I'm friends with him now. I'm friends with him. He's in, in fact, he's in my last video. That goes live in a couple of weeks. Um, he's in that. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, we go to this bar down the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a and, and so we drove down to this bar down the road and um simon won't go inside because he wants to smoke cigarettes he says to me because he told me this before i went over that if he can't smoke inside the bar he's not going to go to the fucking bar yeah this is i said for fuck's sake simon it doesn't fucking matter so i went in i got two points and we sat outside the whole fucking night i think i got he had one or two and i had like three or four but they were only the small glasses like the san miguel glasses they weren't full points yeah so i was kind of i was kind of pissed off with that so when the bar closed we left and we were live all the time so when we were sitting outside we were we were very live, interesting home. local locals in that oh place. yeah 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 the two guys that came outside yeah and i'm saying and, and i'm saying to i'm saying to myself i wish these guys would fuck off because we're fucking doing a live <laughs> well, we're doing a live at the moment you couldn't fucking understand the site i mean you know they were talking as thick as uh slayer was they're, they're, uh, but they're locals. They were locals. It was an old guy and his son. Just drunk as fuck. Yep. And then I went down to the kebab shop. I walked down to the kebab shop down the road. 
because there was a kebab shop uh, just down from the pub. So I walked down there, and I think Simon came down in the van. Yeah, I think Simon came down in the van. <coughs> and the place was closing up. I think it was after 12 or something, 12 o'clock or something. And um, there was only enough meat for one kebab, and I was fucking starving. I was like, what the fuck? There's nothing else. I can't make a hamburger because they were cleaning up and everything. So everything was all cleaned up, but they had enough meat for one kebab. So I had one kebab back at the hotel, and that was that. But I was gagging for beers because I thought me and Simon would go on the piss. You know what I mean? That was the plan. Like, we go to the hotel, residence bar, you know. Once you're a resident, you can stay. You know what yeah. I mean? And then they tell us the bar is closed at 11. And then we walk in at half 10. The fucking bar is already closed. Nobody's in the fucking bar. Yeah, close up early because there was no customers to begin with, probably. Yeah, but they close up early anyway. And they don't open till like 4, four o'clock in the afternoon. Because oh, I went out the next day. I went out the next day to have a cigarette because I can't smoke in the room. And I'm thinking the bar is open. So I could maybe go in for a pint because it's not as if I had anything to do. I was waiting for Simon's going to work. So I can't do nothing until Simon has come back from work. And I don't have a car, so I can't go filming or anything. And we had planned that we I would uh, we're doing the sausages, Brennan's bread, and the the Kerry gold butter and all this shit. So that was planned. And Maria was cooking me a chicken curry for that night, whatever. But we didn't. I didn't have any alcohol. Not once in Simon's house. Not once. And Simon wasn't drinking at all. And the only time we had a drink was when he came down to the hotel bar. When we went to that bar the first night I arrived. I think he had one pint with me in Liverpool. I had two pints because I had a pint with him. Then he went off. Then I finished doing the video I was doing. That, but it, it, In fact, I brought the video. I brought the camera into Witherspoons and I filmed in Witherspoons. While I was having the pint waiting on Simon because he went to Dunkin' Donuts, which was a good distance away from where we were, where we were. So uh, after all the food you ate at Jollibee's, uh, yeah, I was that. very surprised. I had that pint. I was very surprised. That's not like me. I was to surprised drink that you didn't actually manage to drink anything after that yep. huge meal mm -hmm. in uh, Jollibee. Because yep. I was thinking that when I saw all that food, I thought the whole family was there to share. And then I realized that you were going to eat all of it and Simon just had a hot dog. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely oh. right. I spent 23 quid. That was the bill for the fucking food. 23 quid and change anyway it made it made a video that was the plan so did you actually manage to pin it yeah, all? I ate the whole fucking thing man everything i ate the you whole shit the did you not watch the video i know i watched the video but i was wondering if you actually literally finished the whole thing yourself yeah i did yeah it's in the video. There's a picture. There's a, there should be a picture in there. Everything finished or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you, you, you know. If, if oh, you know. thought Simon ate some of my stuff? Yeah. Ah, oh, no. Simon just had a hot dog. I had a hot dog as well. If I ever got over there, I'd like to do that. Do that World's End tour. Because all them, all them pubs. You know, you like I've had rice. Like I've had rice before. I didn't get rice. I just got the meat things. I got the spicy chicken burger. I got the hot dog. I got the double hamburger. Um, I got the loaded chips. Did I get anything else? I can't remember. You didn't get the fucking sweet spaghetti. No, but... no, 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 no. I don't like... I was never going to have that. Sweet spaghetti? Are you joking? That's what they eat in Jollibee's. I don't care. I'm not fucking eating it. Nor, nor Simon. He's tasting it. I made it for Kathy for, for, for New Year's. No, no, no. I did, it, or or yeah, the I just sweet, did. sweet macaroni salad. Ugh. No. Can't stand it. I don't like that. No. That's, that's 
sacrilege. I mean, why the? <laughs> That's not. Yeah, but what? But hey, what about all the meat? Everything else you ate in Jollibee was that actually also at, was that also full of sugar and sweets, or was that like just proper meat? I mean, the chicken and the burger and the hot yeah, dog. Yeah, it was proper. Yeah, it wasn't sweet at all. There was no sweet in any of that oh. stuff. And the the hot dog had cheese on had a mel had melted cheese on it. But it wasn't that big. It was only about that big. So I ate that in like two or three mouthfuls. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that foot long. No, it wasn't that long. No, it was only like that long. Was it like a proper English hot dog, or did it? No, taste it was a like Jolly a, Bee. Yeah. I wouldn't know the difference, Kiko. I I'm just wondering the where they source their hot dogs from. Mate, I wouldn't have a. F <laughs> it was the first time I was in Jolly Bee. As it says in the video, first time in Jolly Bee. First time to eat Jolly Bee. Did you not watch the video? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I did. I saw all four yeah. items that you bought. Oh, it was four items I got. I didn't get five. Well, you had the hot dog, the chicken sandwich, a double burger, and the chips. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have anything else. And not unless you had some ice cream for dessert. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't have it. No, I had no dessert. <laughs> oh, and you had the middle spoons as well. But that, that was, was a pint. That was a pint. There was no food in that. That was a pint of Budweiser. I like that burger they make with the pineapple on it. No. The slice pineapple? of pineapple. That Man, that's though. like putting pineapple no, on pizza. I, I don't do well, pineapple. I don't eat pizza. My wife, that's the only pizza my wife will eat, but I got, we got to order two separate pizzas because I won't touch it. No, either would I. And that's fucking Hawaiian, fucking Hawaiian. I had my son around the other night, uh, and we ordered from Pizza Hut, and I had this new pepperoni, fucking awesome pizza they have, and... And he had that fucking Hawaiian, you know, ham and pineapple. And I said to him, what the fuck? I mean, you know, <laughs> pineapple on a fucking pizza. Well, I like it, Dad. I said, oh, for fuck's sake. No, no. Ham? Yes. Pineapple? No. Most embarrassing thing you've ever done to a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> It's called yeah. a Hawaiian. It's called I'll a Hawaiian. Eat, I know, I know. Oh, no, I know I'll, I'll, I'll eat just about everything on a pizza except for that. I, I'd say, I love pineapple too. Just don't put it on my pizza. I just say, give me a Hawaiian, hold the pineapple. You like oh, anchovies? No. Oh, 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 oh. And why? This is even better. He has some friends, which is like, uh, you know, because it's very, you know, in England, it's very, in, everything is integrated here. So he has some very nice. Uh, kids, Muslim uh, friends, in, in this group of friends. So when they all go out and eat, they, so they have not decided that they're going to do a whole year without eating pork. So when he made the Hawaiian, I had to fucking order it with chicken rather than ham. So he had a, he had a, he had a chicken, chicken Hawaiian. Chicken pineapple. <laughs> Why did he just get a chicken pizza and added an extra pineapple on it? I mean, oh, fuck. You know, I've never ever had chicken on a pizza, and I don't. Oh, I'm I've not, had. I'm I've not had. planning on it. I've had chicken on it. Yeah, I've had uh, chicken tandoori on it. They have a thing called buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah, I've never eaten it. Probably won't ever eat it. I'll just go get buffalo wings. Michael says, is that what you call the blind lady in the blind? <laughs> Probably. Michael, I don't know. Craig, do you like anchovies on pizza? Oh, yeah. I love anchovies. Oh, I love anchovies. Oh. No, not me. Uh, well, are you, if, you, if you had a proper... Because one of the, my favorite meals is a chicken Caesar salad, yeah? yeah. And... And with the croutons and everything, and then I need, I have to have the anchovies uh, in yeah. it at a proper Italian restaurant. Yeah, with, with a good salad, you'll have. Yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah. I mean, you know, I see the maybe three anchovy fillets. Uh, I I went, you know, I mean, I some fucking restaurants try to serve me uh, uh, a chicken Caesar salad. And and they're using that fucking stupid salad rather than the crunchy ice the lettuce, which is the proper one you should use there. 
and and oh it's so lovely you know the crunchy salad with the, the chicken and the croutons and 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 the the, the sauce and the anchovies yep lovely uh, and I'll, a lot of times if i'm cooking and like italian or mediterranean dish or something like that i'll take an open up because i got a stack of cans of anchovies in the cupboard over there that i use for different things if I'm, if I'm making a frozen pizza or whatever i'll put them on there but i'll take sometimes and, and drain the oil off and put them in a pan and saute them down to, to, to substitute the salt. Yeah, okay. And build flavor on that with Italian. Another thing I do, we make, I, I also love, I, you, you, yeah, I do an oak, like in Scandinavia, I do open sandwich with hard boiled egg with a slice, you know, sliced into, and then, and then you put anchovies on the top of that with a bit of caviar. Oh, it's fucking oh, lovely. Man, try that. that sounds that sounds pretty damn good. Yeah. Like like make some deviled eggs and put an anchovy on top. Oh man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now my wife she loves deviled eggs. I made them for her one time. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> every time I do every time it was a, it was a like a holiday or whatever. Make me some deviled eggs. Oh yeah, okay. When I was in the Philippines, I, I looked forever to find cornmeal. It's hard to find over there if you don't know how to ask for it. And I finally found Bob's Red Milk Cornmeal because I've been longing to make some, use it to make fried fish with or to make cornbread. And I made a pan of cornbread. I had a pot of beans cooking. And it was just plain old cornbread sitting on sitting in the pan. By the time the beans were finished, she done ate the whole pan of cornbread. I said, damn. Do you guys in America, do you do uh, what we call egg and soldiers? Egg and what? Soldiers. I don't think so. so it's a soft boiled egg and then you uh, have a toast which you, you toast the bread with butter on it and you, 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 you cut the bread into uh, like uh, bread sticks and you dip they fit in uh, in the oh, ring. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, I, 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 I remember. I remember back on. Uh, I love it. I love it. Prop. I love it. Really good. One night he he mentioned that, and I asked him what it was, and then he explained cut up bread in like finger. Yeah. Finger length. Yeah, I love a good. I love a good uh, soft boiled egg, and I like toast. So I imagine I'd, I'd eat the hell out of it. Oh, that's lovely. We call it for for you know uh, egg and soldiers. Just a little bit of black pepper and salt, and maybe one or two drops of Tabasco on it. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You can do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, my my wife made me feel good this morning. She came back from the store. She was she been in the Lee's supermarket waiting for some lechon to come out and be served. For, for, from the cut up the buy, and I last New Year's I made her I made her a uh, luncheon roll, uh, pork belly roll, crispy in the oven. She she come back and said, "Oh, hon, hon, your 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 luncheon was better than theirs." I said, "Okay." But I guess since you live down south, Craig, uh, I mean you are really into spicy and hot food, aren't you? I mean because they're normally in the southern states, they eat fucking very hot food all the time. Spicy, I mean spicy food. Sometimes, not not necessarily. I use a lot of spices for flavorings. I and I don't cook a lot of hot hot stuff because okay. me, I can't eat it, and Kathy doesn't like it. Now, like like I'll use a lot of Tabasco on my beans and stuff like that. And as far as peppers go, I like the Philippine, the uh, little bitty, tiny, tiny peppers you get. But uh, I just go to Ethel's like down in down in Alabama. I mean, just down. You know, you had a lot of Creole influence and a lot of Mexican influence and stuff, and so we are quite used to eating uh, spicy food. Kathy won't eat it. I, I like hot stuff. I can't. I like. I like. Hot stuff with flavor, but I can't eat the habaneros. Something about the habaneros take my breath away. I can't breathe when I eat them damn things. Craig, do you like Cajun? Cajun style? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I cook just about anything Cajun. 
And I like, like I said, I'll, I'll, and if I make beans, I'll take a jalapeno and just score the skin of it and put the thing in whole. That way it gets the flavor without the heat. And I'll just take the jalapeno when it's done. I'll take the jalapeno, set it on a sauce, and put it on my plate because, of, but yeah. Well, in America, do you guys eat a lot of Indian? Here in England, you know, not really. Is, I tell you what, in, in, in the all of the national fucking food yeah. grab takeaway in England is right. Indian. You know, there are spent 50, was it 50 million pounds? They have they have Indian food here. Week on what Indian takeaways in, in 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 England. You know, everybody after you are drunk or on the way back, you know, when, when you guys do you know, whatever you grab, everybody here grabs like a fucking curry yeah. and uh, take home, you know? Yeah. No, they, they, don't, they don't have it. They, they have they have some Indian food, but it's not like over there, near, nowhere near. Okay. <clears throat> because that's like the biggest the biggest thing in England is uh, fucking uh, curry. You know, yeah, I, I love curry myself. I do. It's, it's damn good. I yeah, I eat. think one time in my life I tried it. That's it. Yeah. I love a good chicken curry. I made shrimp curry one time when I was in when I was in Dumaguete, and I had like five kilos of shrimp. I made a big old batch of it, and I ended up having to eat it all myself because it was too spicy for Kathy. I said, "Well, I won't do that again." It's quite strange, you know, because I mean, there is actually more Indian, almost more Indian restaurants and takeaways in England than there are Chinese. Chinese is like number two, but yeah. almost every little village. Have, have two types of takeaway. You know, they either have Indian or they have Chinese. And yeah. then a uh, little bit larger places, you have the traditional fish and chips. Right. Now, Chinese, Stop. Chinese, yeah. they have a lot of Chinese delivery here. Yeah, you can have Chinese delivered right to your house. But uh, I've watched the videos because I was interested in the, in the Indian food. And I watched the videos of them making the curry from, from, from uh, scratch. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that. So, uh, oh, yeah. You know, all the different spices and everything you got to have put together. And also what they do, which is really nice, is actually I, I love the chicken tandoori. They have these special tandoori uh, ovens. And and yeah. and uh, it tastes, like, really nice when they do, like, the, the quarter chicken or the half chicken in the tandoori. Right. And it gets like this, uh, this uh, red spices they put on it and whatever have you, mm -hmm. as long as uh, and normally coriander. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like it's out. Like when I make when I make anything Cajun, they got it. They don't have they don't have the maripa in it. They have the they call the 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 Trinity down here, and it's got instead of having carrots, it's got onions. Celery and garlic, onion, celery, and bell peppers, and of course we add the garlic, and usually add green onions to that too to mix it up with the vegetables, and that's that's the main that's the main spice in it. It isn't hot until you put the until you put the, the hot peppers in it. Now, like when we do a seafood boil, that's hot because we put a couple of big old jugs of Chinese red pepper or cayenne pepper in a big old pot of boil of water, along with the crab boil, and like I said, my wife doesn't like spicy food. Her lips will be burning like hell, and she'll still be sucking them damn crawfish down because she loves crawfish. <laughs> yeah, my my Nuvi, my ex, uh, she she didn't like it too spicy either. Uh, like she got me on to Caldereta and a few other adabo and things like that. She didn't like it too spicy where I right. did because I was used to Indian food because I lived with an Indian girl in the UK for four months, but I was dating her, I think, about two years. And I was used to her food being spicy all the time, and I guess that's where I picked up the spiciness from. Yeah, well, okay. my wife, my wife, Tolerance, my wife the a, tolerance. My wife and I have a friend that she works with that's from that's from Negros Island, about halfway between Bacola and, and, and uh, Filigente, and they come over to eat. She likes spicy food. So Here, when you were... Spicy kind of hit and miss in the Philippines. Some of them do, some of them don't, you know. When you were in Thailand, Gear, did you like the spicy Thai food? No. Uh, no, I couldn't. I can't eat it. But I mean, even when the Thais go and they say pet, 
and you see they sit and sweat and stuff. I mean, like kum yam kum and everything, and they have the extra spices to it. I mean, I don't find it good. I mean, I, I had a tom yam kum soup once. I just had a little bit of the soup on a on a spoon. I couldn't fucking talk for three days. I mean, what's yeah. the point? Yeah, of that? yeah. You, know, yeah. you don't like I anything. It's no spicy. You can't enjoy it. Right, right. And there's a lot of excellent Thai food, which, but you don't, you know, you don't need to go like the ones marked with three chili. You know what I mean? You, I like a little bit of spice, but I I can't do the the, the super spice. And when I see Full blown Thai people are sitting there, and they say, "No pet." It is a Thai word for spicy. When they go there, and you see the sweat is fucking, you know, pouring I mean, off their yeah, face, pouring <laughs> out of their face, and they sit and go pet pet. Then you know it's fucking dynamite. You know, yeah. stay away. Gear, yeah. how how about kimchi? I love no, kimchi. I don't like kimchi. I like sauerkraut, but not the uh, Korean kimchi. No, fuck yeah. that. Yeah, it's too hot. Way too it's hot. Very, very healthy. I love that stuff. Can I can I ask what kimchi? I've heard of it, but I forgot it's, what it is. It's fermented cabbage. It's fermented cabbage, carrots, and daikon. Yeah. Daikon. Yeah. Maria Maria had some in a jar there the other day, um, and she showed it to me. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Sauerkraut, I just forgot what it was. The sauerkraut. Is mm. I can eat sauerkraut. I like sauerkraut. Too. Right, good but proper it, sauerkraut. Yes. Yeah, but the, the German sauerkraut is not the uh, fucking dynamite like the kimchi. Yeah, kimchi has like ten thousand times the of the uh, right. probiotics in it than than uh, yogurt. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure about sauerkraut. I love that stuff too, especially when I have hot dogs. I pour it on there. Yeah, Craig, when I was stationed in Japan, our unit, uh, we had a lot of Asian wives, you know, in our unit, guys married to them, and we had a potluck. And uh, I saw a kimchi, and I heard stories about it, right? And I asked the woman who made it, I said, not hot, right? She said, oh, no, not hot, not hot. Not to them. <laughs> and I took <laughs> one little bite of that, and man, just burned up through my yeah, it's not, stall, not hot to them. my sinuses out. Oh, yeah, it will. I'll have to ask... Maria, when I'm back over the gear, if she's got kimchi again and try, because I've never had kimchi. I've had this air crab, but I've never had the kimchi. Well, get ready for the spicy hot. Hey, I can ha I can hack it, mate. I've got a I've got a bag of that chili powder. I was gonna make homemade kimchi. I mean, yeah, homemade kimchi, but I got a bag of the chili powder from Lee's, but I never did get to get the uh the napa cabbage to do it with. Didn't they say the real kimchi? They like bury it in the ground to ferment it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to make a video. I'm just thinking Wait. of this. There's these noodles that I can get over here in the Sari Sari store, and it's times two, and it, it's it's it blow your head off. Yeah, uh, but I can get it here. I can't get number three. I I I wouldn't be able to handle number three, but I can handle two packets of this. I'm going to make a video of it. I've never found hot Thai food in America. They they got the they got the chili scope the chili uh, deal on top of the menu uh, on top of the recipe or whatever uh -huh. or, or the description. I said, like, uh -huh. give me give me. They had three. Give me five of them. Still wasn't hot. Well, it you can buy it singly or you can buy it in a five pack. And I always get two five packs. It's like seven euro something a five pack, and I always get two. And I. Gave it to Nuvi once. It was Nuvi that put me onto it. She couldn't hack it. And even the black packet, which is times one. And then I had that. And I said, well, is there a hotter one? She said, yeah, I'll get, get you a hotter one. So she bought two packets of the red one. And I ate that. She couldn't touch it at all. She said it's Garrett, too Garrett, hot before, before I forget it, can you hack uh, Vindaloo? Huh? Can you hack Vindaloo? Can you Vindaloo. Indian? You know you have you have korma, you have all different uh, types. I mean, you get to the very spicy Indian, the Vindaloo. Can you hack to eat Vindaloo? I think I made it once. Yes, I, it's in a small jar. It's really dark. 
No, but I mean, it's like it's it's a curry, it's a curry, vindaloo. It's like fucking spicy. I mean, yeah. I, but how it, people it, can actually eat uh, a whole portion of vindaloo is is for me. No, it's a whole meal. It's not like a little thingy. It's a whole meal. You know, like you have chicken tikka masala or mm. chicken korma. Then you can have chicken vindaloo. Okay, I think I made a chicken vindaloo where I put one of these jars in it, or two of these jars in it, and it was very spicy, and it was oh, yeah. more spicy than I thought it was, but I did eat the whole pot. Not at the one serving, but the whole thing over a certain amount of time. Because what I do is I make big pots of stuff, and I put it in the plastic containers, and I freeze them, and then I just make rice or I make chips. Out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I'll do chips one day, throw some of this over it, I'll make rice another day, throw some of this stuff over it. Yes, I think it was chicken vindaloo I made. But I remember it was, the jars were so small, and I'm saying to myself, Shit, they're very small, I think I need a few of those. And I think I put two or three, but my pot is wide, and it's deep. And there was a packet of 10 chicken fillets in it. Hey, Gear, did you ever have some uh, Japanese wasabi mustard? Oh, I love wasabi. I mean, I have it all the time because I, I love sashimi. I mean, I love raw. I mean, I eat sashimi any as much as I can. You know, ahi, salmon, white beef, whatever. I love that, and I have wasabi, and I mix it in the. I mix it with the, the soya sauce. You know, soya sauce and wasabi, and yeah. mix that together. I love it, and then I dip the salmon or I dip the ahi uh, sashimi in it. Oh, fucking! I love it. Now I've had the green wasabi. Is there another yeah, color? The green also? Wasabi, yeah. yeah, but we don't get real wasabi. Well, you um, take that back. We don't get real wasabi here, but you can. It's very expensive. They grow it up in California. There's two guys on a farm. You can grow. buy them now on tubes as well. You can get wasabi. Yeah, and at, at, at the yeah, but Chinese, it's not real wasabi. Chinese. Chinese grocery all, stores. They it's, have all, real... it's all made out of horseradish. It's green colored horseradish if you read the ingredients. Well, if you it's go not to the, but it's... you said you have like a Chinese, you know, grocery store. They have the real stuff there if you, if yeah. you want to pay the pay the price for it. Yeah, probably so. But they I mean, you know, horse, horseradish. We used to have it when we had beef on on like a Sunday roast. We had and have had beef. We have horseradish with that. That's white normally. But horseradish and wasabi is kind of... Very similar. Yeah. Similar but different. I mean, you can yeah. take horseradish and mix it into soya sauce and dip uh, your sashimi in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The same. Because I, I made sure... I, I made last time Kathy brought home some sushi for me. I was told to stop and get me a a tube of that hor that tube of that wasabi, which isn't really wasabi, but it does the trick. It does it for me. And I'll take it and put a little bit tiny bit on each piece of uh sushi and pour some soy sauce on it. Craig, does she ever buy that uh it's called Datu Puti is the brand. It's a uh, oh yeah vinegar yeah, we, vinegar with the chilies inside it. The oh, no, suka. We, get, yeah, we just suka. get we just get the Datu Puti plain uh vinegar and uh and the soy sauce. Yeah, but they have the stuff that has the peppers in the bottle. You yeah, can the see spice. them at the bottom. Yeah, that's that's a hot type of vinegar. It's good though. I'm gonna have to try some. I like all different kinds of vinegars. I love having pickled stuff. I like beets, beets with onions, pickled. You know? Yeah, pickled beets. I love those. Yeah, pickled, pickled okra, pickled. I'll eat just about anything pickled. I've got some good stuff in there. Y'all would probably like if you like olives. I've got some New Orleans olive salad in there. Oh, oh man, that's do olives. good. Oh, it's good. Yeah, when we were talking about pizzas. The only pizza I like is meat pizza. Either give me pepperoni or hot Italian sausage. That's about it. No vegetables and definitely okay. no pineapple or anchovies. <laughs> I like them with the jalapenos and the and the, uh, black olives and the mushrooms and all that stuff. I don't think I ever problem, though, pizza, when you ask pizza them, with jalapenos you ask, on. 
when you when you ask for a pizza with everything, you hardly get a m- much of anything, you know. But yeah, I, I used to eat just a, just a cheese pizza with my anchovies. That was that was delicious. So Gareth, can you get a good pizza in Ireland? Do they have good pizza shops? Oh, he's busy. I've got all the stuff. To, got I've, got all, good pizza shop. I've got all the stuff to make a good pizza crust, but I need to get a I need to get a steel, a big steel to slide in my oven to keep it to get it hot enough to make it properly. Then I, then I want them. Yeah, those stone brick ovens, the real the real pizza ovens, those are the best kind. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not. If you a buy a pizza a, from one of those places, you know it's real. Right. There's just you know, we have so many we have so many <laughs> fantastic Italian native Italian restaurants in London. So you can get like proper fucking Italian pizza, thin crisp, not like the deep and American bullshit, but I mean proper pizza from Italy, you know, and all yeah. made in the proper pizza ovens down from Sicily. They import the ovens from Italy. Uh, to England, to, so it becomes authentic as well. All the ingredients, the oven, everything they have in the proper mom and pop Italian uh, restaurants in uh, London. Yeah, it's nothing like the thick doughy stuff we have here. Yeah, yeah, but I like. Well, they they got they make they sell pizza steels here, and you get two of them. You slide one on the bottom where you're going to cook at, and you slide another one on the top rack, and you leave the oven on for, on high. For like a half an hour to an hour or so, and the, and that steel soaks up all that heat, and then when you slide it in, it's like five or six hundred degrees, and it doesn't take but a few minutes, you know, a couple minutes to cook your pizza, and then it's done right. That's the that's the main thing with with pizza over here is they don't they don't do the crust right. Now you need to have the crust right, and if you go and have like a proper pizza in Italy, in Venice, or in in Florence or whatever. You, you get it, it, it's thin, it's crispy, uh, everything on the pizza is uh, it's runny, you know what I mean? It's like fucking delicious. <laughs> well, fellas, I'm going to bail out. We have, like, bail American, out like, we, have, we have the American style here, we have Domino's, we have Pizza Hut, yeah. We have all of those as well, obviously. It's all, it's all, it really is none of it worth a crap, but it's all we got over here. And well, like I said, unless you do it yourself. But I mean, yeah, pizza, I, want, I mean, uh, Domino's, money, Domino's is much more greasy. I actually, you know, if you want something really greasy, then you go to Domino's. If you want to have something which is a little bit, you know, it's not as greasy, then you do Pizza Hut. Guys, uh, Kiko just saying he's going to head off. He was saying good night. Uh, I don't know off. if you heard. Going to bed, oh, hungry. Night, Kiko. Going to bed hungry. You guys talk about all this food. Oh, man. I'm sorry. My stomach's <laughs> going to be growling tonight. <laughs> Order you a Jolly Bee. <laughs> all right. Have a good evening, fellas. Take care. All right, Kiko. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for stopping Darryl, by. Ronald, oh, give me a right. thumbs up. Don't forget As to say Louisiana. Up. Bye. All righty. Bye, you. <laughs> Later. Yeah, I used to love I used to love going to when I was living in Mainz, going down there and getting those little uh brats with the little mustard and the hard roll. Oh, uh, that was that was delicious just street food, that was delicious. And you're walking around at night, you're walking around at night down the sidewalks and stuff. They had a little window sticking out of a building, just a window be open with a sign on or next to the window, and they sell slices of pizza. Like that thin crust, all oh, it was good stuff. So, Garrett, in Ireland now, in Dublin, I mean, what's the most used takeaway uh, in Ireland? Is it Indian? Uh, is it uh, Chinese? Or is it uh, kebab? To be honest with you, um, uh, Gear, I wouldn't really know. Um, I, I found uh, a chipper. You know what a chipper is. Um, well, fish and chips, obviously. Yeah, yeah. There's Chippy. a chipper in Monkstown. It's about 20 minutes' drive from here. It's putting and in the wood, chipper. And 
uh, on a Monday and a Tuesday, they have a special for kebabs, four ninety nine compared to seven something. So what I normally do is I order ten of them, but they're small. They're not big. Do you know what I mean? They're not like yeah. big, big. That they're small. They're quite small. So I order like ten of them. I'd eat two of them, so that would fill me up. Really and I freeze again? and I freeze the other ones. What is that? What with the don donor kebab with the donor meat, or is it with chicken, or what do you uh, donor. donor donor kebab? Meat. Yeah, uh, there's no, there's no veg in it. There's no veg uh, in it. Can you freeze? Can you freeze those that the yeah. donor? Meat? Yeah, I freeze them. I've, oh, I've eleven. Yeah. I have eleven. Oh, I have eleven kebabs in in the freezer now. So how does that come out when you? You know, I, how I defrost how, them. How is, the, how is the pita bread? How is the bread and everything uh, holding I, up then? I defrost them. Yeah. I put it in the microwave. Yeah. The pita bread is a bit soggy, but it's spicy because all I have in it is just meat and, and lots of nothing, just meat it's and so spicy sauce. Juices. Just spicy sauce. That's it. Oh, yeah. There's nothing else in it. You put so kind of, you don't put cheese in it, is there? Nothing. It's oh. just meat only. Okay. No so veg. Just the, donor, just the donor meat in the pizza bread with spicy sauce. That's it. Okay. And I order ten at a time. <laughs> so when you freeze them, uh, how how long are they good for? Uh, Months. And Deep you just. Freeze. Uh, and you deep, like, is deep, do you take them straight from defrosted? Sorry, no. do you take them straight I from defrost the them. I take them out of the freezer, oh. put them on a plate in the packaging, which is paper with tin foil inside it. And it's got the, the chipper, you know, like the, the chips, the, the rice paper. So yeah. that's around the kebab. Then it's in a, it's in a paper tin foil bag. Yeah. So I let it defrost from the night before. Take them out, put them on the on the plate, stick them in the microwave for a minute and a half, two minutes. Well, I put it in for two minutes. At one minute, I open the kebab because it's defrosted. Then it heat, it cooks inside and gets stops, you know, like kills all the bacteria or whatever. Close it back up and I eat it. It's just a well, do you, bread. Do you straight from the freezer. No. Or do you do you do you do you defrost them first? That's what I just said. You... Yeah, I take yeah. them out of the freezer, defrost them from the night before. Okay. And then yeah. stick them in the microwave. You nuke them. Yep. Do you defrost them in the fridge? No. In the packaging, on the plate, in the kitchen. Oh. Okay. That's it. And if I forget the night before, I take them out in the morning and I let them defrost because I don't usually eat till the afternoon or late afternoon. I never thought about that actually. That you could actually uh, buy the kebab like that. And, uh, and, yeah. uh, but the pita bread is not the pita kind of like the the spicy sauce has kind of like gone into the bread, so it's a bit yeah. soggy. But I like spicy sauce, so it doesn't bother me. Okay. No, so, man. like I said, I put it in for a minute because it's, you know, like whatever. Then I open it up. I open up the thing. So I let the heat go down into the meat. So it's cooked down below. Take it out. It's roasting hot. I have to let it cool down a bit because I can't just eat it straight away. And then I just eat it. Boom. Done. Yeah. Eat two yeah, holes, yeah, Kathy got a little, got a little upset. We got we have one place down here that sells shawarma, and they, What's were, that? they were shawarma. It's like that Arabian or whatever that Middle Eastern thing wrapped up in a. It's supposed to be, I guess, pita, but in the Philippines they wrap them like in flour tortillas almost. Okay. She likes them. We got over here, and it was wrapped up in a pita, and she she wasn't so happy about it. Oh. Shawarma? You've never eaten shawarma? That's why I was asking, because I've never heard of it. It's like meat and vegetables mm. uh, wrapped up in a 
like meat with a little bit of cabbage and onions and stuff mm -hmm. like that wrapped up into a uh, like I a, think that's a kind of a, like a, like a gyro. It's like, like a Moroccan style, like a kebab in a way, isn't it? Is it like a Moroccan Moroccan style? It sounds like uh, Middle Eastern. I had okay. I've been to Poland a few times. I've been to Warsaw. Uh, this was a few years ago. So if I ever go back, I'm going to definitely uh, video it. But I found this kebab place uh, around the corner from the hotel I always stay in. Now, the hotel I stay in is kind of a bit of a kip. It's kind of like, um, a ho kind of like half hotel, half hostel. But you have your own room. Do you know what I mean? The rooms are very small. You have to share the bathrooms in the hallway, as they say. Uh, so you have to use this. You have to share it. Like there's two showers. Like the bathroom is huge. It's huge. It's, it's got two showers in it. Uh, it's got a you know the, the regular urinals for the guys and then the regular toilets. So it's big enough room. Anyway, found this kebab place around the corner, where I thought a kebab was you know in a pita bread. No, it's kind of like they have this flat bread, and. Uh, they put the donor meat, or you can have mixture of chicken and, or was it pork? I can't remember. Anyway, I just get the donor beef. And I said to the guy, look, I don't want the salad. Just put loads of chili sauce into it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's thick. It's thick. It's like that. It's like, yep. it's massive. Now, I ordered two because I, I thought they were small. Oops. I ate one. I couldn't eat the second one. So, you know, like I brought it back to the room. And they have in the in the dining room area, they have a microwave. So what I used to do sometimes, now I didn't eat in the kebab place all the time. I ate in different places. But if I fancy the kebab, I always get two. So I'd have one after being out in the piss all night. And I let the other one stay in the hotel room so it's warm but it's well wrapped up so there's no germs going to get into it it's, i mean it's very well wrapped up and then i just stick it in the microwave the next day and have that for my breakfast <laughs> i don't do the hot sauce when i have it i i use the gar i like the garlic sauce on it uh, the white garlic sauce yeah see I'm if you're the if you're putting if you're putting that into the microwave, it goes oily. That's why I don't get the garlic sauce. Yeah. If you're putting chili sauce, it doesn't go oily. Yeah. It's just this, it's just the chili sauce. I like chili sauce is on my and their chili sauce. Euros, Euros. Their chili sauce is kind of like thick chili sauce. It's kind of like there's bits of tomato in it. So they always give me extra chili sauce. So they put loads of chili sauce in this. Like stuff. a salsa. Yes, it's like a salsa. So there's loads, there's loads of meat, loads of this salsa. And then if you want extra, they give it to you for free anyway. They give you these little tubs. Yeah, so I just open it up, them. open it up, put in the extra salsa, close it back up, stick it in the microwave, and I eat the bloody thing. No problem. You get your sauce on the side. Keep the bread getting too soggy. It's too big to fit into the plastic container. You know, like you could dip it, but yeah. it's too small. So you might as well just throw it in. Because all you could do is, because I mean, it's thick. It's like it's <laughs> yeah. a like thick a, fucking kebab. Like a mucho burrito. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like it's wrapped up like a burrito. But Craig, and do you have in America, like we have it? I mean, I had it the first time actually when i was in hong kong but it's fast food but it's called mongolian barbecue and uh, they opened a few places in london as well i mean mongolian barbecue is fucking fantastic you know you yeah. go in and you get the bowl and you pick and then it's almost like a buffet you pick all sorts of ingredients and you bang it in that bowl it looks like a complete mess then you put a, a, a an uh, egg on top of it, you give it to the chef, and he boxed the whole thing up for you. 
is fucking delicious. Have you ever been to like a Mongolian barbecue place? Never, never. The closest thing they have here like that would be Benihana, that Japanese place, but I don't even think they exist anymore. But yeah, they, they, they don't have that here. I wish they did. It sounds delicious. It is awesome. I mean, and, and it's like it's like healthy, healthy uh, fast food. You know what I mean? Yeah. In, 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 in Hong Kong and many places, you know, in, in London now as well, they have these Mongolian barbecue places and they are really fucking cool. Oh, I've just seen uh, Dice just released a video 49 minutes ago. Chicken Chirion or Chicharon. That's the thing that he was talking about earlier on. He must have filmed it. They have some Mongolian barbecue barbecue place here, but they're not near me. They're all in they're all in uh the Houston area. Oh, okay. Houston, Texas. Yeah. I just looked it up. Yeah, I've never seen it, but yeah, they got them here. But not 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 here where I'm at. If you're ever close to a place like that once, you should at least try it once because it's a quite cool experience. I'll do that. Do you also have another thing like it's full up in Brazil and in Portugal? Uh, she's she's Casteria. You know when you go in and uh, you pay a, just a fixed price, and it's like a it's a whole table of uh, of salads and everything like that. Then you sit at the table. And they come with all sorts of meats, and you can eat as much as you want. And they cut the meat. Uh, it's called a, um, how do I say, chiscasseria. It's a Brazilian thing. Yeah, so you, can, you get French fries as much as you want. They come with all types of different meat and chicken and everything on the skewers that they cut at the table. And, you know, when you sort of would like to have a break, you put uh, like a um, a red thing uh, next to your plate, and it means that just skip me for this round, and uh, you turn it to uh, green, and that means that you want more. It's it's very very cool. Oh uh, yeah, I love I, I, I love it. Down here, we used to have a place called Poncho's Mexican food, and they had a flagpole on the table with a little flag. And it was like four ninety nine, all you could eat buffet, and you didn't even have to get out to play. You went up the first time and filled your plate up and came to your table. And when you ran out of food, you raised the flag up, and a waiter come right over there and grab you, or bring another plate and grab the empty plate. And it was just rotating, and you get drunk at night and go sit there for three hours and stumble out miserable. And they served beer too. That was nice, but the Mongolian and stuff like that, we, we just don't have here. We have a, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of casinos here. And they used to have big buffets with all kinds of stuff. But when COVID hit, they closed all that down. And they, it's the way prices of food went up, they probably never opened them back up. Not the buffets. You can still go and eat, but the buffets aren't there anymore. Do you still have uh, all these uh, fucking breakfast places uh, uh, around where you live? You know, where they go in and have like stacks of pancakes and syrup and all that shit for breakfast and all, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, we still have the Waffle House and the International House of Pancakes yeah. and, and a few places that will serve breakfast. Yeah. I never, I never really understood how you can go and have these big waffles and pancakes uh, with all that just for breakfast. But yeah. That's that's heavy shit. <laughs> it really is. You get three kinds of bait, three kinds of meat, you know, and, and eggs to order and all that stuff, and the hash browns. I just bacon, bacon, sausage, and and two hey, different right. two different types of sausage and bacon or whatever, and ham. Yeah. I just, uh, I've never really been a big big breakfast person anyway i did i if i was staying in a hotel you know like if it's included in the price whatever i get the hotel for 
I would get my ass out of bed and probably go down and eat something. I remember I was in Dallas once. Now, don't ask me what hotel I was staying, but I was in Dallas for a couple of days and they had a buffet breakfast. And me and my mates uh, from Ireland, JR, <laughs> his nickname was JR. We're in fucking Dallas. <laughs> anyway, yeah. we uh, go out in the piss the night before. <laughs> so we fly into Dallas from Dublin. We uh, get a taxi to the hotel. Um, so the hotel was already booked and paid for um, for two nights. Uh, went out in the piss. So we started off in the bar in the hotel because we didn't know the town. So started off there, chatting away with the barman because it was kind of late when we got in the hotel. So we closed the bar in the hotel. My mate was bollocks. So I put him, <laughs> I put him to bed in his room. So I went back downstairs, chatting away with the barman, and the barman says, "Do you fancy going to a club?" And I says, "Yeah, cool." Thinking it was a nightclub, it's a fucking strip bar. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to this, we get in it, and I thought we were walking to the place because we weren't in the middle of nowhere. He says, "Oh, we have to get a taxi." And I said, "Okay, cool, get a taxi." So. I've never met this guy before, but he's a barman in my hotel, so he, he knows I'm a resident, so you have to trust him, you know what I mean? And we got on well when when, when we were in the bar. So we went to this strip joint, <coughs> and I've never been in a strip joint. Well, Americans love taking farm, foreigners out and showing them the world and shocking the shit out of them. <laughs> anyway, so <coughs> I have no cash, I just have my credit cards. So uh, we go to a table. Oh no, we had to pay to get in. Yeah, had to pay to get in. And she says, "Are you going to have drinks? And do you want to leave your credit card open?" And I said, "Yeah, can I do that?" She says, "Yeah, yeah, no problem." So she says, "So we hold on to your card, whatever." I said, "Yeah, fine." Grant, I go to the table with your man. We're having drinks. Girls are stopping by, but I'm not interested in that shit. So. I get kind of like gee eyed in, 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 in this strip bar and where I'm seeing double. So I got the taxi driver's business card. Cause what? Did you see double? Did you see women with the four pair of with, with Yeah, four probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so I had got the, because the, the barman lived somewhere else, whatever. So he was making his own way home. So I had the business card of uh, my driver that picked me up from the hotel, brought, brought us to this place. Uh, so paid the bill and I said, would there be any chance you could ring this taxi driver for me? He brought me here and I'm not familiar with Dallas and I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. So she calls the driver, the driver picks me up. He knows where I'm going. So I says to him, is there any drive throughs are open? I don't know what time it is, three or four in the morning or whatever. I don't know what time it was. So we go to a drive through get food, go back to the hotel, pay them. Um, I must have had cash because I paid them in cash for the driver. Anyway, yeah, so I must have had cash. Uh, back to the hotel, ate half of whatever I got. I was bollocks. So... I think breakfast was till 10 o'clock in the morning. So I'd set my alarm clock or a wake up call or something. I don't know. So I get up the next morning. I'm hanging, hanging. <laughs> I'm in deep shit, man. I'm in oh, bad. So I said, look, I know American food is great and all this kind of stuff. It's a buffet breakfast. There's, there's got to be stuff there. I like whatever. So I went down. There's JR. And he says, what happened to you last night? And I told him, oh, yeah, I went to this strip joint. And he says, what? I said, yeah, you went to a strip joint? I said, yeah, I had a great night. Da, 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 da. Got some food. I saw the food, you know, like I only ate half of it. And it was still on the fucking table in the room. So I just fucked it in the bin. Went down for breakfast. Had a big breakfast. Lots of coffee. He'd organized, because uh, I had said to him, during the night, it says, look, 
I want to go to this place. I want to go to this place. I want. To, I wanted to go to South Fork. I wanted to see South Fork. You know the program Dallas. I went there once. I, I didn't go in. I just sat on the side of the road because the buddy. It was. It, it was closed, so it was during the winter. I think it was January, February. I was very like impressed that. by the size of the buffaloes in the yard. Uh, bison. I mean. Yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, there was frost on the ground anyway. Um, so we got as far as the gate and saw the gate, took pictures, you know, did the usual tourist right. thing. Yeah. So JR worked for Motorola. And he said he'd been in Dallas on business before, so he knew this place where we could get cowboy boots. So we went to this cowboy big f fucking... Uh, it was like a, where, a huge big warehouse... Like, it's a commercial building. It doesn't look like a place where you can buy stuff. You wouldn't think yeah. you could buy stuff that you can walk in off the street. So we turn up in this stretch limo. <laughs> We're walking towards these glass doors. Somebody opens the door. Sir, uh, can we help you, sir? Da -da -da -da. Yeah, we're in to buy some boots. He says, oh, absolutely. I'll get one of our salespeople. Would you like a drink? And I said, what? Coke, something? No, if, if you like something, beer, we have whiskey, we got this, we got that, <laughs> champagne if you want, whatever. So says, I'll take a beer. <laughs> so we're walking around and we have this sales guy, one guy for the two of us. And we're going different aisles, different aisles. <coughs> and there's so many cowboy boots, so many different colors different brands different skins different whatever and i saw these boots in a glass cabinet four thousand dollars for a pair of boots yep crocodile skin they get really expensive some of them do four thousand dollars for a pair of boots it's like real stetson hats they get way up there too well, I don't think there was Stetson hats, but it was it was full of cowboy boots. I mean, there was rows yeah, and rows, right, yeah. shelves with rows and rows of cowboy boots. So my mates got kangaroo skin boots, and I got goat skin boots. And I was thinking, oh, I'm only going to spend a hundred bucks on a pair, of, you know, leather cowboy boots. I think it's paid three or four hundred dollars for them or something like this. I can't remember. So we had our beer took our time sitting on the couch testing different boots pick the boots pay for the boots i forgot the sales tax on top of the thing because i was thinking okay, we'll say my boots were 400 and then when you go to pay it's 425 i yeah. forgot there's a sales tax or whatever you guys put on top anyway it was going on my credit card anyway it didn't matter so uh, jr says uh, what do you want to do next and i says well What's there good to see? I said, oh, yeah, there's this big shopping mall that I've seen on Dallas. It's got a hotel. So it's got an archway. There's an entrance of a hotel at the side, and it leads into a mall. And I remember seeing it on Dallas on one of the episodes or a few episodes, whatever. I want to go there. So the JR told the driver where we were going. So the driver brings us into the archway, gets out of the car, opens the door for us, and then we walk in. So I said to the driver, I said, look, because he was a nice lad, and he was very, you know, talk with us, whatever. Look, uh, park the car and join us. We'll get something to eat. Don't know, we're going to walk around, whatever. And he says, oh, no, that's okay. No, I'll stay with the car. I said, no, come on join us okay i'll come in so we're walking around the mall with our driver and uh thank god he wasn't wearing a hat that would have looked a bit stupid he was wearing a suit but he didn't have to wear the fuck he, well, he didn't have one anyway uh so we had a great time with him and we were in there for hours hours so the driver said to us well do you know how long you're hiring the car for don't know. We'll, we'll we'll finish when we finish. Is that a problem? I said no, no. I just I just need to tell my boss. So he went off and uh, he said I'll park near the archway. 
as soon as I see you guys up, just start, stand there and I'll pull the car around. So me and JR went off around different shops and whatever. And there's a nice rink at the bottom of the, the bottom of the the mall. It's like three or four or five stories. This mall. It's Mall of America. It might be. That, that, yeah, it was called the Mall of America. I'm not sure about Dallas. It was Mall of America. And it had a big five star hotel in it. Oh. Didn't win the hotel. Anyway, went shopping, did our things, da 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 da. And then we had the car brought us back, whatever time. And then um, I think I paid credit card for the car or whatever. But you got a I big think... shock at the end of the month. When you got no, 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 no. It didn't get I, I knew it was going to be expensive. I knew it was going to be expensive, but it was worth it anyway. I paid for the car anyway. Uh, I told JR it was my tree. So, and then we flew to Mexico the next day for two weeks. I was with the Mexico girl the first week, and I was with a Yank the second week. <laughs> and I was in a one-bedroom apartment with JR, and it was only a one-bedroom, so JR had to sleep on the couch bed. But it was a big, big couch, very comfortable. You roll it out, da da da, very plush. So this, my old man said to me, the second week they're going to move you. And I said, well, do you think we'll get a two-bedroom? He says, I don't know what you'll get, but you'll be moved. It was timeshare. Wow. And uh, guess what they put us in for the second week? Wow. A two-bedroom penthouse <laughs> with a private jacuzzi, remote-controlled, for the air conditioning, a huge big kitchen, huge big living room, huge big bathrooms. Man. I had ensuite. I had the big room, <laughs> of course. And Jay had, had a huge big room, but didn't have a, a, a bathroom or anything. But there was another bathroom. It had a washing machine in it, had a coffee maker in it, had a huge big fridge, huge big TV. And you had a pool view. And you had a sea view. So if you looked out one side and doors, you had a sea view. And if you looked out the other side and doors, you have a pool view. So we were in a penthouse for the second week. Man. So by it's week like by the time, double oh seven. Oh man, this was plush. This was five star at a huge big jacuzzi outside looking over the beach. So we had got to know other people that were staying in the hotel. So we had a party in our apartment with about a dozen people that were staying in the place. And somebody said that they know how to make cocktails and all this kind of stuff. So we got bottles of this and bottles of that and ice and whatever. We had a party in the apartment. <laughs> had a great old time. Fucking oh, deadly. Oh, it was comical. Anyway, that's my story. Yeah, I went to Dallas that time. I wasn't, more, I, I wasn't interested in Dallas, I, but buddy, what I was going to school with, he went up in there and did, did the tour and everything. And the only thing I told him, I gave him like fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. I said, pick my mom up a coffee mug. So my mom got a coffee mug from uh, from South Fork. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we also went to the Book Depository Museum. We went in there where Kenny, yeah, uh, where JK, JFK supposedly got shot from. Saw that, but you weren't allowed to take pictures. You couldn't take a camera in. It had to go into uh, uh, a locker, into oh. a locker. Oh. Or no, it, it went into because there was a glass thing where you pay, yeah. and then you there was a like a book of thing with a where your man pulls it in and takes oh, whatever. Yeah. It, I think that's where it where it went to. Like into a bank, it. anyway. Those, like a bank has those slide out trays. Yeah, whatever. for the drive through banks. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's why how our day got longer with the limo. But anyway, it was it was an experience, and I'd never been in a limo before, so either a D. So all good. Yeah, Texas women are some of the friendliest women in the world. Uh, we only had two. We only had two nights there, so we didn't meet any women. We were there, except I kind of met some strippers. But I don't know who the fuck they were. 
anyway, I wasn't interested. Anyway, yeah. I wasn't paying for it. So I wasn't buying them any drinks because I knew it would be expensive. <laughs> oh, you know it. You'd be buying, you'd be buying high price soda, soda water. I think most of them don't drink. They just, it's all, or if they do, it's just watered way down. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't stupid. I wasn't, I yeah. wasn't born yesterday. So, and I mean, I'd never been in one, but I see it on TV. But hey, it's an experience. <coughs> I think the girls were good looking. I don't know. Can't remember. Because by the time I left, I was seeing double. <laughs> I don't even know how I signed for my check. Because <laughs> I had to pay. Because it was the old way, the credit cards, where they put the piece of paper in it and your credit card yeah. on it and they slide it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then, you know, you yeah, have to sign for it. Oh, I don't even know. The yellow, the pink, and the white sheet with the carbon. It was a, It was a, white, it was like underneath. rice paper. I think the top was rice paper. Or yeah, that's for you. Different pages, whatever, something like yeah, that. That's yeah, that's for you. Yeah. I think the pink yeah, copy yeah. is for the business, and the, and the yellow copy is for the tax man. Oh, okay. For the books, for the bookkeeper. Right. I'm like, okay. Yeah. It was an experience. Michael is saying Galleria Mall. Don't know. That sounds like Mar the Mall of America is in Minneapolis, I think. Minnesota. I could have sworn they said. Uh, the Galleria the sound, sounds pretty about right. Gallery. Well, it has a hotel attached to it. And the entrance was near the front, was by the entrance of the, the mall. Because when you drive into the archway, because you have a huge big car park out here, the car comes in like this. You come in, on, in under the archway. You get out of your car. The entrance of the hotel was kind of like, when you get out of the car, you turn left, or you look left, and it's over there. And then if you want to go into the mall, where there's big, wide open glass doors, and you walk into the mall that way. But I thought it was the Mall of America. Or maybe I picked it up later on during the years. Forgotten the name. Anyway. No, it was in Dallas. I was in. Oh. That's what I was saying. I went to South Fork, where they made the series Dallas. Yeah, no, I know that. I heard of that. Is that it? That's the gallery in uh, Dallas. Okay, maybe it was that place. This was in the 80s when I was there. Yeah. Could have changed so, the in that I, remember, I, I remember it had loads of floors. That one's got Can, like four floors. Would, like. would, 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 would you have a picture of the front of the mall? Let me, let me see if I can find one. Because I remember I had an archway, if I remember right. And there was a hotel right there. Main entrance probably, huh? Yes, by the main entrance. It was definitely in the 80s when I was there. Don't ask me what year, but it was in the 80s. Yeah. Definitely in the 80s. It's before I got my green card to the States, because I got that in 89, so it could have been 86, 87, I don't know. Or 85, I don't know. can't remember. But I was old enough to drink. I was over 21. I think I got carded. I can't remember. I know I got carded in Florida when I was in my early 30s. I think I was 31, 32 in the supermarket, and the girl carded was, me. Was it this one, was it? Uh, no. No, it was a proper archway. Okay. It's where a limo pulls in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. So you're undercover. So if it's raining out, you're undercover. But the limos pull in there. They can't park there. But they can park very close to the door. And the car park is big. And there's a big Paris, hotel yeah. there.
Dice, are you still there? Uh, me? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Daryl, are you still there? Uh, Ronald, are you still talking with Jonah? At 20 to 4 in the morning? Well, 20 to 4 here. <clears throat> what is it? 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, oh. 11. 11.41 in, in Philippines. We're in my lunch in lunchtime in uh, Donna Land. It's 11, 5, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11.42. It's 11.42 there. What's the time here? It's 3.42, mate. You're kidding me. No. Oh, well, I, I know you're not kidding me, but... Mm -hmm. That's why I was counted at eight hours. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I've been live uh, six hours, 40 minutes. <laughs> Mind you. That's uh, part of uh, your uh, record. Pardon? It's part of your record of how many hours? 14. 14. 14. Damn. That was the night what? when uh, Robert went off on you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not seeing it, but they got a damn Lamborghini, uh, Rolls Royce, uh, Ferrari dealership in the damn mall. Don't know. Don't it's know. insane. You got to be rather wealthy to even walk in the door, I imagine. Yeah, it had expensive shops in the place, and it had an ice rink at the bottom, and it had a food court. The food court was on the bottom level as well. This one, this one, you have a oh, miniature golf outside. Uh, I didn't see that. We only went in the front door and out the front door, so didn't see any, didn't yeah. go out any other exits. Right, I don't, I don't see the But I remember it had different levels. Yeah, they, they didn't put, they, they don't show a picture of the outside the front, front outside of the mall. Well, it was in the, the show Dallas. That's how I knew about it. Yeah. Because that's what I said to JR, and JR explained it to the driver, and the driver knew it. And when we got there, it was the right place. <coughs> anyway, the driver and the, the, those guys know everything anyway. He was a great talker, telling us different things and whatever. And we were treated like kings. <laughs> So it was a good experience. My only, oh no, my, I've only been in a limo twice. One in the States and one here. Anyway, on that minute, I'm going to go for cigarettes. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. I'll leave you with gear. Yeah, okay. I don't want to have a yeah, well, I'm. I want a cigarette. <laughs> anyway, I'll be I back in a couple of minutes. But you didn't have one of those stupid uh, New Year resolutions of stopping. No. No. I'm not into that shit. Never did. No. Anyway, back in a minute. What's the time? Uh, what's the, the time uh, over at your place, Mark Oh, let me look. About 10, 10 p.m., 9 p.m.? 9.45. 9.45, eh? Yeah. I'll bet you going to hook one. You had dinner already? Huh? You had, din you had Saturday, you had dinner already? I'm sorry, I still didn't understand you. Oh, you had dinner already. You had supper already. Oh, no, I haven't eaten yet. I'm going to eat a little bit before I go to bed. But I, He's on diet. <laughs> yeah, she put me on diet. But I'm not hungry. I'm, He's on diet. I've been taking a lot of these keto keto capsules. And it all it goes with, I'm trying to lose some weight, seriously, because I'm way overweight, not getting exercise and stuff. But I got a little something I'm going to eat later. I'm just not hungry right this moment. Oh, okay. 
She is eating. Oh, yeah, I guess. A Filipino has a need to have food. Oh, yeah. And she might gain a pound every now and then, and then lose two pounds, but she, uh, she she never gets any bigger than she is. So have you been uh, back to the clinic yet? Uh, where uh, you know when you were driving on the live stream, when you were driving along the coastline and up to the 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 base and stuff? Have you been back in that direction lately? Or? Um, we we go every now and then when I have an appointment over in Gulfport. We ride down the beach, and I think we've been back to the base once or twice since then, but we don't go all the time. That was back when I was having hyperbaric treatment. I, yeah. we, went every, we went every day for that. And the last, oh. time, last time I saw my doctor, he, he said he wants to set me up an appointment with the plastic surgeon so that they can, they can close my hips back up because I got two holes in my hips. And they're going to see if they can get me off the antibiotics, uh, get the plastic surgeon to get rid of the scar tissue, and he'll put close me back up on my hips and then, okay. uh, and try to get me off the antibiotics. I might ask them to put me back in the hyperbaric during, during after, right after they get the surgery so that it'll help it heal up quicker and heal up thoroughly. Is that VA or? Yeah, yeah. You get good treatment. Pretty good. They haven't fixed me, but they spent a whole lot of money in the process. They could they they could fix me if they wanted to, but they they want. I went to New Orleans about a year and a half ago, and the doctors that wanted to work on me said they were going to take all the parts out and leave them out. I'm not going to put nothing back. That then I'd be flopping from a from a waist down. I told them not. Nah, that's a bridge too far. I can't I can't go there. So originally they said they were gonna take everything out, leave me out, leave me, leave me with everything out for about a month and a half to cure the kill the infection. And then they come up with that. I said, no, I'm I'm not, I just bridged too far. So now I'm, they're gonna they're gonna close me back up to get it all healed up good and then go in later when it's all healed up to, to go in and work on the hips. But I gotta get off these antibiotics. I've been on these IV antibiotics. More than oh, yeah. a year. I take I take four of these a day. What is that? IV antibiotics. Oh, you have to. It's an inhaler. No, it goes, it goes right in my arm. Oh, Jesus! Four of these a day. Wow. And they're like nine hundred dollars a bag. Holy shit! Yeah. Holy shit. And I've been on them for over a year. Over a year and a half now. I know it's wrecking the shit out of my damn immune system. But I got, you know. It's seven days a yeah, week. I got a, I got a pick line that goes up. It goes up my arm and drops in right over my heart. And it, it goes up and comes yep. right in over my heart and, and pushes it into my heart. Too. And it spreads it all through the body. Oh, for those seven days a week. Yep, seven days a week, every day. That's oh. that's one reason why I haven't been able to drink. Like I said, I'll stop and drink a beer or two every now and then. But when I do that, like on a holiday, when I did that, I quit. I didn't take the antibiotic that night or that morning. I'd skip a day of antibiotics because I didn't want to. It wasn't going to yeah. really take them anyway, you know, with the alcohol. Yeah, but and I don't I don't drink that much any, anymore anyway, but. Being on this, it doesn't help to be drinking, so it doesn't bother me. But it bothers me being on these damn bags all the time, because sooner or later they're gonna lose effect. You know, they're not gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not gonna work when you need them to. Yeah, absolutely. And um, did your doctor say you have to do that for the rest of your life? No, no. I'm supposed to supposed to be trying to help me kick this infection. The problem is though, is I know how they can do it. They can go in here and take all the hardware out of me. Okay. And they took like, all. What, what, what do you mean? What do you mean back. hardware? I got artificial hips. Okay. And the, what happens is the bacteria builds up around the steel, and the and the and the and the, the artificial joints and stuff, and it's and it makes us 
it makes like a slimy skim coating over it to protect itself mm. so that the antibiotics don't get it all out. Right. And what they got to do is they got to take all the hardware out, leave me in the bed for about 30 to 60 days, pump me full of these antibiotics and kill the infection that way. Because when they kill the infection this way, there's still a little bit of bacteria in there. And when they take me off the IV, when they take me off the antibiotics, it just goes back a month again. Or two, within a month or two, the bacteria is done growing back, and I'm back in the same situation. Yeah, so, but they won't, but they won't listen to me because I'm a smart ass because I know what I'm talking about. No, 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 we don't have to fix you. You know how to kill you. <laughs> so why don't you just say I, I want it done this way? I've told well, them that. How, how, told how them long? Five or six times they don't listen. They don't know. Uh, but how long have you been doing this situation now? About eighteen months. Okay, and if it's yeah. not working, well, then you need to say. Well, well it, I mean, it's keeping it down, but yeah, exactly. The only problem, though, is that too is that all the outside doctors that would do it, the VA doesn't pay them enough to do it. So you would have if, to pay. Yeah, the the VA the VA the VA doesn't reimburse them what they would normally get or what a regular insurance would get them. Yeah, and I can't afford it's about it'd probably be a couple hundred thousand dollars to get one hip done. What? Yeah. And if you get both of them, yeah, it'd be I just nearly half, I, I just, a, I, nearly half a million. Yeah, I just don't have the funds to do that, you know. I just no. don't. So can you not just kind of like search around the country to see if somebody can do it? Yeah, I've, I've done that already, and now it's very far and few between. And the, and the place that can do it, they don't want to send me to. So I don't know. I mean, and the, my my last doctor, he was a he was a oncologist. What was it, uh, a uh, orthopedic oncologist? He worked with people with bone cancers and stuff like that because he had more tools in his chest chest than, than a regular orthopedic surgeon did. And uh, I went over there and he told me, yep, he hasn't called me back because he realized what the VA was going to pay him. But at first he told me, yeah, we can get this on that done. And your situation, this was a year and a half ago, the way you're sitting right now, if I get everything put back together, it'll take you about a year, year and a half to be able to walk again because your, your muscles are so atrophied and all that stuff. It'll take you that long just to be able to walk and therapy and stuff. I said, damn it. And that's probably to walk with a cane. He said, you're never going to walk on your own or run again. So forget that. So basically, you're going to never make it back to the Philippines then? Probably not. Not unless a miracle happens. And what's the chances of that? <laughs> In this day and age. <laughs> One in a zillion. <laughs> but. Oh, really sorry to hear that, Craig. Ah, life goes on, you know. I I roll with the punches. Yeah. We still keep out hope, but I'm not expecting much. Is it painful? Or... Okay. Kathy said she'll push me. The only, only problem though, only problem though, is that the Philippines is not hand, hand, handicap friendly. No, I know. I've seen. Not that I've been there, but I've seen on enough videos. Yeah. No. Even with an electric wheelchair, it wouldn't even be that good because their footpaths are shit. Yeah. Too narrow, broken up. The roads are shit. Right. And there ain't no, there ain't no roll down curbs anywhere you go. Nope. Nope. You could, the only place you could be living in is like Metro, like BGC or uh, Makati. Yeah. That's it, basically. And Forget that's about that's too many people for me, yeah. Yeah, but that would be the only place you could hang out properly, you know, like which would be wheelchair accessible. Right. Forget about the provinces. It doesn't have to be on the first floor because if anything happened, the power went out, an earthquake or anything like that, I couldn't could use the elevator, you know. Shit, yeah. Forget about that. <laughs> but I, I would say the like if you were a millionaire, you could afford a five star hotel and oh yeah. They would have generators in their hotels anyway for brownouts. They oh, yeah. have to. They'd have to because if they're charging say like five, six, seven thousand dollars a night for a room, they'd want to have twenty four hour electricity 
they would have to have generators. Yeah. So I was. They put me in the hospital in the Philippines before I came back, and I spent a good six months in Cebu Doctors Hospital. The VA was paying for it, and it kind of pissed me off because I was helping to get. I was hoping to get help, and it, towards the very end, the doctor said, "Oh, don't worry about it. The VA's paying for it." That's when it clicked in my head. Damn, you ain't fixing me. You're just collecting the damn money. And it was, it was something else. And it, was, it ended up being like a million pesos for the, for the six months, which is cheap by American standards. 1.9 million pesos. I'm sorry. 1.9. So 2 million, 2 million then. Yeah. 2 million. Can we see what that is? Forty thousand U.S. dollars. Oh. The VA paid for it. I think we paid. We paid like what? Fifty thousand. We paid fifty thousand out of our pocket. It would. Be... I, 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 I snuck out the hospital. I, I, I broke. I got out the hospital. I because I, I, I went downstairs one day to smoke a cigarette. I said, I'm tired of this shit. I, I went downstairs to smoke a cigarette. And I was out of cigarettes, and the guards were standing right there by the door. You know, you got to pay to get out the hospital in the Philippines. They don't let you just go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're holding the hostage. Well, I, I went down there, and they had like a 7-Eleven, like a half a block down the street. And I said, man, I'll be right back. I'm going to give me a Coke and, and pack cigarettes. Okay, sir. I went down to 7-Eleven. Kathy come back. Kathy was at her mom. She wasn't there. She, she wouldn't have let me do it. And she got out the cab to come back to, to come back to the hospital. I'm sitting up there drinking a Coke and having a cigarette. Hey, baby. She's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? She, 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 she's like major criminal. She's ducking me down, trying to get a flag down a taxi to shove me into the car and shit. She called her mom. Mom, mom, Craig escaped. What? <laughs> she, went, she went back to the hospital about six, about five hours later. What the hell happened to my husband? He's not in my room. <laughs> they were all scrambling around everything. Yeah, I was crazy. <laughs> Oh, you give me a half a chance. I'll escape this shit. You ain't holding me down. <laughs> Fair play to you. Fair play to you. Yeah, because what happened back then, it was when Obama was president, I think. Yeah, and the VA wasn't going to, the, the Congress wasn't going to re renew the military budget or something like that. And the VA checks were going to be cut off and everything else. Well, the doctors over there heard about it on TV or something on the news. And the doctor came in and told me, well, sir, we can't keep you any longer unless you want to pay your own bill. Mm -hmm. I said, no, but I'm out of here. <laughs> and they wanted that They wanted that money right up front. After I escaped, she went back and paid the 50,000, 56,000, something like that to, to clear, clear, the, clear the bill. But I was there for a good two months. Jesus. What was I going to say? Uh, I mean, six it, months. If 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 I remember right, uh, Trump said he was pumping a shitload of money into the VA. Is that correct? Yeah, but it ain't but it ain't the way he said it is. They said you got you got outpatient care where you go anywhere, community service or whatever, community care, but it's got to be okay by the VA first. They won't they they won't pay for it if it isn't if it isn't their idea. Right. But do you I've got trouble. I've got. They're ruining my credit now because I go to the doctor and I tell them who's paying for it. Okay, no problem. No, no problem. And they send me the damn bill. And I tell them, look, you got, you got to call me. I call the VA and let them know and everything. A couple of them, and they go ahead and pay it. A couple of them slip by me, and I get reports on my credit, bill owed, and all this other shit. I, and I, I dispute it with the with the with the credit bureau. But I told them, look, man, I told them. Send the bill to the VA. Don't send it to me. Mm -hmm. I've gotten by a couple of them, but a couple of them are still hanging on my credit report that's messing me up. And they're still trying to work it out that the VA need to approve it and pay them off. Yeah. yeah. So and that kind of like fucks up your credit rating a bit. Right. Yeah. And I've got and they, in the middle of it, they put this TRICARE West in between the VA. And the, and, the, and the doctor, which screws everything. It's just another big, giant bureaucracy you got to go through with 10 times more paperwork. It makes everything more difficult than ever. Mm. So the stuff that Trump was saying that he was pumping money into the VA was 
all out air? No, he pumped money into it, but it just didn't. And it's not working the way that he wanted to work because there's a lot of crooked people in the VA too. And they'll say yes, or they give you lip service and they'll turn around and do it to hell. They're because used to didn't, he, didn't he appoint a guy to the VA? Yeah. An outsider who was not tied up in the, in the government before? Yeah, I think a veteran. Um, I can't remember. I think I only remember that he said that it was a guy that was not part of the VA or something. I'll tell you what, man. Once they get to Washington, they're done. All of them get corrupted. Yeah. And I know Trump was, uh, like, he's not a good guy, but I thought he was doing a lot of good stuff for the, for the state. That's why, that's why he got kicked out. <clears throat> because of, he wasn't following there. He wasn't following their game plan. No, I know he wasn't the type to follow their game plan. And, and they don't they don't like that one bit. No, I know that. <laughs> I knew that. But well, they had they had they had Germany and 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 uh, Germany and Ireland and uh, China. And I think Thailand. All of them got together and put into that shit. They sent them down. China sent them boat machines. Uh, well, but you know, do you think you'll get in twenty twenty four? I don't know. I doubt 50, it. Fifty. If they don't fix the voting deal, they won't, no, no, no. I don't think any more Republicans will win. Congress is trying to pass a deal now to where, if if you're not of the same moral character or you don't fit into their club. They don't want you to be elected for anything anyway. So it's. But isn't it later this year, the Congress and the Senate up for grabs? Yeah. And if, the Republicans, and if the Republicans take over the House and Congress, doesn't yeah. it make it harder for the Democrats to do the shit they've been doing already? Yeah. And doesn't that help Trump? to possibly win the 2024 election because they're in charge? It depends. If the, if the, if the voting still, if the voting still is, if the voting machines and everybody's still so corrupt, nobody, he, he'll never win. But, uh, well, do you think the Republicans will sort it out because they're in power? They've got two years to sort it out? No. Two years isn't long enough? Republicans are spineless. The, the, the Democrats get in there now. They're now they're talking about socialist, communist, or whatever is what mm -hmm. they want to become. And the Democrats get in there and do whatever the hell they want to screw the whole world. A, re a Republican gets in there and he gets called dirty names, a spineless son of a bitch, and he bends over and lets them have it away anyway. So it's just it's ridiculous. Yeah, but you know, like even though he's not the president anymore, he's head of the Republican Party still. And he's got that uh, pull. He's got oh, yeah. that it was all, power. It was, all, it was all on a fair and square. He get voted in right away. But I don't know. I don't know because of. But what I'm trying to say. But what I'm trying to say is, if the Republicans get the House and meaning gets the Congress and Senate, yeah, he's basically well. He's head of the Republican Party, so he's the boss of the Republican Party. Yeah. He could tell these Republican senators and uh, Congress people, look, you know what's been happening in the last two years. You know what I did the first four years. Yeah, okay, I didn't follow the rules and certain things. Look, let's make a deal to make a deal to make a deal. Yeah. Get wow. me back in for another four years. Let's get this shit together. Let's, you know, like, let's do our job. Let's you know, like, come on. Yeah, I don't know. Look, put it this way. I would, uh, if it was me, I would say, like, if I was Trump, I'd say, look, get me in. I'm going to not be the type of person I was the first four years because I've only got four years to do this. In my head, I'm saying I still want to help myself out to not be in trouble with the Justice Department. That's yeah. going to happen anyway. <coughs> uh, Let's try and 
because I've been saying, let's make America great again. I've been saying it, been saying it, been saying it, still saying it, still saying it. So let's Republicans, let's get this shit together. Let's make this country great again. We did somewhat of a good job the first four years. Let's make another four years. Then we can pick somebody who is good for the, the party to be head of the Republican Party to run in 2028. Yeah? And that's the way I play it. But no, it, it won't if you get way. me but if you get me in in 2024, I'll listen to you better and I won't argue as much. But that's and I promise you that. See, that's, that's the problem. That's, that's the problem, problem though. See, you can't compromise with, 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 with Democrats. No, fuck them. You can't compromise with them. No, and the well, only way to go around him is hardball like he did the first time. Yeah, yeah, but he... See, hard, he, he, he the, Democrat, still, the Democratic Party now, or the Republican Party now, is where the Democrats were back in the 60s. Mm. They keep slowly dragging you to the left, to the left, to the left, till you go off the cliff. And they won't have it any other way. They just refuse to compromise. The only compromise for them is you surrendering. That's it. That. You know, and, then, and that's the only way you can deal with them is hard. And the problem is, too, is Trump picked the worst people in the world to be around him. They were, I mean, they were, I mean, do you remember he was saying I was going to have the best cabinet and when I didn't say those words? Well, he never got says, I have the best too. guys. I have the best guys to do this. Yeah. Sure, they were fucking idiots. Yep. I mean, his, his attorney, his uh, attorney general, you know, the Not United dying. States Attorney General. Man, it, what the fuck? I know, right? <laughs> he didn't back him up. He had to He had to excuse himself because it was a conflict of interest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's the point of having him in the job in the first he, place? He shouldn't do that before he ever said yes. Yeah. yeah, he should have known that before he appointed him or even put him up for the job. Besides that. The thing that they got him on was something so simple. They said you were talking to some Russians in your office before you got. Let, let hear me out. Before you took this position, before you left your congressman position and took over this attorney general, but every member of Congress must always talk to the Russians when they visit. So I don't know why this guy reclused himself. He's an idiot. Spineless. He's- he should have been and, fired and, straight. And, and, he should, I mean, he so, used himself. He should have fired. Trump should have yeah. fired him there and then. He, he should have resigned himself in order to put somebody in there to help the party out and got a different position somewhere else. Right, Nancy Pelosi, the queen of the queen of the Russia Gate or whatever the hell it is, she probably owns a freaking vodka brewing company distillery in Russia. Yeah, much of that bitch, that bitch drinks like a fish. I've seen Man, it you, you, the top. You, if you look at it, the Democrats, you know, they are meant to be for, you know, the leftists or whatever, the, the weak people and whatever. But, you know, they are fucking just looking. I mean, look at Pelosi. She's worth $140 million. Look exactly. at the other career politicians. From they are like, like the fucking son of Biden and Biden and whatever. They are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. They haven't yeah. made that being in fucking Congress for 50 years. Yeah, all from insider trading, Gary. Yeah, huh? I know that. They, I got know some, that. they got some college kids here now that follow Nancy Pelosi. And every time she makes a stock trade, they jump on it and make the same trades with her. They're making good, they make good money. And it's not against the law for her to insert inside her trading. She no, it's not against the law for insider trading. Martha, Martha, Martha Stewart went to prison for insider trading. Yeah, but Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi uh, can do it and get away with it. Yeah. Why do you think all the wealthiest all the wealthiest people in America, more or less, like all the tech tycoons and all this shit, are all fucking the Democrats because they know they're going to get better off. With the fucking Democrats, you know what I mean? And Wall Street, everything, because, uh, you know, the, 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 it's like it's like in any socialistic or communistic country, it becomes a dictatorship where the, yeah. the ones who sit on the top 
is making the billions. I mean, one of the richest guys in the world is fucking Putin. You it's know, what I mean? Kim Jong Jong. And look at how they are fucking ruining in the countries. Yep, that's all. That's all. That's all. What happened with the uh, with the bank bank shit when it all collapsed the last time? And look at Venezuela. Out. Look at Venezuela. Was we ain't far from the there. Biggest, one of the biggest oil reserves in the world was fucking going like a, on, on like it was a train going perfectly <laughs> now. 15 years later because of all Maduro the Maduro got in there whoever destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, and there's nothing yeah. being said about Venezuela anymore. Yeah. And what they say, all the fucking idiots are saying this this shit. They say, oh yeah, but we are talking about a different socialism. We're talking <laughs> about I mean, you know, it has been tested and tried all over the world for hundreds of years and it doesn't fucking work. Right, and as soon as it turns communism, they'll be the first one stood up against the wall and shot. Because they can't, they, they go, their, their dream's going to be ripped out of their hands. They're going to be pissed off as hell. They're going to want to rebel, and they're going to put all their asses right up against the wall and shoot every one of them. But it doesn't really matter. It's not the White House. Whoever is this, the Democrats or the Republicans, who are running the fucking America anyway. It's the interest yeah. groups. It's all the fucking... Uh, what they call it, all the, the five, six thousand uh, people who run around and uh, talk for big uh, business. Uh, what they call those fuckers again, the um, lobbyists, yeah. lobbyists, and all that yeah. shit. And, and the other people. So, you know, in, in the sense, one way or another, they all become puppets uh, for a much bigger uh, game. Yeah, I'll let the bureaucrats do it all, do, make it all laws. It's insane. Yeah, but it, I mean, put it this way somebody can turn around and say, I don't want the fucking money. Fuck you. I don't want your backhander money. You do what I tell you, or I'm going to shut you down. That's it. Then they get shot. Like yeah. a few of them have been done. <clears throat> yep, they damn sure do. Well, just don't leave the White House. <laughs> run, the, run the country from the White House. Just don't leave. For four years. Trump, Trump has several attempts on his life. Nobody, nobody talks about. I didn't. Uh, they just don't talk about it. Most Americans don't know, but if you dig a little deeper, you'll find out that there was actual attempts. Yeah, I mean, or where somebody physically, or there was just. Talk about it, and then they got the guys before they. No, moved. I never heard any talk about it. They, they, they attempted a couple times, and oh, look at it. You know, they had eight years with Obama. Now a young, uh, charismatic fucking guy, African American, going to do so much good for the industry. I mean, what the fuck yeah. did he do for eight he years? Didn't do nothing. Didn't and, even have. Trump came in and did the justice reform. And and donate a bunch of money to the to the uh, the black universities and stuff, but he's a racist and everything. It's it's I don't know. Yeah, the vice I mean, president Kamala fucking Kamala. You know, I don't even know how she's. I don't even know how she's a vice president. That's and insane. She, to she, she made stronger laws and the discrimination for her mom, African Americans in California than anybody did. Her mom is her mom is Indian. Her dad is Jamaican, I think it is. And they were both in college in California when she was born. So that makes her an anchor baby. She's not even a real citizen. And she's damn one step away from the presidency. Yeah, but when and she was... No, uh, and, and no she Republican was, says anything because they don't want to be called racist or some shit. And when, she was in the department, when she was in the Justice Department in California, whatever, she, she handed down stronger... Sentences on black on African Americans oh, yeah. than yeah, anybody did. did. Yeah, she's crying I, herself. I I saw her where she was giving out shit about Biden in one of her talks. You know, like you know when they all get together and yeah, they do the, the, uh, primary in the primary. Yeah, yeah, the debates. Yeah, debates. Political debates. Yeah, and she gave Biden shit. Yeah, and supposedly Biden's wife went nuts about this. And got up in her face, and the the f word was used. Yeah, even if she is, if she is even a woman, I'm not sure. So sure about that. And 
Well, it doesn't matter if she's a woman or a guy. I don't give a shit. But the F word. You heard like, anything about Kamala since uh, they got into office? I mean, what the fuck is she doing as the vice president? I haven't yeah. read anything internationally about her. I didn't read anything internationally about uh, Obama either. He just came out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. He was only a senator. He didn't even do a full. T- what he pre- he voted he voted out president most of the time in the Senate. Or and, and and what didn't didn't go half the time voted absentee and all that shit. You see, the problem in America is that you know the really smart people, which could really run America as a corporation, you never get them to run for president because there's too much. You know, they don't want to fucking put themselves in that. You know, you're never gonna get an Elon Musk. You're never gonna get any of these fucking super smart guys to fucking run it because. Nobody wants the job, even if you pay them a billion dollars that didn't want right. to take the fucking job. Why? <laughs> to, get, to get treated like oh, that. Fucking like work. That. Sorry, two it's, people are talking. On the okay, one at a time, because I couldn't understand. Nobody was talking. I just cut in and then... I, I got in before anybody could finish a sentence, so nobody else was talking. Ahead, you said I, the last person said was that was you. I wonder why, and I said because it's work. Nobody else was saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like I said, why doesn't somebody, one of these guys, fucking do it, man? I mean, it's work. Yeah, it's work, but I mean. It's going to help them in the long run. It's going to help the people. I mean, is there anybody in fucking America that's going to help their own fucking people? No, that's not how it works. Why not? <laughs> because they're not in there to help at a goddamn store. They're in there to help themselves. Yeah, exactly. Once you get in there, you yeah. have to scratch somebody else's back that's established, and then you got to do shit for them that's before they can do shit for you. Yeah, you could be a saint. You could be a saint, and you get to Washington, everything changes. Yeah, the shit. But, yeah, if you're a millionaire like Trump was when he became in, right, you can't take the money with you. Why do you want more money? What's the point? You don't need Trump, it. Trump exploited the American people bigger than he ever exploited any con job he ever did. Yeah, he got I more know. money out of being president. Yeah. That's yeah. the only reason. Money. Well, yeah, he didn't do his job because he didn't work. It, it, well, put it this way. You can't take the money, like I said, you can't take the money with him. You can do something. I mean, Which people something. don't think like that. They take the money with them because they know they got it when they go on. <laughs> they know it was there when they left. They don't give a fuck about how much they got or how much they have when they leave. They know they had it. It's a number game. It's all about numbers. It ain't about money. Yeah, but when you're dead, you ain't going to be thinking about numbers. When you go to sleep, do you think about numbers? I don't. I guarantee you, I'm not rich. I don't think about numbers when I go to sleep, but they do. Well, that's their god. Money. Money that's their god. That's the only thing keeping them alive is the numbers. The the the, the states is run more by Soros than anybody else now. Right. But not just Soros. Trust me, you got them rich motherfuckers from, with old money. I mean, old, 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 old money, old Roman money, old fucking Babylonian money, old money. And it just carries over and over and over and over to the family. And them fuckers know how to keep it. Ask Gare. Gare ran into a couple of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Well, I was listening to a documentary there the other day, which I didn't know this, that the mob were in with the Vatican and the Vatican was laundering their money. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, been, been, oh, that's been going on for years. Yeah. Well, I didn't know it. I only just found this out the other day. Vatican's dirty as hell, too. It's yeah. dirty as hell. Yeah. The Catholic, the Vatican, the Catholic Church. I mean, I mean, fuck All of it. It's this all guy, about power, money, and control. This guy called ya- Johnny Yanni Russo was a bag man f- for the mob. He was never a made man. 
He was from uh, New York City, Bronx. He had polio as a kid. He was in, uh, what's the name of that hospital uh, in New Peter York City? Sana. No, no, no. The one with the B, B star, Bellevue. Bellevue. Oh, he Mel was in Hospital. Bellevue. He was in Bellevue for five years as a kid. He went in at the age of six or seven, Damn. and he was there for five years because of polio. Hospital. And it was 1959 when polio broke out in the States, and a lot of people were, kids were dying. 59. They came up with a vaccine. The government came up with a vaccine about it was the first vaccine it was the first lot of it and kids were just dropping 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 bellevue there was he said that there was this cart that used to come in at night time <coughs> there was 20 beds in his ward so when he was brought to the brought to the hospital he saw a quarantined right his mother couldn't come into the into the thing so he was during the five years he was there. Um, uh, he'd hear this cart or you know body cart. You know they put the body on it mm -hmm. or person if they're bringing to the surgery or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that told sure. him that somebody had died in 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 the in the room. Also, this guy. Uh, who was uh, we say a nurse's aide or whatever used to come around he was a pedophile fiddled with the kids right so this Johnny Russo he was 7 or no he was 11 Four. 11 12 what he did was he broke the handle of a of of a, a brush, so kind of like broken in half, and he sharpened it on the tiles over days or weeks or whatever. So he knew this guy was going to come to his bed one night, and what the guy did was he come to the kids thing and pull the curtain around the thing. So he said the guy he said oh. Uh, uh, smoke but it wasn't smoke it was something else you know to do something down below but he had hidden the the, the, the broken piece of uh brush stick with the point with the spike on it <laughs> put it up the guy's ribs into his ribs twisted around kill the guy bellevue didn't want this to get out in the press so <laughs> they released the kid. His parents, uh, his father was born in Sicily and left his mom to her own devices because he was a womanizer and whatever. So the, the, ner the, the nun or something said, oh, we can't release you. We can only release you to your parents. And they said, well, don't call my parents because I'm not going there. He says, uh, but they had to get him out of the hospital because he just killed, <laughs> killed the guy. So he, Johnny Russo said to the nurse or the nun, said, can you lend me $2 for a taxi? And I can get the taxi back to where I'm from in the Bronx. And... Don't worry about me after that. So she gave him the two dollars. He got into a taxi, went back to Bronx. Everybody knew what, what uh, knew this kid, and um, he got involved with the mob with uh, Cristiano. Chris, uh, what's his name? Chris, Chris, uh, Chris. Tiano, oh, what's his fucking name? Some mob guy, boss, boss. Chris, Christi, Cristino, Cristino. Um, I'm not sure who the mob is anymore. I've been so many years ago. It was the old days. So we're talking 60s. Um, where was it? Let me 
Galliano. I okay, you, hang on. No, 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 no. It was uh, if you give me a second, I should be able to get his name. Uh, it starts with Christy. Um, okay, Andrew doesn't. Um, let's go. Trump, Putin, Marilyn Monroe, and like sleeping with Marilyn Monroe, kidnapped. Uh, Yanni Russo got kidnapped by Pablo Escobar. Uh, okay. There's no writing of it, but it was in the interview. <coughs> but the character himself, and he's still alive, and his name is Yanni, G-I-A-N-N-I, Russo, R-U-S-S-O. He was in the, the movie The Godfather, The Godfather 1. He played Carlo, who was the brother-in-law of... Michael Corleone. Do you remember? You see the anybody see the Godfather movie? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, all it was made in seventy two, or it was released in seventy two. Seen all of them several times. Sorry, I've seen all of them several times. Okay, do you remember Carlo, the son in law? Yeah, Michael? yeah, yeah. That's. So, Yanni Russo. That's his real name, is Yanni Russo. And this is the guy I'm talking about now. That was his part. Interesting how he got that job. That job was all mobbed up. That movie was not going to be released unless the mob were involved because they ran the unions. Transportation. Right up, up in the northeast. The mob that, movie, the that, movie, that, that movie was more or less made in Staten Island. And the part where uh, James Kahn, Jimmy Kahn, has the fight with Carlo when he finds out his sister was beaten up by her husband. James Khan had a falling out with Rizzo before that uh, scene was recorded for the movie, as they say. He broke, James Khan broke two ribs uh, of Johnny Rizzo, um, did some other damage to him, hurt one of his spine, you know, dislocated a disc or something like this, and a few other bits and bobs. So Johnny Rizzo. Had one of his pop guys pay a visit to James Khan, who slapped James Khan around the place. Took him, didn't do it in front of Brando or anything. Just took him out of the room. Says you don't don't mess with my friend Jimmy Riz or Yanni Rizzo. Slapped him about the place, and said, "We own you. Do you understand? We own you." So that means every job that James Khan did after has to kick money to every job that he was getting paid for. Mm -hmm. Rizzo had never done a movie in his life. Marlon Brando came to him. It was the first reading. It was called a cold reading. So this guy, Rizzo, never did a movie. Didn't even have a, a, an actor's license to work. You know what I mean? But for New York or Staten Island or whatever, you could get this letter written by the Actors Paramount Guild. Actors Guild or Paramount, where he goes to the Actors Guild and gets his license. Then he can be in the movie, right? Marlon Brando came up to him, and this is the first call reading, and he said, have I seen you in a movie or he said no? Have I seen you in the TV show? You've definitely not done anything Broadway because I know everybody in Broadway because he mostly did Broadway. Rizzo said no, I've never done anything. So 
he says to uh, he calls the director over, who's uh, famous. Oh, what's his name? This will be the Mills or who? Or, 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 um, uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola. That's it. Calls Francis over. Brando says, "Get rid of this guy." Coppola says to Brando, "Can't do that." So, Brand, Brando had in his call sheets, like everybody else, everybody had a call sheet. And in the call sheet is nobody approaches Brando. He's not called. He comes out when he comes out. He thinks there is no call sheet for Brando. He does his own thing. He was the king. Yeah. This mob guy. <laughs> puts his arm around Brando and walks him into another room. Goes up to Brando like this, face to face, and goes like this, fucking this and fucking that and whatever. And Brando says, that's acting. Goes out of the room and tells the director he can act. <laughs> Just like that. One thing, it wasn't acting, it was real shit. <laughs> yeah, it was real shit. He says he was going to fuck him up. He said he was going to fuck him up. He didn't give a shit who Brando was, but he knew he was a real important thing. He was going to fuck him up if he didn't, because the mob was running this movie. This yeah. movie was never going to be made unless the mob were involved. No chance. Man, this guy, I, I'm still, I've watched three interviews so far. He was involved with Marilyn Monroe. He had sex with her when she when he was sixteen. When he was sixteen, she was murdered, and he knows how she was murdered. It was they. The government had this medical doctor guy, who was used by the the American government, was used by. Danish government used by some other governments and he knows how to kill people without leaving any marks yeah. what happened to Marilyn was she was all drugged up she had a hissy fit with Frank Sinatra on a Saturday night <clears throat> and Frank was there trying to calm her down and Russo was in the room at the time, and she says, I'm going to report JFK and Bobby Kennedy because Bobby Kennedy has made me pregnant. Mm -hmm. I'm pregnant by Bobby Kennedy, and I'm going to tell the press. So she goes home on the Monday. She's dead on the Tuesday. The doctor had come into the house went to her lower regions, put a needle in there and just put air in until she died in the bed. And they made up the room with all the medication and the way her body was found and all that kind of stuff, that it was a natural death. It was air that killed her. So she'd have an embolism or whatever this yeah. air was going to. And this doctor guy who is still alive in 2020, December 2020, he said the doctor is still alive, but lives in New Zealand. But he wouldn't mention it, he wouldn't say his name. So this doctor was used by the mob and countries. Yeah. Legitimate kills, assassinations. Well, yeah, I imagine governments all over the world have several people like that. Yeah. And man, that this guy is coming out with stuff. Um, mm -hmm. he, he says he knows about uh, Sammy Gravano, that he has a YouTube channel. He knows about mm -hmm. Michael Francis, he has a YouTube channel and does gives talks. Do you know the movie The Irishman? Anybody seen that? Yeah, yeah. Sure. With, seen uh, it. with uh, Robert De Niro. Yeah. Correct. Robert De Niro, Bob, they call him Bob. They don't call him Robert. They call him Bob. 
Bob bought the movie rights in 2004 <coughs> and asked because Russo has done like 20 odd movies and 200 hours of TV stuff or 40 odd movies he's made. He's been in uh, this guy is a famous guy, but it, you know, like not big parts, but he's done a lot of stuff. Plus, he was doing, he was a bag man for the mob. And he used to bring money to the Vatican. He'd go over by plane with, say, like a million dollars or two million dollars in a bag. The priests would meet him at the end of the stairs. So he was picked up on the, on the flight line, as they say, by the, the Vatican priest guys or, you know, big knobs, whatever. So he'd walk down the steps and then hand the bags to these priest guys. And then they they put him into a limo. They go to the Vatican, wash the money, and he'd be in a hotel for a few days. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Unbelievable stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, there's more stories that I, I was listening to because I've been... You know the difference that, between organized crime and government? <laughs> no. He says... One, he one's says, legal and the other one isn't. No. <laughs> One has an army and one doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, put it this way. The government is the mob. Of course yeah. they are. Yep. And if you piss on you have mob sooner or later they'll get you. If you piss off too bad, it won't be long. Right. But if you just uh, you know, even the mob won't fuck with a peon. Yeah. You know, if you ain't nobody, unless you fuck with you. Yeah, unless you get right over the target and start spitting yeah. too much stuff out, then you Yeah, yeah, yeah. They won't fuck with you. You, you you go blabbing all you think you know something, you think no, they're yeah. gonna leave that fucking mooley alone. Then he don't yeah. know shit. Right, because the people know. that know don't talk and the people that talk don't know. There you go, so they don't fuck with you. But if you, you start know, some dirt on them, oh, they coming after you. Oh, they go Jonah. Do you know that Gotti was the guy that brought down the mob? The New York mob brought down the five yeah. families. It was him. It was all him. Because he was just flashy and all out there and was sort of playing the big dude. All Corleone, I mean, all the other guys, they were like old men sitting away, not doing anything. You know, they were keeping low profile. Mm -hmm. Do you know the mob is still around? Oh, yeah. what they're doing That they're doing mostly legit and they're getting back into doing it not so legit and they're getting stronger day by day yep. the mob in Sicily uh, it's as so strong as it ever it's has. run by Sicily yeah they, they got several different mobs the orders come from there and that they have a guy who's being trained in Sicily in he was Interviewed in December 2020 and June of 2020. So I, I can't remember which one. It was June of 2020 or December. He says, there's a guy in Sicily who's been brought up and taught the ways or whatever that's going to be brought back to the United States and he's going to be running the mob back in New York again in the future. Sure. In the future. Nowadays, everybody's got a mob. The Russians have a mob. The Italians have their mob. The Jews have their mob. I mean, the Russians, the Koreans, Russians, the Mexicans. Yeah. The, the, the Asians have their mob. The Vietnamese have their mobs. The blacks have their mobs. Everybody's got a freaking yeah. mob nowadays. Of course, one all of them answer to one person in the end. They all think they're doing this, this, their thing. When you get up high, high in the mobs, they all end up coming to the same place. You know, Johnny Russo, he was running um, a, a club restaurant in Vegas. In fact, it was his own business. And Pablo Escobar's right-hand man was in there. And he was uh, a black guy, kind of like a Jamaican guy, or, or uh, not a Jamaican guy, a, a dark Colombian guy. I can't remember his name. Anyway, uh Russo said, who's this guy in my restaurant, whatever? And 
the the maitre d said or we say the manager said uh oh he's a five star uh five star uh customer and he's and then Bruce says, oh well then send him over two bottles of crystal so the two bottles of crystal were sent over to his table on the house and uh he had this beautiful girl with him, this uh, business guy. Like, your man didn't know him from Adam. Didn't know he was Pablo Escobar's right-hand man, second-in-command, whatever. He loses his head with his girlfriend, breaks open, breaks a bottle of Cristal, and puts it in her face in front of about 150 people in the restaurant. So Russo says, fuck this, I'm going over. He goes over to the, says, and he said, sir, look, uh, you need to go. I'll get your friend some attention, medical attention, but you need to go. And the guy says, fuck you, whatever. And he said, what? He said, he said, Russo said again, you need to leave and we'll, you know, clear this up. This guy, rude again. So he turns around and the bottle is still in his hands. So he thinks he's going for the girl again. But then he swings around and catches Russo in the chin because he said, I was very agile at the time. So I knew it was coming. So I went back like this and it caught me in the chin. So his chin was hanging off, he says, like this. So Russo being R Russo says to the guy, I have this, I just got this shirt. I spent three, four hundred dollars on it. It took ages to get. So the guy, the Colombian guy says, goes like, Jesus, this guy must be nuts. He's worried, more worried about his shirt than the damage I've done to his face. Russos has two derringers in his uh, no. waistcoat, waistcoat. Pulls them out and he says, look, I'm giving you a choice. You leave now or you leave in a body bag. So the, the the Colombian guy says, fuck you. So he puts two bullets between his eyes. And the Colombian guy is still standing. Because he's all coked up. And he's going like this. <laughs> Russo says, oh, fuck. Puts another two into his heart. And then he drops dead on the thing so he was arrested and charged and whatever and he got away with it because of his self-defense da, 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 da. so this russo guy has killed two guys but he's actually killed three guys all all in self-defense so he's never been he says he's never been arrested he's never been handcuffed he's never been indicted so he's got a clean sheet He's got a license to carry a weapon in New York. He's got a license to carry a, we a concealed weapon in New York, a concealed weapon in Chicago, a concealed weapon in Vegas, a concealed weapon in California, and a click thing. Because he's a legalized bag man licensed by the United States government to carry money. He just shows his credentials. And he's left alone. Diplomatic immunity, yep. And he still has those licenses. He has a bunch of businesses that his kids are helping him run. He owns land in Vegas between they say the Tropicana and another hotel. And there's this vacant lot. And it's worth five million or more, I can't remember the, the thing, in the millions anyway, per foot or something like this. It's a vacant lot between two places, two expensive hotels. 
<clears throat> he also said before JFK, he helped with JFK getting into the White House, that his boss, Caruso, or I'll, I'll, I'll get his name another time and I'll, I'll do it on another one. Uh, JFK's father, Sr., Kennedy Sr., and Russo's boss, the mob Joe guy, Kennedy. Joe Kennedy, owned the Tropicana in Vegas. So Joe Kennedy owned, was part owner of the Tropicana in Vegas in the old days. And he was part with this mob guy doing the bootlegging. Yeah, that's the connection. Ken, Joe Kennedy got all his money from bootlegging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was involved with the mob. Yeah. All from the old Kennedy days. Turned, John JFK turned against the against the mob, and that's when they that and happened. petrol and gas. JFK was taken out. Russo didn't know the reason why he had to uh, uh, bring money to Vegas. He was sent as a bag man to Vegas with a bunch of money and given a message to give to another mob guy. And the, the, all, all the words was, it's on. Then he got back on the plane and went back to New, New York. This was after Bugsy and all the guys that really started, <laughs> I guess. Bugsy? No, this is 1963. Everybody was pissed off. JFK. 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 Russo, because his boss, Christo, or we say Chris Diani or whatever, put Russo on a boat and he was told to get off in Barcelona. He only heard about JFK being shot when they were going under the Golden Bridge, the Golden Arch Bridge or whatever whatever you call it. What's that? The Golden Bridge? San Francisco? Golden Gate Golden Bridge. Bridge. Golden, Great, Golden Gate Bridge. When the boat was coming towards the Golden Gate Bridge, it came over the intercom on the ship that JFK was shot, and then he realized he was involved and why his boss sent him out of the country for 22 months. Because he was told to go to Barcelona. He gave him $15,000 in cash and said, a lot of money back uh, then. Don't, don't, don't come back for a long time. And he was probably sent more of whatever, whatever. But man, this guy's coming out with stories, stories, stories. JFK yeah, pissed a lot of people off. He pissed the he pissed the mob off. He pissed the unions off. He pissed uh, the FBI off. He pissed uh, the, uh, the the Russians off. He pissed the Cubans off big time. I mean, the so what happened to uh, Hoffa? You know. Hoffa. Okay, I'm going to tell you. Going to tell you this. Going to tell you this. He knows about Hoffa. Do you know why JFK was okay? What Craig was saying, but also another thing why. JFK was taken out was the mob wanted JFK to get in so they could do the Bay of Pigs to invade Cuba and get rid of Fidel so the mob could go back in and reclaim back their casinos. That's the only thing they reason because they got JFK to go in. JFK backstabbed them because Bobby talked him out of not helping the Cubans invade the country with planes and da 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 and that they all right. got shot and they, up. And they figured when they killed off JFK, that would scare Bobby away. But then no. Bobby turned around and ran for ran for government. And so he and he's the one after us, the main one after us. We got to get rid of him mm. too. Also they they uh they the mob had on J. Edgar Hoover the reason he wasn't uh, saying there was a mob and he was saying he was going after the Black uh, Black Panthers yeah, and there was something else the FBI was after because they have J. Edgar Hoover in a hotel dressed up as a woman yeah. with a bunch of gay guys and they have him on film <laughs> and that's why he would never say there was a mob. 
But Bobby, because he was his boss, made J. Edgar Hoover go after the mob. And that's why they took Bobby out. Unbelievable. Yeah, I remember being a little bitty kid, little, little tiny bitty kid. And my dad go to these friends of his house. And I'd be sitting on the floor under the table playing with another little kid or a little baby kid or whatever. We were real, we real, real, real young. And they were all speaking, they were all speaking Spanish because he knew a lot of the Cubans that were down in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. And, he, and they would all, he would go over to their house to drink and, and, and talk stuff and everything. And I always wondered, what, what do you have to do with the, what do you, what do you have? mixed up in all that stuff, you know, but they used to sit around and curse what Kennedy. I remember mm-hmm. that. They hated him. Really. And my dad was a Dixie crowd. He wasn't no, he was never no, no, uh, conservative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like there's more interviews. Now the second interviewer guy that I was watching, because I'm also watching, um, an interview where Russo is interviewed in 1993. So I've seen June of 2020. I've seen December 2020. Now I'm in the middle of watching a 1993 interview to compare, you know, is he telling the truth? Because the second interviewer says to him, because he's kind of laughing at Russo, saying, I can't believe all this stuff that you're telling me. 50% or 20% is true or whatever. Russo says, no, it's the truth. So that's why there's only one thing I caught him in, in a lie. And that was, it's only like a very small thing. So He's 75 now, Russo, or whatever. <clears throat> so that's an easy mistake. So, But he's pretty much... But like I said, I'm watching this 1993 uh, uh, interview. So when I've seen the rest of that, I'll kind of say, well, is this guy telling the truth or is he telling lies? I don't well, know. Well, Garrett, if you look at value attainment, yeah? You know value attainment? Uh, channel on uh, on attainment. Sorry, I I couldn't hear you because you're very far from the mic. Okay. Do you know the channel on YouTube Valuetainment? Yes, that's the guy I'm watching. He's the okay. second interviewer. So you know he has interviews with all the mob guys. You know with Sammy, with the other guy, with Michael, with 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 with, with you know fifty of the guy. Yes, correct. So, you know, and, and it's funny because they all have their own stories and their own involvement and what they have done and what they have not done and they're all calling the, each other liars and whatever. So if you actually follow Valuetainment as I have done for the past two, three years and watched all the mob stuff there, yeah, you know, it's kind of hard to figure out you know what who, who is talking as a you know who's talking straight who's not talking straight and everything mm-hmm. when you listen to each and one of them individually it's all very convincing until you get the stories for the other mobsters and whatever have you and none of the stories that that any of them are telling <coughs> actually 100 uh, percent matching up if you know what i mean mm-hmm. with all this twist and turns and everything in it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the real truth and not the real truth and whatever? It's yeah. very hard to, uh, to to pinpoint if you understand what I'm trying to say. I hear you. It's like that uh, YouTube guy you just said, Value Entertainment. He's fantastic, dude. Yes, fantastic interviewer. There's another guy I saw before him things only a couple of small things were wrong but that was a uh, uh uh what they call it june of 20 2020 20 and december 2020 now i'm looking at the 1993 where he's been asked kind of the same questions so he's a lot younger then and that's why i want to match up with the other two interviewers 
See if Al's answer is the same. You know what's very interesting, Gareth, as well? If you go through a lot of the value team and stuff, he has also some very cool interviews with some of the FBI guys and the guys yes. Yes. Have been, which was undercover with yes. all the mobs. And those guys have different stories again from the real mobs. Because, you know, one of the guys is the guy, I can't remember his name, uh, but he wrote the famous book, which was on the cover for five years or six years. Pistone. Uh, uh, Pistone. Huh? Pistone. Uh, Pistone, yeah. Uh, there was yeah. A very many cool interviews from both sides there uh, on that whole valuetainment stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Jack Garcia. Yeah, FBI Jack agent. Garcia, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that uh, interview. Um, I've seen um, Vlad asks Michael Franzisi, how about Mafia got rid of the bodies? I've seen that one. Um, if you agree with me that when you have seen a lot of them, how they kind of talking about the same incidents and this, that, and the other, but they all have their different stories and, and theories or, or so-called facts about what really happened, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What one of them really messes <laughs> up. Well, I'm just following this one guy, Yanni Russo. This rare 1993 TV interview, that's what I'm watching. I'm trying to compare with the other two interviews that he did with uh, Vlad and uh or no entertainment and the other one is vlad vlad tv uh value entertainment is is the second one i saw and where is uh part one and part two which was one hour 27 minutes and it was done by dj vlad so I've seen those two, and I'm in the middle of watching the 1993. Well, I'm not in the middle. I'm only in the beginning of it. Oh, yeah. Of the 1993. In fact, it's a 29 minutes, 28 seconds, and I've just watched over half of it. So I'm just seeing what he has to say with the 2020. Going back to 1993, is he coming up with the same? Yes. Things are being said differently, but pretty much matching up. And I saw him... Um, Did you see the interview with that guy who wasn't Italian also, which was one of the mob's uh, assassination, the killers? The, that guy which is the, the is Pol Polak or something like that, which is like... Uh, well, I can't remember his name. Uh, I was on the entertainment as well. I mean, which uh, was one of the killers for the mob. Uh, he was a stone. Um, are you talking about the Grim Reaper? Or are you talking oh, no, no. about... Um, what's yeah, his name? Yeah. Iceman? Iceman? The Iceman, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, Vito Genovese? Yes. And Paul Castellano? Yes. Is that who you're talking about? Well, they were the bosses, but uh, we were talking about Hitman. Um, oh, the, Hitman. Ice Man, the Iceman is one. Uh, the Grim Reaper is another one. Yes, yeah, Sammy Gravino. And I'd say he's done more than 19. He's a bit of 19. He's cleared of 19, but he's done more than that. Did you see, have you seen the latest uh, that the uh, entertainment has put on where with Sammy and um, the big moneymaker, what's his name again, uh, who did all the gas stations in New Jersey and all that stuff? Michael, all that. Michael Francisi. Yeah, Ma Michael Francisi. Michael Francisi is a pretty fucking cool character. Mm -hmm. Him and Sammy gets in, in some shit fights uh, on yes. the, of the podcast and stuff. Yes. It's quite funny. Yeah, in fact, Gravano <laughs> comes over the table at him. <laughs> yeah. In the, 
like you know, he, Sammy's uh, running his own channel now. I mean, he's yeah. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a subscriber to both of their channels. Oh yeah. So I'm watching. I'm watching a lot of these ducks. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Do 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 do. Well, we've got two in the background, and one of them we know who that is. That's Michael. Uh, Michael, do you want to see if you want to come up on the panel? Because I'm going to end the broadcast. Like we can stay here if we if the guys want to st stay here and talk. There's no problem to me. But I'm just going to end the broadcast because we've done eight hours. So Michael, if you want to come up, I'll drop the link now. You can. You don't have to come up on the panel. You just come at the bottom and then you can listen and then type in the private chat. So there is the link for you, mate, if you hit that. John, um, if you go over to YouTube, my YouTube channel, and click on the link because I'm going to end the broadcast here because I've done eight hours and there's only two people, so it's just yourself and Michael. So if you if you what I'll do is I've dropped the link on YouTube. Uh, we're going to go private. So if you want to hit the link and then come up on the panel, I know Michael can't. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so. If you want to hit the link, come up on the panel because we're going to go private. So I'm going to go for a cigarette now. And then if you're there, I'll put you up. And then I'm going to end the broadcast. All right. Did you get that, Michael? Or oh, sorry, uh, John. If you hit the link in YouTube, because I just got a notification that there's a problem with Facebook. Anyway, I'm going to go for a cigarette, come back. If you're there, come up, and we'll be going uh, private, okay? So I'll be back in a second, guys, and it's up to John and Michael because both of them are there. I'll be back in a Um, Craig. Yeah. Have you seen? Do you know the channel Valuetainment? Do I know what? Do you know the channel on YouTube called Valuetainment? No, I don't. Oh, you should fucking go on to that, mate. I mean, there are that, that guy. He's an ex ex-military ex-army guy uh when he was got out of the army uh, you know he was like non-educated he's actually a um he come to the united states uh as a refugee from uh syria or what or whatever it was uh iran uh from a mother which was a communist and a father which was not he he was in uh, refugee camps in germany and whatever and then got to america got naturalized went into the army quit the army and started to sell um life insurance then started to build up the company and whatever from nothing and today he's a multi 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 millionaire he's about 40 years old now uh and you know he has become that channel is super popular he, he now interviews all these guys he spoke about plus you know well-known politicians doctor i mean i mean it's a really fucking interesting channel uh if you don't know about valuetainment and it's an ex ex-military guy which has come from nothing as a refugee valuetainment yeah i'll subscribe and check him out oh man 
there are hours and hours and hours of really cool stuff there. I mean, the interviews this guy has done is amazing. That's him. Um... Well, yeah, it's called Valuetainment, yeah. You should subscribe to that. I mean, he has so much very cool content, and he's an ex 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 uh, army uh, guy. Okay. Michael, hit the link now because I'm going to end the broadcast. So if you want to come up, hit the link now because otherwise you won't see us. Today he runs a company which has about six and a half thousand uh guys uh, selling life insurance around the states and whatever he just bought a 30 million dollar home in florida i mean he comes from he was just a fucking you know nobody in 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 the military uh mm -hmm. when he was young okay i'm gonna add this broadcast anyway michael hit the link if you want to be downstairs as they say but at least you can hear us uh, John, hit the link now because otherwise you won't see us. All right, I'm going to end this broadcast now. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you on the next one. Good night. Or good